the Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Jason McAfee is off this week taking his vacation in place of him as a man who just got back from the mountains of Smoky. Zito will be running the audio. I'm going to get off to a rough start here, but I do believe it's probably a technology issue. And there you go. Yeah, the microphone was turned off. That's probably my fault, to be honest with you. <laughs> but we are back in the game. Yeah! Woo! 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 Um, <laughs> it's a great day to be alive. <laughs> It's a great day to be alive. March Madness is happening. Okay, championship week de- weekend just got finished up. Now we got March Madness. We have a bracket bonanza popping off. I think what I was most excited about for this show was the fact that um, we are giving away fifty-one thousand dollars to the winner of our bracket. Whoa! Whoa! whoa. Wow. Fifty-one thousand dollar bracket bonanza uh, presented by us. Obviously, it'll be in the March Madness Live app. I believe it is a something you have to download from the App Store. It looks exactly like this. It is the NCAA official thing, March Madness Live. Our challenge bracket bonanza will be up there as one of the ones you can join. There's a couple of different little things we have to talk about though with the fifty-one thousand dollar bracket bonanza Woo! although it right now it sits at fifty one thousand dollars to the winner whoever has the best bracket and we're going with traditional scoring by mm-hmm. the way there is a new style of scoring we're going traditional if we become the biggest bracket bonanza challenge on the app mm-hmm. it'll go to seventy five thousand oh, oh, yeah, yeah. oh. fifty one thousand dollar bracket bonanza will go to seventy five thousand dollar bracket bonanza oh. Then if that thing gets to over 50,000 entries, which we do not believe is possible, that seems like a lot, Mm -hmm. that'll go to a $100,000 bracket banana. That's right. All you gotta do is fill out your brackets, get things right more than everybody else, and you could potentially win $51,000, maybe $75,000. And if we get 50,000 people to be a part of this bracket bonanza, that'll be a $100,000 giveaway just because we want to. Now, that March Madness Live app, you will see a lot of companies are at the top. A lot of people are at the top. They have their picture. They have it all beautiful. We do not because we are not in association with them. <laughs> there are other places that do bracket challenges. We cannot work alongside of them because of an interesting situation that popped off this weekend. Now, on Friday, I made an announcement on this show alongside AJ Hawk. We're done with that, I think. Thank you. This is a big deal. Mm-hmm. Okay. So on Friday, when AJ was on the show, I let him know that there was a mandate that we had heard about, about people from ESPN not being allowed onto this show. Now, my immediate reaction was uh, understanding, I think. I, I, I expected this to happen. Uh, I, I understood that this was potentially going to happen because our numbers, okay, Big thanks to everybody that watches and listens. Our numbers weren't like of that of a small regional show in Indiana. And if you're a business person who's trying to hold on to land that you don't have anymore, you could see how the easiest thing and short-sighted and small-minded thing to do would be to not allow anybody to go there because they're viewing us as competition. Even though we have no live rights, we're not a channel and Mm -hmm. anything like that. 
So since it's so short-sighted and small-minded, knew that it was inevitability at this particular situation with that company, and I knew that it would happen. When it did happen, I was bummed out, I was sad, and I made the announcement on this show. I did not take it personally, but the listeners and viewers took that personally. <laughs> yes, they did. Hey, if you're listening or watching this show right now, when you guys took to the internet to say hashtag ESPN stinks for not allowing anybody to come on our show, you caused quite a Tiff, yeah, yeah, in the Disney world. I never responded. I never said anything. I didn't promote you guys doing what you did. But the people that listen to the show, the people that watch the show, take the show very personally. We are a part of our, our lives. I, I think we say that you guys are a part of our lives. I think you would say that we're a part of yours. And we are eternally grateful for you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And what led to all... What led from all of you kind of doing your thing on the internet, talking about no more heel Wani, mm -hmm. and no more Orshlovsky, uh, mm -hmm. no more Rusini Massacre yeah, Week, yeah. no more Jet Passing, mm. no more Dan Maziano, oh. you know, when you guys started doing all that stuff, no Shefty, obviously it started to grow and grow and grow. There was articles getting written about it, and I think a lot of people were potentially sitting on a situation where they could potentially go after an institution that we all grew up with. ESPN was something we all watched. Obviously, we all watch Sports Center, and then once you see what it's kind of becoming and the, the things that they're doing and the decisions that we're making, I feel like a lot of people got onto this particular train and were like, yeah, this is bullshit, but not just this. There's a lot of other decisions that are being made over there that we think are bullshit. I want to let you know, I appreciate you guys going to bat for me, but I never felt as if this was something that would make me that upset because it's business. Now, in lieu of business, they came out and made a statement to Richard Deitch. Now, Deitch is a guy, he and Andrew Marchand are kind of like the media reporters, all right? They, they, there's the people that talk about sports, sports stooges, mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. yep. There's people that talk about politics, politics stooges. There's those. Oh, yeah. Deitch and Marchand, I believe, are the media followers. They kind of get into that thing. Hmm. And Deitch immediately talked about this and said that he reached out to ESPN. There was no response. Then... I learned Saturday there was a response from ESPN, Ooh. and reading it was very interesting to me. Uh, the, the quote from ESPN to Richard Deitch, and we'll go through this line for line. We didn't intend to ban ESPN guests from the show, and there is certainly no ban going forward. Okay, so you certainly did intend to ban people from this show. Okay, like mm -hmm. I'm not—I I wasn't even going to talk about this, but this is just a bullshit start here. <laughs> you did intend i heard it from numerous people okay you didn't intend for the backlash which by the way i didn't i didn't expect i don't think you did either uh there's certainly no ban going forward okay from your side all right uh we are in the midst of figuring out the best process for future guests to appear on outside platforms okay smart probably should have had that already in place and pat will continue to make regular appearances on espn shows i don't know if that's accurate either. So, yeah <laughs> so you start this thing with a falsehood and mm -hmm. you end it with a falsehood but in the middle there, I like that there's potential progress. Good job, Ian. Yeah. yeah. All right. Nice job. I did not call for this. Okay, I had a lot of people, uh, not a lot of people, I had a lot of people tweeting me like, hey, good job, you're going to get real things done over there. I'm like, hey, don't don't say good to me. This is people that watch this show. This is people that listen to this show. And I want to let you know, I am honored that you choose to watch and listen to us because you guys got this done. And by the way, this whole middle area, figuring out the process for people going on to other shows, that's great for ESPN as a whole. And there's this old... You know, because a lot of people reach out to me that were banned from my show, uh, potentially, and people that used to work at ESPN reach out to me. There's this old ESPN thing that was basically a radio thing that said, if somebody has an ESPN channel in the local area, no ESPN employees can go on any other channel in the area because if they're on that channel, they're not listening to ESPN radio. When it comes to this particular show, we are a YouTube show. And a lot of articles said that we're a Sirius XM show. We are, they license our show, but we are a YouTube strictly show. And there's a good chance that if somebody's watching our show, they're potentially also watching ESPN in the background. Mm -hmm. Or if they're not watching ESPN, guess what? They're learning about somebody who's potentially on ESPN that they might like, by the way. So maybe in the future, they see them on ESPN. Guess what they do? They stop and watch ESPN. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the fact that they're figuring out the best process going forward for other shows, I think that's smart because you're figuring out, guess what? Your business, which is good news for everybody to do. Yeah. Way to go. 
Now, whenever it says outside platforms, and we are getting linked in with a lot of different shows, and I, I have learned uh, via tweets and comments from people, uh, Colin Cowherd tweeted me and said, welcome to the two-man club or whatever. I'm like, thank you, Colin, I appreciate that. So I guess ESPN guys aren't allowed on Colin's show. He's on Fox, okay, obviously. Lebitard, I guess the same thing's happening with him. Dan Patrick, I guess the same thing happened with him. Rich Eisen, I guess the same thing happened with him. And it's an honor to be in conversations with all those OGs, okay? They're, but they all started at ESPN okay all of them every mm -hmm. one of them started at ESPN I did not so although it is an honor to be in the same conversation with them you could see how they could potentially view that as a conflict of interest as a company that starts at ESPN then leaves ESPN to go elsewhere strictly immediately following the exit you could see how ESPN would be like we don't want to get this confused here that you're still working with us as this whole thing as our people are going over there so I think that's a little bit of a difference because our show was never a ESPN show never fucking will be an ESPN show, uh, but just strictly because they're FCC rules and everything like that. And maybe I'll continue to make appearances on ESPN shows if the host of the shows would like me to come on because the executives don't actually want me on the show. The host of the show want me on there. So with that being said, I'm happy we're past this. I'm happy they're figuring out their process going forward. And I'm happy for our ESPN friends over there that they'll get a chance when they're off the clock to potentially help build their brand in other places and showcase a side of them that they're not allowed to be on Mickey Mouse's screen. So, uh, a job well done to the listeners and viewers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You changed some lives here. You made some things better, and we appreciate it. With that being said, I'm banning ESPN from this show for at least a fucking week. Yeah. 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 The boys are here. Woo. At Tone yeah, Diggs is here. Talking. Boston Connors here. Ty Schmidt is here. Gumpy's in the chair. And ladies and gentlemen, not only is it March Madness this week, it's a free agency frenzy. It is Brinks Week. Yeah. People are getting... Hey, baby! Great cash, homie. <laughs> okay, every time that thing backs into the screen, we will know that somebody just got paid. This morning or yesterday, Aaron Jones agreed to a deal. It was a four-year deal to go back to the Green Bay Packers. Nobody expected that to happen. Josina Anderson is reporting right now with text message from Buccaneers linebacker Shaq Barrett. He's going back to Tampa. Wow. Hashtag done decision. Congrats okay. to the world champions. Yeah. The world champions get an absolute killer off the edge back. Uh, another Brinks truck announcement. Ian Rappaport at Rap Sheet. Arizona Cardinals pass rusher Marcus Golden is staying in Arizona, source say, agreeing to terms on a two-year deal that pays him $9 million. After leaving Arizona, heading to the Giants, and getting traded back, the 30-year-old Golden elects to stay and call Arizona home. Congrats to Marcus right. Golden. Hey, Golden. J.J. Watt, Marcus Golden, Chandler Jones Woo. out there in the desert about to do damage. There's a lot of names that are going to go up for grabs here. They said in the first 30 to 45 minutes of the free agency tampering period, which just started 14 minutes ago, a lot of shit gets done. It's rumored that guys are going to be taking one-year deals to sign and win, hopefully. Look for the... Oh, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, there is another signing here on Brinks Week. It is now formally announced that Ian Rappaport says the Lions in pass rusher Romeo Aquara are staying together as Aquara has agreed to three-year deal with $39 million. After a career year with 10 sacks, he stays in Detroit and makes it his home. Yeah. Congrats, Foxy. Woo! The Detroit Lions are getting into the free agency Woo! game. Green Bay Packers keep Aaron Jones yes! home. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers keep Shaq Barrett down there. Now, what moves will they make? The Kansas City Chiefs are allegedly restructuring contracts. Patrick Mahomes is restructuring his contract. A man named Travis Kelsey is restructuring his contract so they can get some wiggle room. They can still sign people. Travis Kelsey, by the way, will be on this show in about 10 minutes or so. Oh! Let's go. We'll talk to Travis Kelsey about his offseason. Obviously, the season did not end in its finest fashion for him or the Chiefs. I think enough time has allotted. I'm excited to hear where his headspace is at. The restructuring of the contract by he and Patrick Mahomes do a lot of favors to that Chiefs uh, salary cap issue. Here we go. Teams are getting better, hopefully. There's a lot of players still out there. Tone Diggs, what are you thinking, Bob? Probably not a surprise in a loaded pass rushing market that the first three signings are pass rushers. I mean, you get to the quarterback, you win. You saw it in the Super Bowl. That's what happens. Yeah, well, it's interesting you say that. You get to a quarterback, you win, because offensive linemen, yeah. mm -hmm. it seemed like, are on their way out. Yeah. And now 
It is alleged the Patriots are back in conversations with Tooney, who yep. they franchise tag last year, I believe. Mm-hmm. Are they going to keep their guard around? Uh, Baltimore Ravens had a massive signing this morning on offensive line. Zeitler, after trying to fill in with Marshall Yonda's absence mm-hmm. last year, they bring in a high-paying guard for the Ravens. There's been some moves made here, but I think things are about to really heat up, Ty. I think we're going to have to change the backup thing, by the way, because that is a nightmare to listen to, <laughs> especially if it's going to happen on a regular basis. <laughs> Ty, Aaron Jones is back with the Green Bay Packers. Nobody thought this could happen. I don't think anybody saw this coming. Mm-mm. Your thoughts immediately upon hearing that Aaron Jones is back in the backfield. Yeah, I was ecstatic because, like you mentioned, basically all last week and when uh, they mentioned that they weren't going to franchise tag him, I just I, I assumed he was gone. I mean, you know, it. Like he's a fifth round pick, he hasn't made much money, but he he definitely took a pay cut to stay in Green Bay. But with the way these contracts are getting set up and all the funny money, like I mean, wh- why not? You know, if he has a if if he wants to stay there and play with Rodgers. Why not? It's awesome. I'm very excited. Yeah, I'm excited for him as well. They talked about guarantees only being like 13 or something mm-hmm. like that. So yep. who knows how that will all eventually play out with that whole thing. Drew Rosenhaus of Rosenhaus Sports, who used to be the king of big money contracts, not a lot real things. Seems like he's really flipped his entire thing. Now he's trying to get more contracts, more signing bonus, blah, blah, blah. He's reporting Aaron Jones stays in there. Now, the big news of the weekend in the football world came from... Uh, children. Oh. Kids. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I don't have any. All right, hope to someday, obviously, but yeah. I don't like being around them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, they no seem way. to come at me sure. a lot when I'm around. They can sense that I don't like them, so they just kind of, yeah. you know. Get them to you. Get them. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what are you doing? And they're like, ha nothing. I'm like, <laughs> why are hands so sticky? Actually, why are you even, <laughs> why are you near me or whatever? And then there's always a good give and take. But this weekend's biggest news came from kids. Kids that have an entire future ahead of them with their dad being a retired quarterback. Drew Brees announced his retirement after 20 years. He did it via an announcement with his kids. One of the kid uh, kids was the child that I saw on a jumbo screen mm-hmm. while walking off a Super Bowl field into the most miserable locker room of all time. He had the big, you know, the big ear things mm-hmm. on so he couldn't hear the booms and the explosion and the happiness. I've been reliving a lot of Drew Brees' success in that Super Bowl against the team that I was riding the coattails on. I should have a Super Bowl ring right now. But the man that retired, just yesterday, after 20 seasons in the NFL, as the all-time leader in passing yards and pass completions, a 13-time Pro Bowler, Super Bowl champ, and Super Bowl MVP, who earned more than $269 million on the field. Damn. Has raised over $35 million to charitable causes. Has partnerships with Nike, Microsoft, Pepsi, Procter & Gamble, Jimmy John's, that smoothie thing, (laughs) a bunch of other. A man that absolutely did it right. A man who, on the field, a man who was considered to be undersized, got kicked out of San Diego, almost went to Miami with Saban, shoulder wasn't good enough, goes to New Orleans under Sean Payton's tutelage and becomes an all-time great. The entire conversation now is, is he on... Is he on the Mount Rushmore of quarterbacks? Oh. Is he on top five quarterbacks of all time? Whoa. I have no idea how you would judge top five quarterbacks of all time. I would assume that there's different ways of doing it. Well, how many championships they got? Okay, so say goodbye to Dan Marino. Then Dan Marino's not mm-hmm. in that conversation, which is a shame because he was a great quarterback, by the Damn way. Good. So it's a shame that you guys, just because of the championships or whatever, then it's like, oh, he, well, he has one championship. Well, what's his average pass completion? His arm wasn't that strong. It's like, okay, so how do you judge it? I would say... Drew Brees, Hall of Famer, one of the greatest of all time. Not the greatest of all time, but there's only one of those anyway. So, hell of a career. I'm not sure he and I would ever be friends off the field. I know Ty wouldn't be with him for sure, mm-hmm. but a hell of a run. And I think the Saints are in the mayor of New Orleans are certainly happy that he's made his decision. And now the Saints can move forward with potentially Taysom Hill, who signs <laughs> yeah. a four year, $140 million contract this weekend. All years voidable. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> what is that even? So did you sign a contract? It's fake. So if you sign a contract and all years avoidable, is that actually a contract or what is that? Oh, that is like a little tool the teams have been using so that you can just kick a signing bonus or money you owe down the road to put yourself into a better position. It's amazing that the New Orleans Saints have been able to get under the con- or under the salary cap. They were way over. They've had to cut a lot of people. They're restructuring contracts like this. Uh, Taysom Hill appears 
to be the next quarterback. But Jameis Winston also in conversations down there. They will have a competition allegedly, but that comes after Taysom Hill's $140 million contract. That is basically all bullshit mm-hmm. happens, which I think we're going to see a lot of this week as the salary cap gymnastics, as Ian Rappaport phrased it, will continue. Do we know when that actually will like catch up to them? It has be- to. Because otherwise, why wouldn't every team do it? Like, you know, I mean, with the Packers, with Aaron Jones, like sign him to a four-year, $150 million contract and just Avoid everything. So I think the difference was the NFL and the NFLPA came to an agreement because they saw the potential COVID thing and contract year to year disparity was allowed to be greater than 25% or something. So there, I don't know if it's 25% or what it is. So it used to not be able to do this, but now that the salary cap has taken a turn that it has, because they weren't able to fill up any stadiums and they went down instead of going up, which it has been doing for the last hundred years, it's just been going up and up and up. They made an agreement that contract, uh, amounts were allowed to be differ, different year to year more than they ever have been in the past. So I think the NFL knew that teams were going to do something like this. Mm-hmm. The voidable year thing is going to inevitably catch up to somebody. Because we talked to Ian Rappaport and we said, do the voidable years count? Like, does that count against the salary cap? They're like, they'll have to pay that off at some point, but they're just kind of pushing it down. That's going to catch up to you. You know, they say the easy way is something is always going to end up biting you in the ass because during the easy trip to the top, you skipped a lot of lessons that you had to get there. Mm -hmm. When you just start kicking things, at some point, it'll get them. And I assume that's three, four years down the road. But if the salary cap's at $250 million at that point, I'm assuming most teams won't even care. Yeah, true. I guess I hadn't factored in, you know, like because they are planning for that. That's that's why they're in this position, because they didn't think there was any way that the salary cap was going to go down this year. No way at all. Uh, Shaq Barrett's money has just been announced here. He is staying in Tampa Bay. Uh, the Bucks are keeping pass rusher Shaq Barrett working out a four-year deal for up to $72 million dollars per Rosenhaus. He gets 36 million fully guarantee. Shaq told Josina Anderson he was staying. Okay, so a 36 million dollar guarantee for uh Shaq Barrett, which is half of his contract mm-hmm. down there in Tampa. I'm not sure they do signing bonuses in Tampa a lot. Feels like they're a lot of pay to play like, hey, you're going to get this. They restructured Tom Brady's contract into a signing yep. bonus to do this whole thing. So maybe I just completely backed it up, but that's not normally their go-to. 36 million dollars in guarantees for Shaq Barrett, $13 million in guarantees for Aaron Jones, $49 million in guarantees, less than 12 hours into the tampering period for Drew Rosenhaus and Rosenhaus Sports thus far. <laughs> Good for him. Good day. Good for him. Joe Tooney of the Patriots, he's potentially going back to New England. That's got to be good news. A lot of money to be spent up there. Where is... Where is Juju Smith Schuster? Oh. Where is Not New England. Hunter Henry going? Mm-hmm. Definitely New England. Where is well, I think the thing about all these people is they're gonna sign one year deals. There's been a lot of yeah. reports that guys are thinking like, hey, I'm gonna do a one year deal. Now, if a two year, three year option comes with a lot of money, how do you turn that down? I don't know. I guess if it's avoidable bullshit contract. Yeah. But they're talking about a lot of one. Judon's up. Yannick Ngakwe's up. Jameis is obviously up. Gronkowski is currently Whoa. a free agent. Whoa. I mean, you're saying there's a lot in it. Kenny Galladay, where's he going to end up at? I mean, Bud Dupree, he's going to be a problem. Trent Williams, there's a lot of offensive lines that need some help. T.Y. Hilton and Tony O'Brown. I mean, there is a lot of names out there that I think over the next few days we're going to learn a lot about. Well, and these free agents, too, who might want one-year deals, when you see that Shaq Barrett deal with a Bucks team who doesn't have a ton of cap, wouldn't you then want to ask for a four-year deal if you were thinking one year? Well, if you're the one-year deal allows you to become a free agent again, right? Yeah. Like, for instance, Chris Godwin, he got franchise tag down Tampa. Mm-hmm. He didn't get to experience an actual free agency. You know what I mean? Because yeah. there isn't an actual free agency right now because the salary cap's where it at. I think there's a lot of guys that are like free agents that are like, okay, let's just do, a, let's get to next year when it's an actual, when there's actually a frantic frenzy happening with free agency. You know what I mean? Real I think market. That's what I would, if I was uh, one of those guys. Now, there's a lot of guys that are getting signed here over the next couple of days to minimum deals that are very happy to have a job. And those won't be in the headlines or the conversation, but they should be. That's um, right. They absolutely should be. Congrats to those guys. Yeah. And there's a lot of other guys that retired by that were forced into retirement here over the last couple of weeks. It wasn't really their decision like Drew Brees's. Congrats on hell of a runner. Yeah. Guys. Great career, boys. Great job. All right, we'll keep tracking the money on the other side. This is the Pat McAfee Show with the boys. one 888 mad Dog. If you want to get on the phones, we can't wait to chat with you. 
Uh, maybe Travis Kelsey on the other side Ooh. of the bracket. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. You got about four minutes. We'll see you on the other side. He's saying don't go off the top. It's too shallow. See that belt buckle? All you're going to hear this stadium do is they put the big paw up. They start shaking it. They go, whoa. Yeah, he loves the defensive side of the ball. He said yesterday to me that this is a blue-collar team. They win it on special teams. They have five block kicks this season. The defensive side of the ball, Lynch leads the Big 12 in sacks. But also on the offensive side, Denzel Mims is an absolute animal. He is a weapon. Charlie Brew is a quarterback from Blake Travis. His dad was a quarterback in Texas. Yeah. His grandpa was a quarterback in Texas. And the people here in Waco just so happened to get a chance to see Charlie Brewer on a daily basis. Okay. Hey, 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 Follow hey, up. hey, hey. Boomer here is going to mean a little bit different than what it means on the internet currently. And hopefully here in Baylor, they hope they're not hearing a lot of Boomer sooner. Everybody wants to be a punter, including quarterbacks. If I was a quarterback, I'd want to be a punter as well. Zero yards on that punt. Zero. That's an embarrassing situation. Zero. The Dak dance that gets on national television has led to a lot of uh, losses, but you got to uh, respect the hips being able uh, to uh, go. What am I going to make for college game day? Well, I want to make something creative. I want to make something fun. No, to hell with it. I don't like OU. <laughs> <laughs> it's so thick. Look how thick that thing is. That's years and years of patience. Right now? Okay, let's do it. Good we job. are out here on the Brazos River, which you can take a boat to the game. One of the only stadiums in the country that you can do that. It's beautiful out here. A lot of people would say, this is the last time I'm going to be on game day. Last time I allegedly did what I'm about to do, I ended up in a jail cell. Let's go! <laughs> Giving the old white guys something to complain about. It's the Pat McAfee Show. Welcome back to that show. This tournament season, take care of your hair and holes with the best tools for the job. We're talking about Manscaped. Hell yeah. The global leaders in male grooming from head to toe. When the clock winds down in March, be clutch and avoid the upset with the Manscaped Performance Package to keep all your hair and holes tamed. Join the Manscaped movement and start taking care of your balls today with 20% off plus free shipping by going to manscaped.com forward slash pat for our exclusive offer. Your bracket probably isn't going to be perfect, but with the Manscaped Performance Package, you can be confident that your nose, ear, and ball pubes are. That Manscaped.com, uh, manscaped the Manscaped 
trademark. Oh, okay. Ooh, TM. TM. By the way, performance package is the ultimate men's hygiene bundle and number one overall seed this season. Wow. wow. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, they're doing it, man. WVU got number three seed, by the way. Ooh. I feel about it. Thought we were going to get two, potentially. It doesn't matter. Our region's soft. We're going right to the final four. <laughs> Included in this package is the Weed Whacker and Hair Nose Trimmer. It is fantastic. 79% of partners polled that they do not like long nose hair. It's a major turnoff. Go ahead and take care of that. This bundle also includes the Lawnmower 3.0 Trimmer, the best trimmer on the market for your balls, butt, and body plus your purchase goes towards a good cause because they partner with alex caruso of the lakers Ooh. the testicular cancers or testicular cancer society to bring awareness to testicular cancer men's health and early cancer yeah, let's go get 20 percent off and free shipping with the code pat at manscaped.com that's pat at m-a-n-s-c-a-p-e-d.com this is a four hour long read but mm -hmm. like uh that's awesome they're doing yeah, it. yeah. great cause Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. So, we have the... We have the... Just the, classic mix-up. The Chiefs PR guy's phone number in the system. Mm -hmm. So, the boys back there have been calling the Chiefs PR guy. who's probably, like, in the middle of quite a frenzy right now. <laughs> oh, for Shout out, Brad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zito out. Thanks, B-Rad. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, dude. That guy's a good guy. Um, okay, welcome back to the show. Travis Kelsey should be joining us as soon as we call his number. Shout out to Brad over at the Chiefs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you, Brad. Brad. I mean, he didn't put this one together, but, you know, it is nice whenever you just get a chance to, you know, call a guy and say hello. Did we say hello to the yeah, Chiefs yeah. PR guy at least? Did we give him a hi? Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, good. Give him a little hi, duty. How you oh, doing? Yeah. He's probably not exactly thrilled Travis is coming on. We went directly to him through them instead, but that's fucking business, baby. What do you got, Diggs? So, Josina is busy this morning. She, she, she said she just got off the phone with Cole's wide receiver, T.Y. Hilton. T.Y. spoke to Chris Ballard, and Chris Ballard told him he would at least like a chance to match any potential offer that T.Y. gets on the market. Okay, so that sounds like great news. T.Y. Hilton probably staying in Indianapolis. Let's get another weapon in here. Maybe Galladay, huh? Mm. Bring in Kenny Galladay Whoa. alongside T.Y. Hilton with Carson Wentz playing catch with Michael Pittman and some other guy I did not know was on the Colts was in that photo. Uh, it looks like the Colts are all the way back. Let's go. Yeah, T.Y. Okay. Oh, that's good news. The Chiefs figured out ways to make money, by the way, in their oh. salary cap. Travis Kelsey, a man who might be joining us here soon. We do have the Chiefs PR guy on call if we'd like to have him potentially <laughs> nice. on the show or whatever. But the thought of the Chiefs still being able to add players. This is just like, yeah, the Chiefs are about to have more than $20 million in cap space. Okay? Uh, and that's due to simple restructures from uh, Stone Cold Chris Jones, defensive lineman who just did his deal last year. Uh, Travis Travis Kelsey, who just did his deal last year, and Patrick Mahomes, who just did his deal last year, they all have these four, five, ten-year contracts that they can kind of kick this money down the road when the salary cap goes up. The Chiefs now have $20 million to make some plays. How will they spend it? Just release two tackles from their team. Will they go to an offensive lineman? Let's assume that's where they're going to probably look. But, man, you give Andy Reid some more money, you give that Chiefs team some more weapons, that is a nightmare for everybody. Mm -hmm. Tampa's doing it with Shaq. Godwin's back. They're somehow going to be able to keep everybody down there. What will happen with Gronk and Antonio Brown? Who knows? But the top of the league seems to be getting better somehow in this thing. Yeah, all roads kind of point to Trent Williams, right? At left tackle for Mahomes. I mean, they need well, to the block. The Colts also need a left tackle. Oh, that's true. And, and they the have Colts, more money. And the Colts have a lot <laughs> yeah. of money. Okay, the Colts have a lot of money. Now, we, we just heard that the Colts are going to match for the T.Y. Hilton contract. So let's assume that's going to take some money out. I don't know what the market's going to say about T.Y., but maybe T.Y. does a one-year deal by the way then he can hit an actual free agency as mm -hmm. well oh good there for ty go. yeah. hopefully ty will do that get a tackle the chiefs need a tackle the raiders are working out kyle long oh, i yeah. guess mm -hmm. kyle long has stops in the las vegas raiders who just cut every one of their offensive linemen basically going into an offseason where they were cap strapped and couldn't figure out their team they have yet to be the playoffs with john gruden as 
their coach. Who knows how this whole thing pans out in the end. Kyle Long's dad is a Raider legend. So this was our immediate thought on this show. Yeah. As soon as we heard Kyle Long was coming out of retirement was maybe he goes back to the Raiders because that's where his dad was. He is also visiting the Kansas City Chiefs who just freed up Ooh. $20 million who also have offensive line issues. This is going to be interesting. Welcome back to the NFL, Kyle Long. Yeah, yeah, Kyle. Yeah, Very happy Kyle Long's back in the game. He looked healthy when we talked to him. Oh, yeah. Now he's putting out workout videos and everything. He's going to be quite an asset on this market, I believe. And the Raiders, too. they got to add a whole new offensive yeah. line, too, because they don't have a left tackle either, right? Because Trent Brown got traded to New they England. They pretty much released their entire offensive line. Yeah, yeah. Richie Incognito's gone. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I said that they lost their entire offensive line. And while I was saying it, I was thinking to myself, like, did they lose every? I think it's four out of five. Yeah, yeah. I think it is four out of five. <laughs> yeah. Because as I was, the way I speak, okay, I'm like a sentence ahead in my brain. And then I just hope it kind of connects. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I just, I'm hoping that the previous sentence that was already figured out is just going to go. And as I was piecing together that one, I was like, the Raiders lost one, two, three, I think four, like, uh, the whole fucking offensive yeah. line. Mm -hmm. They might have one remaining, but this comes after a time where there was an entire call by Raiders fans to get Russell Wilson in yeah. there. Mm -hmm. This comes from a time where there was an attack on our show because we thought Derek Carr's time as a starter in the Raiders was potentially over yeah. the day after he popped his groin on primetime television mm -hmm. and they hadn't been to the playoffs. I don't know what the Raiders are going to do. John Gruden's locked in for a 10-year deal going into year five. At this point, year four. Four, four going into year four. Sure. So he's got what two more chances at this whole failing thing, yeah, right? Because this first one, not great, blew up the salary cap, fucking overspent, mm -hmm. did not get there. Now they're cutting everybody, they're rebuilding. He probably has another shot here, and then they have one more shot after that going into that 10 year, 100 million dollar deal. That'll be interesting if he gets 10 years at this thing and it all goes to shit. Because the salary cap and figuring out who's your guy, who's not your guy, that's going to be a case study for some time. Mayock and Gruden out there in Vegas. Do you think he feels any actual? I mean, like he definitely feels the pressure, but also, I mean, in his situation, like they they haven't really won yet. Like, why wouldn't he go after Russell Wilson if he thought that was the case? Let's go to Bong Bomber in Ontario. What's going on, Bong Bomber? We appreciate all your hard work around here, by the way. Ah, uh, thank you, Pat. Boys, happy uh, Brinks Week Monday. Hey, thank uh, you. Just a quick sh shout out to the McAfee Mafia. Uh, I think we proved that this small regional show ain't nothing to fuck with. Yeah, yeah. It, ain't the size I... of the it doesn't matter how big the dog is, he don't stand a fucking chance against a million little ones. <laughs> Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Bong Close Bomber. Is, yeah. I, I thought you were going to do the size of fighting the dog, but yeah. then you switched that thing to a million little dogs, and I think both play. <laughs> Bong Absolutely. Bomber, both yeah. play. We appreciate that, pal. Fucking right, Pat. We, we, you got a mafia built. The fans are behind you. It doesn't matter what you do. We're going to support you. Uh, I was just wondering, though, if you could help me up with uh, John Gruden's uh, vitamins dealer because I don't know what the fuck he's smoking, but I would definitely like some. Okay, so a lot of people in the Raiders fan base, I do believe, have turned a little bit on the Chucky guy. Michael Lombardi came on our show last week, and I did not expect it out of Michael Lombardi. No. Now, friend of the show, Michael Lombardi's been around football a long time. Started with the Raiders, I believe, without Davis. Then he obviously worked in Cleveland, in New England. He has tight relationship with Belichick and a lot of people around the NFL. Um, he came out and basically said, like, yeah, John, that's John's problem. John, John has no idea what he's doing when it comes to building a roster. John has no idea what he's doing with money. John has no clue what he's doing. Everybody else can get fired, but all errors lead back to John Gruden. And I had no idea that Lombardi hated Gruden, by the way. And he's like, I don't hate Gruden. You just look at his track record. None of the rosters he's been a part of have been that great because coaches normally can't separate what they need right now versus what will be great for the team going forward. Are the Raiders going to be able to figure that out? Is Gruden Gruden's still going to be the guy calling shots on who signs where? Or is Mayock just going to have to potentially sit back and ride that Titanic right to the bottom of the ocean? And I saw this morning, the Raiders, and this isn't all Gruden, obviously, are the only team to only have one winning season since 2003. Yeah, that's, but Yikes. by the way. Yikes. Expectations, are, I guess, are rather low over there. But yeah. Kyle Long goes over there. He ain't going to fucking let that no, fly. No way. Uh, joining us now is a man who uh, all he does is go to Super Bowls. Mm -hmm. That's all he does. Mm -hmm. All he does is break records. Yep. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the greatest tight end walking this earth right now. Incredible dancer. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's a great mm -hmm. dancer. And I believe this is potentially the first time he's speaking since the last season has ended. Ladies and gentlemen, legend Travis Kelsey. Yeah! Wakey, sunshine. How you doing, pal? It's uh, it's early over here on the West Coast, boys. It's 
good to see you guys, man. And yeah, this is my first time coming on, coming out underneath the rock that I was just under uh, for a while there after the uh, after the Super Bowl, man. But it's uh, it's good to see you guys, man. Well, it's good to it's good, it's good to come back to life. Uh, with you guys, man. Well, I told you last night that as soon as we heard that you were potentially coming on, the boys and I were buzzing. The boys were yeah. buzzing. We yeah. are we are big Travis Kelsey fans over here. We appreciate you joining us this early morning, uh, 941 <laughs> over here. It has come out now, Travis, and we'll talk about, you know, what happened after the Super Bowl and back-to-back -back Super Bowls, by the way. Hindsight, 10 years down the road, you'll look back, you won't be as bummed as you were. That's the worst game you can ever lose, by the way, because shortened offseason, it's a nightmare. But it's come out that you restructured your contract as did Chris Jones and Patrick Mahomes to help out with the salary cap situation. Was that something you just understood was going to happen? Did they come to you because this, the way so, – how does that whole thing pan out? And I assume you were very quickly like, yeah, no problem, let's do it. Yeah, no, I think um, – actually, I haven't restructured yet. I think uh, – or I can't even say yet because they, they – I don't even know if they've really reached out to me about it. I think my uh, contract was right there – uh, in line with uh, with everything we wanted to do this year. So everybody else had to kind of restructure. I think Pat and uh, Chris Jones uh, both did uh, the restructure so that we could uh, we could shop a little bit this off season. Um, I think mine was just right in line. I think I think uh, so you did not. I don't think I don't have I don't think I have to do anything. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. You should have just ran with it like you're a hero. Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, I take yeah, quite yeah, a haircut. You know dude, what? That's it. Uh, anything for the team, guys. <laughs> 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 By the way, you would do that, okay? Because you're... I would, if the, if it came to it, I would guarantee I would, without a doubt, restructure and, and figure something out, man. Have you heard about these voidable years that have popped off? And did you know about this? This is becoming the new craze in the NFL. Like for instance, Taysom Hill just signed a four-year, hundred and forty million dollar deal, all years voidable. What does that even? All yeah, good. Oh. That... Oh, time, time. Can you say those numbers again? Okay, so Taysom Hill, quarterback, BYU, now at the New Orleans Saints. He's uh, he, he's a quarterback now? Is he a tight end? <laughs> <laughs> hey, if those are tight end numbers. <laughs> yeah. Those are tight end numbers, no. <laughs> You're not restructuring. <laughs> not restructuring at all. We are uh, renegotiating this whole thing. No. So they had to do – everybody's been doing these salary cap gymnastics, and they've been adding, adding in these voidable years, which I guess mean absolutely bullshit at the end. Did you know about this? Have you ever heard about this and was that a conversation with you whenever you were doing your deal no no i think um i think i it just went right over my head man I'm, i don't know anything about these voidable years man i'm just uh i, Me neither. I just knew i just know you, you you play you get paid that's all i know <laughs> <laughs> the voidable years is this new weapon everybody's using because the salary cap became a big problem for everybody let's talk about your team though you guys are not in trouble at all actually Allegedly, I mean, that same report that said you redid your deal is wrong. They said that $20 million is available yeah. now. But you guys getting back to the Super Bowl after winning the Super Bowl is not easy at all. That is a very difficult challenge. Even, no matter how good your team is, you have to get lucky health-wise and everything like that. When you guys were going through this season, did you feel as if, okay, it's Super Bowl or bust? And is that how you guys have to view it now because you guys have already won one and kind of been titled the next dynasty? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I think it was Super Bowl or bust uh, when we were my first year with the Kansas City Chiefs. I, th I think that's just kind of been Coach Reed's um, mindset. And, and, and he presents that challenge to everybody in the building, man. And it, it's, it goes from every player to every coach to to even even the front office side of things. Um, if we're not winning the Super Bowl, if we're not going to the Super Bowl, it's just it, – it's, it's, it's a failure. It is what it is. And and with that mindset, with that, with the the goal, the end goal being that, um, you have no choice but to keep getting better and to keep striving for greatness. And uh, sure enough, I mean, a sour taste taste is in my mouth for how the season ended last year, and um, really just fired up to get things uh, going back in the right direction and uh, and just playing football again, man. I've had to relive the Drew Brees Super Bowl win, right, which is my rookie year. We lose. I did nothing to get us to the Super Bowl or to lose the Super Bowl, <laughs> right. which, by the way, is good news. Okay, is good news. But after the Drew Brees celebration, you go into that locker room. It was the most miserable place I'd ever been in my entire life. I had never seen a locker room like that. It was a lot of older guys, I think, that understood, like, hey, this team isn't going to be here again next year. This is not an easy thing to do. Everybody disappeared for like a 
month. They went to other countries. They went low, laid low. It is very difficult to lose a Super Bowl, especially when you got a good squad. How was the locker room afterwards? Was there any optimism at all? Who spoke? There was a really like how was that entire feeling? Because that is a fucking heartbreaker there in that entire moment. Yeah, man. I um, I. I... I say it like this, man. You ever just wake up on Sunday and got your ass beat by a bunch of guys you never thought you'd get your ass beat by? Um, yeah. That's exactly what just happened. I mean, we 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 never thought that was gonna happen. I I think um, the I I, th- I don't I don't think the score of that game is is true to who we are and 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 where we rank in terms of uh, being a great team and um, being as good as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, it was just kind of a, you know, the situation is what it is, and uh, and we have to live with that. We have to try and get better because of it, and um, you know that's 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 all we can kind of take from it right now. It's just you know, uh, it is what it is, and 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 hopefully you know, in my mind, hopefully we're there next year, and Tampa Bay's there next year, so that we can go ahead and uh, and, and and go after it again, man. That's all I. That's all that's really uh, inside my. Uh, ingrained in my heart right now to just, you know, work your tail off and get back there next year because uh, that what we just put on uh, display, um, I don't think that's our best effort, man. Yeah, well, and, and by the way, those types of things are going to happen. Uh, did you – you probably haven't – I never watched the Super Bowl back that we lost, but have you seen the photos of what Patrick Mahomes was doing in that fucking – have you seen the <laughs> – have you seen a photo of him completely sideways – doing that thing is it like every game is just like oh this guy is the guy like is there things behind the scenes too that we don't get to see that's like yo this is the guy like is he like that all the time or just showtime happens is he off the field the same exact guy you would want to be the guy of the nfl which is what he is i think for the next like 15 20 years at this point yeah no i think it's uh every time he puts the helmet on man it's just who he is it's ingrained in him to to compete um, to put everything out there on the line every single time. Um, Pat's, Pat's a special guy in terms of that, man. And I, you know what? It's just, uh, it doesn't sit right that, that, that we all went out there and, and had a game that, uh, that wasn't our best game. And I know that uh, if anybody's motivated, 1-5 is more motivated than anybody in the world to, to get back out there and try and get another Super Bowl, get to another Super Bowl, uh, the third one in a row, man. Listen, I got a lot of respect for all your teammates, okay? But... Uh, as a person that bet on the Chiefs a lot this year, mm-hmm. it felt like any time a play had to be made, third down, red zone, an entire drive, you and him connected. And I don't know if that's something that you think about. Like, hey, whenever there seems to be a play that needs to be made, it feels like the ball is coming to me on a regular basis. But this year, you took your game to a whole nother level. How... how how are you going to be able to duplicate what the fuck you did last year? You're getting old now, dude. You're getting yeah, old. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you're becoming an old man now. You know what I mean? You dominated last year, dude. It was awesome to watch. Just like your best season yet. How do you build off of that? Um, first off, I get my old ass in the cold tubs. Heard <laughs> <laughs> it. Heard it saves a, a few years at the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with that, and just I don't know, just um, you know, I've been very fortunate that uh that. I've had the opportunities that I've had here in Kansas City, and it is what it is. The guys aren't getting the tight ends having aren't getting the ball thrown to them like I am in Kansas City, and and to have that opportunity to build that trust with the guys in the building, uh, with the coaches, to be able to you know be there for Pat on that third down and whatever when we need it the most. Um, I take pride in that man, and I, I've been very fortunate to have that have those opportunities come my way, and. Um, you know, I'm just going to keep working my tail off in the building and showing everybody that, that, that I do take pride in that and that I do, you know, want those opportunities when when the time's right, man. I saw you throwing your body in front of people. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw you. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Just fire those hips, man. Hey, hey. <laughs> what do you get, your brother? You and your brother just line up. You're like, all right, I, I got to start blocking people easier, Jason. How do I... <laughs> How do I how do I leverage the hell out of this thing? You know, you did start throwing your body a little bit more this year. Well, I mean, that's just I I, I took it upon myself, and I think it's going to keep getting better as as the course of my career goes on. I, um, and that's just me as a as a football player, as a person, man. I, I feel like there's always room for improvement, and and you know, I think I think I've been kind of, because of how good uh, George Kittle and a guy like Gronk are, because of how good they are at blockers. I think. Um, it's kind of, you know, 
it's been whatever. I've taken some heat for being a bad blocker. Oh. And it's, and it's on me. It's on me to, you know, show everybody that I that I want to do that for my teammates, that I can be hey. there for my teammates. You hear and that you too, know, huh? I'm going out there, and I, I got to do whatever I got to do to uh, get north, get that ball in the end zone. Man. Do you hear that? Do you hear that? You said I've been, people have said, it seems like you do hear that type of criticism, huh? Yes, without a doubt. Well, I, 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 and honestly, I love the criticism because it helps me become a better player and gets me to understand, you know, what I have to do to, to become better. And um, I don't know. I take pride in, in being an all-around football player, man. A lot of people saying a lot of dumb shit out mm. there, Travis. What do you got, Tom? <laughs> yeah, Travis, speaking of, speaking of blocking, with you guys losing both tackles, do you assume that you're going to have to help a little bit more in that aspect this upcoming season? Chip, chip, chip. Um, if that if that's what we got to do, that's what we got to do. I think uh, I got full trust that that Brett Beach and the front office and Coach Reed are gonna gather up the best offensive line that we could possibly get uh, with the free agency and the draft coming up, um, and and just everybody coming back healthy and, and ready to rock and roll this year. I think uh, you know Schwartz Fisher. I mean, I. I love those guys to death, man, and, and it ripped my heart out to see those guys go. I, I don't even know what it means to be an NFL player and not be Eric Fisher's teammate. I mean, we came in huh. the same same year, uh, got drafted the same year, the the first year that Coach Reed uh, stepped his uh, big foot in the building. And, oh. and I think it's uh, I think it's you know. It's definitely uh, it's definitely something I've cherished being being here all eight years and uh, and for me to be the the last Mohican man the last one standing <laughs> of, of of the original cast man it's uh, it's definitely something prideful but I, I I'm I'm gonna miss the hell out of out of Fisher Schwartz and even uh, Anthony Sherman you guys are familiar with the the, oh, yeah. the fullback that just retired so right we're, uh, we're gonna track. we're gonna miss some we're gonna miss some guys that's for dang on sure but uh but you know. Football is going to be played, man, so we just got to go out there and fire up, man. Last week was deemed massacre week, and then it's happening here because guys are getting cut left and right out of nowhere. That's the NFL that, like, I think it's publicized more this year because it's bigger names, but every single year the amount of turnover on a team is insane. That's why getting back to the Super Bowl, even though you guys have a bunch of big-name players, is unbelievable. Travis, I appreciate your time this early-ass morning over there in L.A. Enjoy your day. Hey, and if Taysom Hill's getting four for 140, uh -oh. like, yes. is he an H-back? What is he? Ah. Hey, is, is he, uh, they're all voidable, though. <laughs> yeah, you got to start getting some snaps in, dude. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Travis. Shout out to Taysom Hill, man. Hey, I appreciate you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Go back to bed, man. You're the best. Dad, I was telling you, one of these days I got to get myself out to Indy and, and, and check you guys out in, in, in the building, man. Hey, we got a hoop out there, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We can make that happen if we have to, you know. Hoosier style, baby. You know how it goes. Oh, yeah. Is that a 10 foot rim or not? Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Travis Kelsey. Yeah! Yeah! It's the only part of the movie I remember. It's the only one where they got out and Good part, though. Was... Good part to remember. No, Thank you. Stay than golden, that. pony boy. <laughs> yeah. Never read that book either, but that's The Outsiders, right? Yeah, you got it. I did, a, uh, I did a backpack giveaway for kids. It was charity. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was nice. a big deal, and they picked me to be the face of it. I've never read a book, obviously, but I knew going into it I was going to get interviewed. Mm -hmm. So I was like, uh, quick, need a book, need a thing. I think it was Jeff Saturday. He was like, what, what? I was like, yeah, I've never read a book. I'm going to do a, I'm the face of a book thing. And he was like, stay golden, pony boy. I'm like, y y you're damn right. Hell yeah. And he's like, no, that's your quote in The Outsiders. I was like, okay, sounds good. So that I did an interview. And they're like, what's your favorite book? Oh, The Outsiders, you know, stay golden, pony boy, something that you really got to. <laughs> and I just talked my way around it. That was... That was a real moment. But anyways, when we play hoops against Travis Kelsey, that's going to be a glorious day. He did not restructure his contract. That is some breaking news. Well, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. You know he's going to go to his agent right now and be like, hey, I heard Taysom got 140 million. 140 fucking million? Now he said they're all voidable. What? Does that, is my contract voidable? Yeah. <laughs> Can we void out of this thing or what? Hour one, wrapping up here. Big thanks to Travis Kelsey for joining us. He's, um... He's good, dude. Yeah. Very good, dude. Best. Damn good at football. I've been texting with him over the last couple of weeks, you know. I'm like, awfully quiet over there. Interesting. Yeah. You know, like, hey, you lost the Super Bowl, dude. He's come back to life a little bit. He's like, ah, I can't right now, man. Whatever. I'm bummed. He was legit. The guy was legitimately bummed. And, like, it is terrible to lose the Super Bowl. You'd rather go. No, you wouldn't. 
but you get it. You, yeah. You'd much rather just not even make the playoffs mm -hmm. than have the inevitable heartbreak of thinking you won a Super Bowl and then not winning a Super Bowl. You get extra five weeks of play uh, off season, yeah. and you don't have that moment where it's like, oh, we're gonna be remembered for never. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Especially for them too. They were like untouchable. <laughs> Hour one wrapping up. They were untouchable. Yeah. yeah. Fucking Pat was just couldn't cover. Bro. They gonna be back. New contracts for Jones and Mahomes, but not for Kelsey. Yeah. Our two's on the other side. This is the Pat McAfee Show. We are moments before going out onto the field and kicking some field goals to raise a crap ton of money for the kids. And uh, I'm about to become an old man. I said, I do this, then I do this, then I do this. Oh, Kelsey. Oh, my God. You want a little bit of that grandpa? Hey, you, you see, you go, I'm just so excited we can raise some money because that's what we're here yeah. for. What's going on? Hey, oh hey, hey. <laughs> it is hard to see down. <laughs> There's no way I live this long in real life. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for our contestant and cheer him on as he attempts to raise $70,000 for cancer research. On your mark, get set, go! Opening kickoff in that uh, Super Bowl you're referring to with the Colts, Hester takes to the crib. You having a little bit of a heart attack there? <laughs> Very bad, bad decision, Pat, on my part. All week up in Indy, we're practicing, and we know he's their number one threat. They don't have a lot of offensive weaponry. They went with defense and special team. So for the whole week, we're in Indy. We're not going to let him touch the ball. We practice squibbing to the corners, bouncing the ball, high kick, pop-up kickoff, punt it out of bounds everything to not let him touch the ball. Uh, we have a chapel service 
and the chaplain talks about David and Goliath. And he says, hey, the reason David beat Goliath, he wasn't afraid. Everybody else was afraid. David ran right at him, threw it right between the eyes, and it was over. And I started thinking, we're playing, we're acting like we're afraid of Devin Hester. So I told the team on Saturday night, I hope we lose the toss. We're going to kick off. We're going to kick it right down the middle. When we pound him, they'll know we mean business. <laughs> so David Goliath, it's going to be over. We kicked it to him 12 seconds later. He's in the other end. I'm <laughs> <laughs> looking at me saying, what idiot decided to kick the ball to Devin Hester? But fortunately, uh, the, the last 59 minutes, the team made up for it. <laughs> Wait until they see the tone we set on the opening kickoff. Yeah, mm. yeah that was it. I that bet you Vinatieri was in there. Ah! Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's such a good idea. <laughs> <laughs>
No, no, Corey. Corey did. Yeah. No, yes. no, no, no. Yes. He's above Corey. No Dan. way. Yeah, he is. Anyways, it doesn't matter. He's going to be number one or number two or maybe even number three after this free agency for Cam Newton or whoever the quarterback is up there. This is good news that the Patriots are investing in the offense. A lot of people maybe hate the Patriots. I understand that. They were great for a long time. There's a lot of shit that kind of floats around the Patriots mm -hmm. whenever you think of the Patriots. Who's the old guy up in the booth? You know, there's yep, a lot yep. of things that you, plus a lot, you know, Bill and uh, get this whole thing. But they have not invested in that offense for no. a long time. It's one of the... I, I'm outside the building looking in. I think it's probably one of the biggest causes for the massive falling out between Tom and Bill. Yeah. Tom knew that there was nobody on the offense, felt like the team wasn't investing in the offense. So what does that mean? That means Bill's not investing in the offense. He's the one who puts the team together. He's also the head coach that you have to work with on a daily basis. He's also the person that doesn't really listen to your ideas, which probably revolve around bringing in another player, which is why when Antonio Brown came to town, yes. come to my house, come, you can stay here. <laughs> then as soon as that, that thing ends the way it does because of a massive accusation that I'm not sure has been handled. Hopefully it it does get handled uh, in is, you know, whichever way, justice or the other way, whatever you got to do. But I think that is a massive cause for the reason why Tom and Bill had a falling out. If that offense continues to be good with weapons that they've had in the past or maybe can keep up with other teams, you assume Tom will deal with all the bullshit as long as we're continuing to win. Once they stopped winning and once the offense stopped looking like a elite offense, it seemed like that was potentially the beginning of the spiraling out of control between Tom and Bill's relationship. Now, they have a lot of respect for each other other obviously but there seems to be a lot of smoke in the conversation that two alphas two of the super most competitive people of all time most successful people of all time could potentially come into a little bit of a disagreement over things after 20 years of very high success the goats at either of their position now they're getting back into the offensive game is this bill admitting fault is this Bill saying, I fucked up for a long time. We got to get better. I'm going to swallow my pride like I've done, which is why we are good. I'm willing to change and adapt game to game, let alone year to year. Is this Bill saying, yeah, we fucked up. We got to fix some things. Well, that I think absolutely is true. And also he probably looked at his draft record when it comes to drafting dudes on the offensive side of the ball where it's like, hey, both the tight ends we took last year didn't do a goddamn thing in the past season. So why not go get a guy who's already established in free agency like we usually do on the defensive side of the ball, but let's just move that to offense and let's see what happens. Stephon Gilmore is allegedly still on the block to be traded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're probably going to move him because he's got one year left at $9 million or something like that in top-end corners, which he is, are like 18 to $20 million a year. They're not going to pay him that in the future, so Bill Belichick has always been a, if I can get something for you, as opposed to go to the end of the road together, he's going to do that. So when Stephon Gilmore goes, maybe there's more picks, maybe there's more offensive weapons, Maybe they bank on the guys that opted out because Uncle COVID. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Maybe they bank on those guys coming back on the defensive side of the ball and handling things. But you got to be pretty thrilled about this. Still don't know who the quarterback is. Well, I, still don't know who the quarterback is. Cam Newton's the quarterback. Now we finally okay. got him a weapon. How come everybody that is reporting about this is like they're still going to be in conversations at the quarterback position? Is that strictly because of the price tag they're paying Cam as opposed to what every other starting quarterback's being paid? I figured it was the same thing that was like last year. Like last year he came in and was like, oh, well, it's still a competition. And Nobody say, thought that, right, no, last year? We were well, all, we were all no, told that he, Stidham was a good he, quarterback. That was the conversation, though, was that it's a competition. With New England people, right? Yeah, well, I, I think across the board, because it's Bill Belichick, everybody has to earn their spot every single year. But, I mean, if he's getting $14 million, the guy is going to start at quarterback. Unless we and, trade Gilmore to maybe say, Sam Fran and hey, come on, Jimmy G. And when Julian Edelman got hurt this year and then wasn't playing in games, yeah. oh, so you would want Jimmy G. See, you just did it right there. Yeah, yeah. Cam yeah. Newton is quarterback until he's not quarterback. We love that's the question I asked you. We love <laughs> competition. No, that's you just making up some bullshit lie because I knew how you actually felt. And you finally got that out of I the love end. Cam. At the moment, he is the starter, but the moves can still be so made. So you take Jimmy G over Cam Newton? Uh, if he plays better in camp, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Oh. Let's take it to training camp. Okay, okay, let's get, let's get back to Cam Newton, though. Let's get back to Cam Newton, though, okay? Because, yeah. I mean, you're... Now, how can anybody trust anything that that mustache has come out from underneath What it? do you mean? I'm just, I'm just telling you how it is. Yeah, in the moment, but then you're finally going to get to your real feelings at the very end, which yeah. is what you did. Yeah, Cam Newton's a quarterback, paid him 15 or $14 million. <laughs> bah, 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 bah. Now, if they do trade for Jimmy G, which allegedly they're still in those conversations, mm -hmm. which is what started that whole conversation. But if you look at Cam Newton last season, not good at football. 
the New England Patriots offense, not great at football, no. okay? And Cam actually went out to saying, I ain't going out like that. Like, that is not how it's going to end, especially after an MVP-like career. Mm -hmm. I mean, just he's had major highs. Last year was not that. COVID came through. However it came through early, kind of affected everything, it felt like. But aside from Julian Edelman, who got hurt halfway through the year, who was he throwing the ball to last year? Uh, Doughboy, Nikhil Harry, uh, Zubin Mahenti, Jacoby Myers, uh, a couple other no names that you never even heard of, probably not in the NFL anymore. <laughs> but, with, but, but they had a hell of a career. They had yeah. a good year. Hell of a year as a Patriot. Patriot way. Yeah. That's right. They could teach and coach the Patriot way if they oh, had yeah. to. There was nobody for him to throw the ball to. And now there were some throws that I don't even. If they had Galladay, Randy, mm -hmm. Julio, anybody, Megatron, Meg, you Devonte. Mm -hmm. I don't. There were some throws that I don't think would go there. But man, if you're a quarterback, it has to be a lot more comforting whenever you have somebody who's a dude out there and you know. Which, by the way, goes back to Tom Brady saying to similar group of wide receivers, "I need you to be faster, yeah. mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. explosive. Mm -hmm. Need you to get open." <laughs> that was on sideline of a game. Not the beginning of the year, middle of the year. After AB. Primetime television. We stink, Tom. And he was trying to be as professional as possible because I think everybody talks about how much of a leader he is yeah. and how, you know, every day it's a let's go, let's go, we're in this thing together, my guys. That moment right there, I think looking back on it, was probably quite a sign of frustration that Tom had at the time. Imagine if they bring in John o. Smith whenever Tom Brady was quarterback. They probably could go, you know, Gronk and John o. there. Yeah. That's Aaron Hernandez, well, Gronk again. Oh, my God. Gronk Here we comes go. out of retirement, would have been huge. But now, like you said, Edelman only played six games last year. You got Edelman. You got Myers, who ended up with a pretty good year. Smith, if you had one more wide receiver, the New England team as a whole, all of a sudden, creeping back in there with the Bills. Uh, Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Johnny know. Smith comes oh, yeah. through all of a sudden. Oh! oh. 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 I like that. I like that. I like that. The, the, that thing's better yeah. than the beep, beep, beep. Yeah. Because I do believe Brinks Week is going to get pretty active yeah. because people do have to spend money, and there's a lot of free agents that have to go places. Last week, Massacre Week, was it? I mean, it was a massacre, okay? A lot oh, of guys yeah. lost jobs. We didn't love it. But it didn't come at the volume that we expected. It could continue today. But today is all about Brinks Week. People are getting paid. Who got paid uh, at my sports update? Patriots are signing former Dolphins run-stuffing D-tackle Devon oh, Godshow on a two-year $16 million deal per Schefter. Woo! New England is bringing it. So now they get a D-tackle back. When was the last one you had? It was the guy that... Uh, Larry Guy. What do you mean? Oh, yeah, you're right. We had Larry Guy yeah. last year. All right. Let's Cheers. go. Sorry, I was thinking Will Fork. Yeah. True. Uh, yeah. I, I was thinking Will Fork, but you're right. Lawrence Guy, also an absolute stud. He is a free agent, so yeah, they're going to have so, to right. so bring in, obviously, His replacement. Devone here. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, but uh, this guy, uh, Gumpy, you know much about him. Good player. The defense on the Dolphins was something that people yeah. talked about being good last year. Kyle Van Noy, gone. Who else gone? Shaq Lawson. Shaq Lawson, gone. Got traded out of there to Houston to bring in somebody else. I guess that's uh, pretty good. And now we got... Uh, Davin Godshow? He was good. He got hurt last year, but he was very good. Devon? De Devon? Godshow. Oh, Does any I like he's a God Godshow. He's a, good, he's a good player. <laughs> he's a, oh, Godshow. He's a very good player. That French, That's a French yeah. at the end there. G-O-D-C-H-A-U-X. And <laughs> Go for those of us that have taken a French class, Joe. Yeah, Go yeah. Tiger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it's uh, Devon. Oh, so if it's French, then you got to think. Anyways, oh. great player leaving Miami. That Miami Dolphins team with two, three weeks ago talking about excitement. Yeah. Maybe in Deshaun Watson trading. Maybe two is the quarterback. Maybe he's not. Are we up in the fits? Cool. Kyle Van Noy gone. Oh. Uh, Shaq gone. See you later. This guy not coming back. Oh, my God. Is it doomsday for Dolphins yet again? Are the – Z, can't have it. I thought you pointed at me. That's not me. Z, I did not. I never <laughs> – Never. I, I thought that was a point. Yeah, Z, can't have it. Whenever there's music actually played, I thought Can't have going. it. Um, what's that, Diggs? Fun fact. Uh, this makes Jesus. Jonas Smith the third highest paid tight end behind Kittle and Kelsey. And then this is the most Belichick has ever spent on a pass catcher. Johnny 12.5. The next highest was Wes Welker at 9.5 a year on a tag. Randy Moss was $9 million a year. Uh, Trent Taylor was supposed to join us 10 minutes ago. He is off today. Trent. What the hell, Trent? So you got some tape to run through? Did he get? Did oh, we? Is that did no. he get banned from our? Did his? Oh, oh, no way! Oh, no. Mask week. They got him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Probably 
probably reloading the uh, COVID sanitizer. I down did. There. I did forget that they had a uh, a COVID gun. Yeah, yeah. Garrett, he beat it. Anti-COVID gun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. By the way, COVID cannon. Who said that? You said that. That should be used more often. The <laughs> COVID cannon. Mm-hmm. I mean, hey. St. Patrick's Day was wide open this past week. Oh, weekend. yeah. my God. Hey, there was videos of brawls in the street. Drunk whites were brawling with other drunk whites on the streets in numerous cities. It feels like now you got 40,000 people in that Texas Rangers stadium. You got, you got titties out and fights <laughs> yeah. happening all over Indianapolis. Other cities are having melees at this point. Uh, and everybody seems... I didn't see a mask or social distancing amongst a lot of people. Oh. Are cities back? Oh, I'm pretty sure. Feels like it. Are I, cities back? I saw a packed club in Florida this weekend. Really? Online. Packed. Nobody Did it look mask. like Wuhan, that pool party? Yeah, yeah oh. it looked like Wuhan. With the lights and everything. And boots, 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 boots. Sorry. <laughs> it's great to be back, huh? Woo! That's awesome. You get to swipe again. You get to stimulus check. Yeah. yeah. Right to the bar. Woo! How much are these bottles? Mm. Way too much. Mm. But we'll pay. Mm. Who gives a fuck up? Mm. I got the pouchy ouchie. 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 Oh, man. What an idiot. Nick went back to Pittsburgh and uh, ran into a Yinzer. And that Yinzer said that he's getting the vaccine and he calls it the Fauci Alchi. <laughs> I'm getting the Fauci out. Jesus. <laughs> Trent's on a plane. Trent's on a plane. Ah, oh, jeez. Oh, he apologizes. Well, Trent's on a plane. Probably hadn't get his vaccine. Yeah. Probably being safe. I bet he is. Fauci. Fauci. Good man. Let's go to the phones. It's Jordan. Right. Jordan in Ohio. What's going on? What's happening, Patton boys? Hey, just hanging out, Jordan. How are you, pal? Doing all right, doing all right. First off, I just wanted to say uh, thanks. You were, uh, I was the first person you called in your uh, one of McAfee's Millions giveaway. Oh, oh Jordan. Really thank you and the boys. Hey, thank, congratulations and thank you for winning, pal. We appreciate the hell out of you. We'll do a lot more. Hey, we'll do more. Uh, Jordan, what do you want to talk about? The uh, question I have is with the Steelers looking like they won't be able to have the cap room to sign or re-sign anybody notable, does Big Ben have to get back to slapping his baloney for them to win anything? That's oh. a great question, Jordan. Sometimes to go <laughs> forward, you got to go back. They do say that, and <laughs> Juju, <laughs> Juju, <laughs> Juju is probably not going to be a Steeler. Probably not. What? But he and allegedly, Juju good. has been telling his teammates he's probably not going to be a Steeler, Mm-mm. which is obviously – much to the happiness of Diggs and the others who hate the Juju Bees yeah, and yeah. Juju Smith-Schuster whoa, whoa, whoa. era in Pittsburgh. But okay. Juju put out a tweet and said, no matter what happens this week, <laughs> if I'm back or if I'm somewhere else, just know that I will never see Pittsburgh as just four years of my life, but a part of who I am. I'll always carry that tough blue-collar spirit for the rest of my life. I love you, Pittsburgh. Hashtag 412. Then a couple, I think it's either high five hands or praying hands. Oh, yeah. Okay, depending upon who you talk to, there are the super emoji people that are like, those are actually not praying hands. Those are high five hands. Whoa. There's people that say that, but I think it's used in like a prayer thank you high five all in one. I believe that is how it is, is used. And the thing about it is, Here's the church. Here's the steeple. Look inside. See all the people. You know ah, what I mean? So that's kind of what I'm point. talking about. And hearts. I like to believe that Juju meant that tweet, okay? Sure. And that Juju will go somewhere else. And it's not because Juju didn't want to stay. It's because Juju is going to make money to go somewhere else. And this is a business. But boy, COVID Cowboy yeah, sure. is dancing on this entire no, situation. Yeah. Yeah. He oh. took his Ju- Juju bean keeper suit off. Mm-hmm. And now he's just living in his glory over there because Juju is going to be signed somewhere else probably within the next day or so. Yeah, I just don't know how we got here, Pat. Oh, jeez, I mean, this guy. Okay. Yeah, skipped yards oh, skipped into the office this morning. Was a team MVP as a sophomore, and then the last two years fumbled away some seasons oh, and stuff whoa, like that. But whoa. I'm just glad he's taking the blue-collar spirit with him because that's who I thought him and the Beast have been disrespecting the most is the blue-collar people and the steel workers. That's who you went to bat for to <laughs> begin with. Yeah. It was a part of your little speech 
speech thing that you did with what do you mean the little speech thing? i'm sorry your I mean, I heart for my felt, heart yeah, yeah thank yeah. you your heartfelt diatribe yeah. in a beekeeper suit that had a cowboy hat on top of it <laughs> i do believe in that speech you talked about the blue collar spirit Correct. of pittsburgh and juju says i'm gonna take that spirit you're right and i'm gonna go run somewhere else with it a little piece of pittsburgh always ends up a part of you yeah. even if you go back for just a weekend that's the rust in the water bingo mm -hmm. and the experiences the things you see the things you hear the places you witness you know and yeah the places you witness is exactly what i meant to say you always take a little pittsburgh with you no matter where you go that's why i used to take vacations back to pittsburgh in the off season mm -hmm. you know see the friends of course let me get a little bit of this get let me get a little Steve. bit of this here before i go back so he's been there for four years right in the middle of it by the oh, way oh yeah playing on the field that Bain blew up, yeah. okay, right in the middle of fucking That's Pittsburgh right. Gotham. He yeah. has been in there. So four years of Pittsburgh will change a man, and it's for the better. Congrats to Juju wherever he goes. I hope he gets the most amount of money possible, and I do believe he would have stayed in Pittsburgh if the money would have been available. Two years ago, I would have, I would have taken a bullet for that man. When, when A.B. was calling him Boo Boo Schuster, when he was the MVP, and <laughs> yep. there was that separation. I love that man. I just don't know what happened in the last two years. And I, it was a good run. Oh, I remember him fondly, but oh, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. bet you will. Good okay. times come to an end. Good times do come to an end, like this first segment of our two. <laughs> We're not a big seg show, but boy, this segment has ended. Mm -hmm. Good block. You know, Trent Dilfer was supposed to be on this one. I know. I, miss, I will miss Trent today. I was excited for Trent. Yeah. Yesterday, while I was celebrating my buzzer beater three <laughs> that covered Ohio State plus six. Soccer, Foxy. Right. What's that, Foxy? How does that happen? I don't know. I've never been on like that side of it before. Oh, that was brutal. This is oh, March. Dude. I needed that one. Bro, this is March. Bro, we lost by six, okay? We lost by six in my head. Yeah. I'm calling AJ and telling him that this is his fucking fault because he wouldn't I.O. <laughs> so my wife, immediately upon hearing that phone, she's like, oh, here we go. She pulls out the, the camera <laughs> to start filming. And literally, as it hits like its second ring, I'm about to give him a full on, you're a, you're a despicable alumni of Ohio. <laughs> like I was gonna give a full thing. He wasn't gonna answer, but uh, I was preparing. I see that guy run down 1, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, yeah. leave his hand. Cleanest three I've ever seen. I'm like, hang up. Are you fucking? <laughs> are you kidding? I have never experienced that side of it before like that. I've been on your side. Oh, plenty. It terrible. feels like everybody's always Too like, many. It, let me tell you, boys. Hey, Red Rover, Red Rover, when you come on over, <laughs> bro, amazing. Yes. It is amazing. What a over. bad way to start March for me. Just <gasps> absolutely terrible. In March, this is your whole life. Oh, oh God. Now, True. Watch your mouth. True. Oh. Foxy <laughs> is a destined failure when it comes to betting. That's why the fade Fox thing is so <laughs> alive. There's a bet right now, though, on FanDuel. If you're in a state where FanDuel is available, spread the love for Michigan State UCLA yeah. playing game. Yeah. Listen, none of Go. us want to bet on Michigan State, okay? It's not something any of us want to do. They don't even have the same name they used to have just a week ago, okay? They're a brand yeah. new team now presented by Rocket Mortgage. Mm -hmm. Foxy wants to bet on Michigan State because that's where he went and all that shit. Right now, we need you to bet on Michigan State strictly because in the spread to love campaign that FanDuel does, the more people that make that bet, the bigger the spread goes. Yep. It's at like plus five and a half right now. Mm -hmm. That thing will probably get up to plus 100 to plus 200. Mm -hmm. No matter when you bet, you are a part of it and you get the final spread at the end of yep. that thing. We've done it in Indiana a couple times. We got up to plus like 80 plus something for the Saints game. Mm -hmm. got, it's just free money going into March Madness. So although Foxy fucking stinks, he has a <laughs> Guaranteed win with the Spread the Love campaign on FanDuel Sportsbook app. Available in your state. Go and get it. If we're not available in your state, we're trying to get there. We cannot wait to. On the other side, we'll take some phone calls. 1-888-MAD-DOG-6. <laughs> this is the Pat McAfee Show, Monday, March 15th.
AJ. I know. <laughs> hey, big game today. O H. Oh my God. <laughs> He hates Ohio State. I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen anything like it. We're going into overtime. Big Ten Championship game. Can't lose by six. Need to get a need to get an IO from AJ going into the overtime period here. Come on. The Buckeyes need us, AJ. Hello? Hello? Oh. Oh. Oh, this fucking guy doesn't care. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, they did it. Yeah, they did Yeah, they only lost my three. Hey, they only lost my three. Oh, wait. Say it. Say it. I know. I know. I know. I know. Yeah, I know. I know. Let's go outside. What a shot. Congrats, Illini. Sorry. You're not sorry. I, I'm sorry that it worked out this way, but I told you. You're not I had sorry. To trust my instincts. You asked me what I thought. I thought it was going to be heads. I didn't what about Travis Kelsey didn't know going out there. 30k on it. Yeah, I mean, was that the cleanest toss of all time? No, it was Great. terrible. But it, that thing took one bang straight in. What a horse shit toss. They watered, <laughs> they watered the field. Old Notre Dame versus USC. They raised the grass. <laughs> you son of a bitch. We all know that wasn't a fair coin toss. No, it was They should not. redo it. It was a lot worse than 50-50 after fucking watching that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say that's why you don't bet 30000 on a coin toss. You know? <laughs> seems, like, seems like a reasonable thing to bet thirty k on. Because you got no control. You got no control, God, guys. So I guess not even like a thought to go into it. Well, Christmas is canceled. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we're giving away a lot, but no, nowhere near as much as we once had thought. No, no. Remember that double 70K? Take it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> FanDuel just made so much money right there. Uh -huh. Use. Every day is game day for these guys. It's showtime on the Pat McAfee Show. Welcome back to that show. Uh, this tournament season, take care of your hair and holes with the best tools for the job. This one's a long one, too. It is, oh. yeah. Sturdy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. A full chapter almost. Text. And I, I feel like, so those that don't know, like, can I... You got a white eye, I guess. You're not going to be able to do that. <laughs> white balance it real quick. Yeah, can you white balance that thing? <laughs> so there's like points, you see. There's like, okay, so you have the intro here. Then there's talking points. And then the call to action, right? This is the one that's most important here. I need you to get this one. But whenever they have the points like this, it means like, hey, we got a lot of good shit going on, is what they're trying to say here. Okay, so like, there's all the points in the middle here, you know? You see that? And then here's the intro, right? So this is new intro each time. Then the points, then the call to action down here, okay? So this is standard ad rate stuff. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So when a, when a company does a massive giveaway, what happens is the talking points then become this very long, long-winded thing. But to explain the giveaway has to open up the intro as well. Right. So for me, it's like, okay, do I read every fucking page of the book here? And then I start thinking to myself, well, if I skip 
point one, ah. does that potentially come back to get me in point three or mm -hmm. point four? Yeah. Is there gonna be a callback potentially in point seven that I missed in point two? That's right. So that leads to an entire song and dance in yeah. my head. Dangerous game. And then I just read them all. <laughs> and then as I'm reading them all, I'm like, God. Good. Lord. Damn, there's a lot. <laughs> I mean, I appreciate what they're doing. This is a great giveaway. Oh, yeah. yeah. But as I'm reading, I'm like, I'm sick of reading about this. Yeah, right. sure. Mm -hmm. Manscaped.com forward slash Pat, 20% off with free shipping. There you go. They're doing good shit right now. Yeah. Great. It's a lot of stuff. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah. Best in the business. You should go check them out. Uh -huh. The lawnmower 3.0. Oh. I know they're doing all this. Okay, they're doing stuff for uh, uh, with the Testicular Cancer Society and Alex Caruso, yep. and they're raising a great amount of attention for something that should be talked about. So not only are they doing good things, and they they got this perfect bundle package bundle that gives mm -hmm. away a lot of stuff. Listen, the weed whacker and the lawnmower 3.0. You need them in your life. Yep. They make your life better. There's no nicks when you're manscaping. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you manscape, you know what that means. What I just said, it sounds like a pipe dream. It's not, it's real oh, yeah. with manscape. And then the lawnmower, you literally put weed it in whacker. your nose. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, the weed whacker, mm -hmm. you just put it in your nose and it just sh sh shuts her down. It's essential, perfect. It has like a, I think it has a Hemi in it. Yeah, it basically has a Hemi motor in both. That thing got a Hemi in it? Yeah, yeah. goddamn right it does. You remember when Dodge was doing that? Mm -hmm. It got a Hemi in it? Yeah. That was a great little ad run there. It was. So was Keith Stone. Oh, oh man. Bring him back. God who rest else? Who, who else uh, did he? Oh, I don't know. I haven't seen well, him. Well, you just can't be tossing that out. I haven't seen him in 15, oh, 20 years. What? No. No I way. I don't know if he survived. We're not Keith it. Stone? Keith Stone's down? He didn't like to listen to the rules, Pat. Yeah, you're right. He wore denim on denim all the time. That's right. <laughs> we have a moment of silence for Keith Stone? Yeah. Do we actually know for sure? Whoa, whoa. Just, just in case, Gump. We don't have time to be wondering. Yeah, we can't. You stepped right on that moment of silence for Keith Stone, didn't you? Was Keith Stone in Canada? Not a chance. Clearly not. No. Clearly not, yeah. Not a okay. chance. Okay. Molt Olson. By the way, Keith Stone. <laughs> Molt Olson. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what is it? What is the Canada? What did we used to try to bring back because it was uh, chat duty free or whatever? What was that beer? What was the um... Molson Triple X? Oh, oh, oh yeah, the they black have, label. They used to have that the Fox, the old strip club. You get that off the tap. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, that will get you going. <laughs> hey, right right right. putting yeah. the X's in Triple X. Ten bucks a pitcher, boys. That's a lot. You guys do the pitchers up there. We used to do the team pitcher at Boston Sports up there in Niagara Falls all the time. That thing's like 70 something. I mean, it was just yeah. this mass. They, they, I think you guys might have invented the ice compartment in the middle of pitcher thing. You know what I mean? Whoa, yeah, I haven't yeah. seen that before. Oh, it's unbelievable. We, we were drinking pitchers when I was like 16 years old in Canada with these things, and it was unbelievable. Oh, it's genius. Very nice pitchers. people. Huh? Pitchers, I miss them. Those are dead, huh? Probably. probably. Yeah, with COVID. Kinda. Buffets, probably. Mm, uh, not Chinese not. ones, because those are delicious. <laughs> I don't know if pitchers Sam are and I ate some very, 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 very low-end Chinese food this weekend. <laughs> nice. From where? Uh, so we got onto the DoorDash, and everything was like 100 minutes or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A busy weekend. It was a busy weekend on there. And the only one that was under 30 minutes was this despicable Chinese <laughs> oh, food. Oh, man. <laughs> It tasted so good going down. <laughs> Crush your guts, though. Oh, my God. Worse than mall Chinese. Yeah. No that's, way. That's the best kind. Though. Oh, my God. It tasted so good. The next 13 to 14 hours, though, <laughs> oh. my toilet, mm -hmm. that fucking poor thing, it was aggressive out there. I hope Chinese buffets survive. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if the CC's one will. No, I think CC's is gone. gone. CC's died? Yeah. Pretty sure they filed big. I do believe. Oh, no, 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 no. no. I, I think Tony's right on this one, boys. I'm, I'm no. very sorry. Five dollars, all you can eat pizza. Nobody uh -huh. knew how they made money to begin with. Nah, and, we're good. They're still here. Yeah. 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 Oh. That's see, Gumpy. That's when you should have asked. Like, is are we sure? Uh, yeah. What I was mean, that all I about? I just want to make sure we're getting everything right here. They What's, got a great fucking deal for National Pie Day. Ah, uh, three point one. That was yes, yeah, yeah. That's a shame. <laughs> that brisk iced tea snowman is that guy gone too? <laughs> that's brisk, baby. Yeah, I that love guy. that one. They went chapter eleven. Turns out they're coming back. Now. Okay, so they chapter go. eleven. They're never going to be a profitable company. <laughs> they're going to owe the IRS cash forever, but they will survive. Yeah, they, they will, will survive. survive. Hey, hey. hey.
this, this, this show. This show? Let's go to Robert, Massachusetts. What's going on, Robert? This show has people making statements. This show? This one. This show. This show. How you guys doing? Good, you? Just, uh, I mean, to be honest, still feeling that Chinese for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. What do you want to talk oh, about? For real? Yeah, yeah, a little bit I, this morning. I've been trying to get through for a while, so I don't know if you guys have been talking about it or not, but I wanted to talk a little bit about the Cam Newton signing. Okay. With the Pats. Um, I have always been, since the end of the season, I was always a pro Cam returning to New England for a second season. Here we go. Let's go, um, Cam. <laughs> that's right. Um, I feel like it's only fair to give him a fair shake because I feel like maybe some of his struggles, especially late in the year after his COVID, could have been due to overthinking, we trying do. to grasp <laughs> certain things that because it's supposedly that offense is notoriously difficult to grasp. Yeah. But and another yeah. thought I had is now that he's been resigned, another why one. wouldn't they make a move to try to trade for OBJ? Oh! Go get OBJ! Now... I don't know if that'll happen. It feels like every offseason, Odell Beckham Jr.'s name is a conversation for potential new destination. I don't know if it's because his contract or because, you know, like people forget about how good he is. Or maybe it's because the Cleveland Browns offense, after Odell got hurt, did seem to figure it out. Now, first year in new offense, no in-person walkthroughs or anything like that, meetings. So I think a lot of offenses that were trying to adjust to a new offense took some time to get used to, and their offense looked a lot better later in the season than they did at the beginning of the season. Perfect example, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Cleveland Browns also had that situation with Stefanski a little bit. Odell gets hurt, and afterwards they seem to start figuring it out, and a lot of people immediately go, oh, they don't even need Odell. They don't even look what their offense did without Odell. I can understand how you could think that because if you just simply look at the outcome. But if you look a little deeper, let's assume that they maybe have that offense a little bit more handled and understood. And if you can add in the dynamic player that is Odell Beckham Jr. into that thing, it'll be better. That's why people try to get a plethora of talent. But if you can get Odell Beckham Jr. to your team, I think there's a lot of teams that are like, yeah, let's do it. I'm not sure Cleveland's like, hey, we want to get him out of here because we did good afterwards. It's like, we did good, and we're adding Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah. is probably how they're thinking this thing. Of course. I love OBJ. You know, I love Julio Jones, too. I love having Travis Kelsey as well. But I think Andrew Berry said when, like, all this started, like, hey, look, OBJ's not going anywhere. He's unbelievable. He's never getting traded. So... It's a pipe dream, okay? It he was continue. going to Tampa, what, last week? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, we thought so, and then we turns out we were duped by get gridiron. Oh yeah, hey, they've been they've been they've been right. I think here lately, though. Tightening it up. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. You get, well, I, you know, I think we were a little bit frustrated with Bleacher Report gridiron account BR gridiron because you know whenever we observe report on what they do. Yeah which we appreciate them doing. Mm -hmm. And then that puts us immediately into a fire. Or they report on what we say, and they put me directly into a fire. You could see how both sides could potentially be like, well, one side in particular, this side could be like, hey, guys, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> yeah. <over there?" laughs> but I do believe what Bleach Report Gridiron does is they step into the batter's box mm -hmm. every single... I think they yeah. step in. I, I think they are going, mm -hmm. yeah, nine... Full nine innings, every pitch, we're swinging. How you doing? Keep it moving. I think they have to do so. We appreciate what they do, but they did put us into some predicaments over there. Uh, Fitz Magic, like you know, yeah, he was yeah. retired. He was done. We're like, did he lie right to our faces whenever he was wearing a bowling shirt with an incredibly good-looking beard and hair, and oh. said, "I got a fire lit under me." What changed? That's what I want to know. Turns out that wasn't what happened at all. Not, Not true. But that's going to happen in this game. It is. You know what I mean? Big time. Yeah, There's going to be mandates and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this show. Let's go to Taylor in Arizona. What's going on, Taylor? This one. Okay. Listen, All right, guys. Here's my take. <laughs> okay. First off, that was like fucking dial-up internet. I had to wait for the call, dude. I'm so glad I got it. Okay. All right. Chargers. Hey, we're pumped too, Taylor. Do not. Oh, Say that again? Hey, we're pumped to have you on here too, Taylor, man. Dude, thank you, man. Hey, AZ Bolt Gang on Twitter. All right. So the Chargers need to make a splash. If the Chargers do not make a splash, I have no hope for humanity ever fucking again. Ever. Okay, and so you're AZ Bolt Gang on Twitter? AZ Bolt Gang on Twitter, yes, sir. So you live in Arizona and you're a Chargers fan? What? I do, yep. 
You like the way the Chargers play football. What? What? You like what their uh, front office does. What? You like that Justin Herbert looks to be a pretty good football player. What? You say, hey, we want to make a big splash. What? He fired the entire fucking coaching staff. What? They moved on to a whole new crew. What? Now they're going to make a play. They have to let some people go, maybe bring in some stars so Arizona Bolt Gang is happy with Tom Telesco. What? If I had the whole fucking coaching staff, that's a pretty big splash. They I mean, just cut a lineman, too. I mean, they also just drafted a very good quarterback. Maybe enjoy it. Splish, splash. Oh, he's Arizona Bolt King, though, dude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's out there in Arizona in the desert fucking fending off. Yeah. Oh, J.J. Watt signing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. Who cares? DeAndre Hopkins trade. Oh, oh yeah. fucking. We got Herbert. <laughs> Keenan Allen's better. They, Keenan Allen is very good. Stopped. Yeah. They <laughs> are losing Hunter Henry, though. Yeah. And also, they just <laughs> the lost their yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, so Arizona Bolt Gang not having the greatest day. I'd assume free agency is not a good time for you right now, but just go back and watch the draft when you guys got Herbert yeah. and then watch that game against the world champions. Uh, that started 15 minutes after Tyrod Taylor got a golf tee shoved through his lung. Mm-hmm. Didn't they cut a corner, too? Yeah, I think there's a lot of moves they have to make over yeah. there. <laughs> they are rebuilding. It might not be the greatest time to be Arizona Bolt Gang, but you do have a quarterback. Got the quarterback. There you go. What? What? As soon as he said his 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 at. That's what mm -hmm. I thought. I knew there was. Yeah, I wanted yeah. to cut him off. But right. a lot of people have been recording their calls and tweeting them to their family and friends saying, look what I did. Oh, okay. So I watch some of these videos, and I'm always like, oh, my God, what do we say? <laughs> You know what I mean? So I, you know, because mm -hmm. yeah. well, that guy's he's been uh, called in a lot. He's been on hold, and then you know, good content is to put out what he's on. And we appreciate people putting out, you know, videos of our show and pumping and everything like that. And every time somebody puts it out, and it's like obviously the only followers are their their tight family and friends or whatever. And I'm added in it, and I watch them. I was like, please God, fucking <laughs> don't. Just be nice at the end of this thing. Yeah, I saw when he said AZ Bulking. You, you, you quick, <laughs> quick little uh, step, and then you stop. Let's go to Robin in New York. What's going on, Robin? Can't, thankful you're calling, Robin. See? There we go, Robin. Nice. Yo, Pat Boys, you good? Hey, just hanging out, Robin. Very appreciative that you called in. We can give cutoff points, you know, yeah, where they true. get if they want to put it out so it doesn't end bad. You know what I mean? <laughs> Robin, what do you want to talk about, man? Yo, so free agency, start, uh, free agency starts soon, and I'm a Jets fan. I want to know what the logic is behind the team keeping a player that wants to leave. Like, wouldn't you rather get something in return instead of them walking away with the player that just retired? Who is it? Who are you thinking of? Big boy Deshaun. Okay, so the reason – okay, great question, Robin. Because the Jets, Sam Darnold is allegedly being – shopped or being talked about not being shopped but eight teams are interested in sam darnold reports albert breer at nfl duve Kleiman. eight nfl teams have been in contact with the jets about trading for 23 year old former third overall pick quarterback he's 23 years old jeez yeah. Yeah. he might be yeah. the oldest 23 year old nfl player we have ever seen yeah. this yep. guy has been through some <laughs> mono ghosts mm -hmm. turnover mm -hmm. new gms new coaches 23 years old. There's people that are drafted at 24, and it's, like, very normal. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, gray shirt, and then went on to be a doctor, and they just got their start. 23-year-old guy, former third overall pick, flashes of greatness, dominated by an era of stupidity. I mean, there's no real tell on what Sam Darnold could be or what he actually is. Eight teams, I think, are willing to roll the dice. Are the Jets going to hang on and do the same exact thing? He's 23. We have no idea what this guy is. Now, you could say after years, hey, years, in your organization, you should know whether or not the guy's a guy. But there's been nothing in that organization that has been a constant that you could judge Sam Darnold against to say he succeeded here, he didn't do here. That old place has been in disarray. I think you hang on to Sam Darnold if I'm the Jets. I use that number two overall pick as beautiful leverage to get a lot of other things that you probably need. Now, if somebody's coming in there, the number two overall pick and Sam Darnold's going back in return for a potential Deshaun Watson or maybe even Russell Wilson, it's kind of got quiet over there in Seattle as of late. So I, I, I don't know. I, I think Sam Darnold has not had anywhere near an opportunity to be a good quarterback. And if you're certain that's not going to happen again, maybe you say, we just go ahead and start anew. But if not, what if you got a guy there who's 23 who's, you know, not too shabby, he's already taken his lumps. To put in perspective, Joe Burrow is 24 and Justin Herbert is 23. God. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, 
while Burrow was probably still at Ohio State, Sam Darnold was fucking just getting slaughtered with his first head coach. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's that it's is early. a it's too early to give up on Sam Darnold. I think so too. I think so too. Now you're gonna have to give him the fifth year option here at some point or whatever. But I mean, number two overall pick and Sam Darnold in return for Deshaun Watson and another. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like number two overall pick, probably another number one and Sam Darnold. Would Houston Texans, who have been making moves with the Patriots and Miami, yep. answer the call for that? I don't know. That seems like a <laughs> that pretty... Poor, that poor kid. Let's not send him from the Jets to the to the Texans. I know. And normally you would think that would be like somewhat of a little bit maybe going up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you would think. But not. instead, in, in the current climate, that seems like that is a trap. Even though uh, Mark Ingram signed down yeah. there. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Uh, good job, Mark. He'd say he, he doesn't know it's about the age time, huh? Build around Mark Ingram. Mm-hmm. Darnold's not a vet, but he could be a guy that could kind of tell a rookie, like, hey, I wish I did this differently. I wish I did this. And then you could trade him during the season, right? If- I don't know if I don't know if now is the time for Sam Darnold to be giving out oh. tips to people. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and also, if you're Sam Darnold, you're not – if they drafted number two another quarterback – that is a very interesting situation you just put Sam Darnold yeah. in. Yeah. You know what I mean? That now granted the NFL is filled with interesting situations, but within the quarterback room, that could be a bit awkward, don't you think? Yeah. Sam Darnold's gonna tell you like, oh, with this coach, like you see how cool he is? You see you see how we have a laid out presentation about what we're gonna do. You see how things are a bit consistent. You see how people are like happy coming into work and seem to be uppy. You see how whenever he speaks to the media he doesn't look like an idiot. You see how <laughs> the players have succeeded underneath it. Do you see how it's not like that everywhere. Yeah. And by everywhere I mean here like the last <laughs> so go ahead and make sure as the future starting quarterback of this place take advantage of that whenever I'm traded out somewhere that's probably terrible. That would be That'd be an interesting situation to put your quarterback in. I don't think Joe Douglas will do that, but maybe. Well, that's what, like, a big part of me, you know, I just assume, like, when I'm saying he stinks, like, I, you do forget that he's 23. Like, he, I think he does need a change of scenery. And, yeah, if, if their plan is to draft a quarterback, which it seems like everyone says they're going to, then why wouldn't you trade him right now? Because you obviously have no faith in him moving forward. Yeah, you, and also if you trade him, it just starts in – are you talking about Deshaun or Darnold? Darnold. Yeah, if you it's trade him, just start a new, like, hey, let's just kind of get everything. Give him a fresh shot. Yeah. And if there are eight teams that are interested in him right now, like if they hold on to him and then draft someone, it's like, okay, well, you know, the, his his value is going to decrease significantly. Are those eight teams interested in just Sam Darnold, you know? Mm. True. Like the Houston Texans are just did a trade with the Miami Dolphins. Brian Flores, formerly of the New England Patriots down there in Miami as the head coach. I'm not saying he's the GM, but assume that he and Cesario or Casario, whatever his name is, probably know each other. Uh, Houston's answering phone calls to New England. They're doing trade formerly of New England, doing deals with friends or whatever. So what happens? They answer phones and then they go, uh, who's it about? Deshaun? No, okay. No. Who's it about? Okay, yeah, we can talk about that. (laughs) Well, what about... No, can't talk. So how's that balance in? You know, I didn't even think about that last week whenever people were saying that they were leaving actual voicemails for Deshaun Watson. The Houston Texans are actually not answering phone calls about Deshaun Watson. It's like, well, then they're not doing anything. Are they calling everybody else in? What's going on here? At some point this week, it feels like, or maybe when you get into the draft, if feels like that Deshaun Watson thing is going to end with him being traded, right? It mm-hmm. feels like it's going Just like to. Russ. Just like the Russell Wilson yeah. thing. Feels like he's going to be traded. I guess the, it came out via Jeremy Fowler this weekend that the Chicago Bears are going to take a big swing at Russell Wilson. It's right. like, how many other teams are going to take a big swing at Russell Wilson? I would assume a lot if they knew he's available. Anybody that can, right? I mean, Russell Wilson's a top five quarterback. Why wouldn't you take weren't, a run? Weren't a lot of the reports, too, though, that they would have to bring in a third team because the Bears don't they don't know if they have enough to actually pull that trade off with Seattle on their own? And Orshlovsky actually had the Jets and Sam Darnold involved in that. It would be like a Bears-Seattle yeah. Uh, Jets trade yeah. or something like that where a couple things are moving. It would not involve the number two overall pick. But, yeah, maybe there will be more teams involved. Hey, I mean, if we get Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, somebody else all in the same. Oh, in a wheel. Do you know what I mean? I, I, car, I thought about our show exploding while <laughs> doing the entire – like, I thought about that entire thing. What were you going to say, Dick? If you're the Saints, um, they're talking about – like Jameis is probably their quarterback now, but wouldn't you wait to see what happens with Russ since he, you were one of the four teams that the agent said that he would go to? Yeah, well, the th- you just paid Taysom four-year, $140 million. 
all voidable years. <laughs> yeah. yeah so. Okay, so we're going to kick this salary cap down the road here. Mm -hmm. Taysom, here's your money. You're going to be one of our guys forever. This is me telling you you're one of our guys because they're only renegotiating contracts with people that are their guys. So Tom Brady, you were able to renegotiate that because you knew Tom Brady was going to be a Patriot. Tom Brady, you're able to renegotiate that and change it up because you know he's going to be a Buccaneer. You can only really do it with like your guys. Patrick Mahomes can happen in Kansas City because he's their guy. So I think this is more so a sign of like, hey, Taysom Hill, you're our guy. We got to figure out this salary cap thing, and let's. This is going to be interesting, but this is how we do it. I'm not sure they're out of the quarterback market. I'm not sure they're out of there. I'm not sure Jameis Winston is necessarily their end all be all, even though it's being reported that both sides do like each other and there'll be competition in camp. But if you can get Russell Wilson, not that they'll be able to afford it at all or how they would make that move happen. Could you imagine Russell Wilson with Sean Payton? Now, I guess we should think, could you imagine Jameis Winston post-LASIK surgery yeah. after being able to see people for the first time, see who's on his team, who's not on his team? That guy can throw completions. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The ball's not hitting <laughs> the ground when Jameis Winston is playing quarterback. No. Now he can actually see who he's throwing to. Maybe that's another offense that you think about. Sean Payton with Jameis would be awesome. Mm -hmm. Nobody's thinking Taysom Hill is the guy, right? No. Or no. well, the contract. They also said they won't give Jameis any more. Like, it's going to be the same contract track for Jameis again this a year, million they're saying, yeah they're saying they're not giving him real money so that would mean that the market is saying that nobody's giving Jameis money then that's what that would mean right I could see it being like cams where what's cams like five million then it's up and to 15 if you make a Super Bowl and shit like that I think the Niners are an interesting play for Sam Darnold it feels like they're done with Jimmy G they are every year it feels like but him, him with him with a good oh, yeah. old line well, and Salah, do he probably does he like Jimmy G? I wonder how he feels about Jimmy G because that could be a potential move to be made. It is interesting about the smoke. And are you upgrading? You go Jimmy, and if Sam's potential ends up working oh, out, I guess you do your thing. And Kyle Shanahan believes he can make anybody yeah. good. Yeah, I've seen him over there. That kid stinks, but put him in our offense. Not too <laughs> shabby. Kyle Shanahan says the the thought that John Lynch, what he said, he signed Juice this week. Yeah, he wants some juice. Five-year, $28 million deal for Kyle Juszczyk. Congratulations to him. He joined the show last week. Ian Rappaport was the first to report it, by the way. I did find out. Yeah. How, though? I don't know. We'll ask Rap Sheet if he's ever got an inside scoop for some reason. Fair. Oh, okay. I'm not saying I was involved, but huh. two friends of the show here. I wonder yeah, if it was. Some, do you friends, think they potentially a bond, maybe? I don't know. We'll ask Rap report. Uh, anyways, Rap Sheet says that the 49ers and fullback Kyle Juszczyk have agreed to a five-year deal worth $27 million. It is signed. They keep their offensive weapon a priority. They concentrated on early. Then he has, obviously, a battery, uh, orange, and something else in there. Some juice guys. box. Some juice. Yeah, yeah, the whole juice thing there. <laughs> Oh, juice thing. Shout out to Rapport putting out emojis and shout out to Yusha getting paid. But it does feel like the San Francisco 49ers are never like satisfied at that quarterback position. Never. Jimmy G, Tom Brady was on the market. They looked into it, said, nah, we'll keep Jimmy G. But there was a lot of conversation this year. As soon as the season ends, it's like, all right, Jimmy G's out. Who are they going to get next? And it's like, oh, we're, we're sure. We think yeah, Jimmy G is going to be our quarterback. They can still be in a big conversation piece this week during Brinks week as well. There are reports about Kirk Cousins yeah. going to the 49ers. Oh, yeah. and the they call whole Bridgewater. Yeah, yeah Teddy. Teddy. <laughs> Last call of the hour. Let's go to Steven in North Carolina. What's going on, pal? Hey, guys. Uh, Longtime fan of the show. Um, I feel like every season I have the same question, and I uh, wanted to get your uh, you and the boys' take on it. Um, every, every season it seems like a team is missing one piece. Like last year it was the Packers with a, getting another wide receiver with Adams. This year it feels like the Steelers and a running back, but they just don't make the move. Uh, they don't make a move in free agency or for a trade, and just want to know what you guys think about that. Well, there's a lot of friends. Thanks for the call, Stephen, by the way. appreciate you listening in and giving a call. A lot of organizations, the two that you just talked about there, the Packers and the Steelers, aren't necessarily the biggest spenders in free agent. They believe in building from within. The Pittsburgh Steelers are like a college almost. You you coach from within. You kind of move up the ranks there. You get drafted. You get, they will bring in players. They will bring in free agents, just like the Packers. They brought in the Smith brothers, paid mm -hmm. over $100 million. They will. But it's not their norm. There's other places, other GMs that operate differently differently. 
And this is going to be this is going to be two different mottos we see going forward, especially with the salary cap and the free agency and the quarterbacks being on the move. Let's win now. Let's bring in free agents. And then there's other teams that are like, we're going to set up for the long haul, five, ten years down the road. There's two different trains of thought. I'm all about the free agency movement because, um, hey, ADD, let's go. Yeah. Let's do this <laughs> thing now. What are we even thinking about? But there's a lot of other trains of thought that are kind of like slow and steady. Let's build this thing the right way on stone, not on sand. And I would assume a couple more teams might adopt this if, like, the Rams were to win the Super Bowl this next year. It's like, okay, this this does work. If you completely sell out for one year and win the Super Bowl like that, then does it matter if you're building for 10 years down the line? Let's, uh, let's look at our poll for today. The poll for today is, will a team become a Super Bowl contender because of free agency? 41,000 votes. Yup. 62% of that. Nope. 38%. So there are 62% of 41,000 people that say, yeah, your team can become a Super Bowl contender in free agency, which is interesting because we asked a poll uh, after the J.J. Watt signing asking <laughs> if um, if this immediately made the Cardinals a Super Bowl contender, and the poll said no. Oh, so maybe man. they'll continue to add on there. I like the fact that you can bring in a vet, the fact that you can bring in a piece, and it immediately raises not only your team's level, but the atmosphere, the environment, the locker room. I'm a firm believer in bringing in a great free agent or two let's see who else is on the other side of this six minute break aj hawk will be Ooh. joining us okay he basically is the reason why the fighting illini won the big 10 basketball tourney this weekend yep. refused to say io to help out ohio state yeah. hour three of this monday march 15th 2021 We'll be on the other side this is the pat mcafee show sirius xm channel 82 mad dog sports radio <laughs> There's a grown man with face paint on it. So you're big nut. I am, and you're, you're little nut. Well, I've had a few of those in my life. I'll tell, you, <laughs> good. Hey, I'll tell you what, big nut. I hope to find you one day on my wedding night. Big nut! Little nut! You did a great job, too. The lines are straight. No DUI problem there. You're, you're really doing a great job here, sir. Hey, big nut, I love everything you're about, bud. Because we are going to win the game! He just spit in my mouth while saying that. The most likely team to make the college football playoff <laughs> is the Steelers in Columbus. <laughs> He said khakis are way too close to that team from up north. If you don't put black pants man. on right now, you're going to get Should've booed out of Columbus. Yeah. So I want the black. <laughs> Makes me look thin. And whenever I say two letters, the place goes crazy. Oh, wait. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Eddie George. <laughs> that offense, though, led by Justin Fields. He has 41 touchdowns accounted for, only one turnover. I don't know how he is in the Heisman favor right now. Well, he certainly has a chance to make a stick at that today, certainly next week. He's supposed to be in Penn State, David Ryan. And Mike McQuarrie told me I wasn't Penn State material. Okay, Herbie was your quarterback. He was a senior year yeah. freshman. What was he like four. as a teammate? Oh, he was great, man. Big big shoulder pads. Uh, Kurt could run for days back in the day. Back in the day. She wants to flex on the gram. He says, lady, we are getting slaughtered by the Pittsburgh Penguins. No. Oh, I got a plane uh, that's supposed to take me down to game day anyway, so I could definitely have it go to Buffalo first. How long is the flight from Indy to Buffalo? You can find us a plane for like 4 o'clock. I think that'll be perfect. Yes, we can do some part around 5, 5.30. Okay, do we have any other, can you find any other planes that can get us out of here earlier than that? I was just asked if I could appear in Buffalo within the next four hours to basically do the show on Fox tonight. Okay, I'll call you back. You know what I'm asking for? Yeah. All right, so he's going to call Jim Mercy and see if I can just use Jim's jet. He's calling me back shortly, but just start packing. Hey. You're the absolute best. Does this sound like a potential yes you're saying? He's the uh, fucking best. I would be so, so thankful. Hey, okay. this is really cool. I don't know how many billionaires would do this for people that have worked for them in the past. This is awesome, and I can't thank you guys enough. Can I take a kendo stick to his back? Uh, we'll talk to 
talk about it when you can't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I appreciate you, man. Hey, let's break the fucking internet tonight. <laughs> what a hilarious life. We are live on Fox in six hours and 35 minutes. Three hours of sleep, no clue what the storylines are. Just fucking let the nuts swing, bro. Let's just go out there and have a good time. Plane company. Holy shit. <laughs> I know, I know. Here we go, boys. Oh. All right. Oh. Night. This is gonna be a night we're gonna look back on and remember. And then we're gonna hop on a plane and head to Memphis for college game day. <laughs> I think this is a joke too. I just wanna let you know. Like this is the Truman Show. I very much understand that this is not supposed to happen. It's like I got the text at 1.42 p.m. today from Mr. H that says, have you heard there have been some travel issues? Uh, can you make your way to Buffalo? Jim Irsay, owner of the Colts, literally lent me his plane. He might be the most confident I've ever been on in something. I didn't know we were that good of friends, to be honest. I was I was throwing a Hail Mary, and he responded and said, yeah. So I got here about an hour and a half before the show, and to work with Renee, Tom, and be on SmackDown with a bucket of makeup on my face. This has been a dream come true bucket list type situation here in beautiful Buffalo, New York. Come on, boys, we're going to be on cable. by Pat McAfee, replacing our guest uh, commentator, Aiden English. No sleeves in, George. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, it feels good here in Buffalo. I got a text from the game, a cerebral WWE official. He said, hey, you might have heard about the travel issues. Can you make it to Buffalo? I said, absolutely. What a magical evening it is, November 1st, 2019. I mean, let's be honest. The Marine was a heater. You know what I mean? Oh, I mean he's a great actor. He was great on the real world. He was great on all of that. Oh, he got nervous. <laughs> That's right. how they do it in NXT, baby. Almost took me out holding another grown lady in the air. November 1st, 2019, greatest SmackDown in the history of SmackDown. Pat, you joining us? It might absolutely be correct the way things have gone here tonight. happening so it's really just natural reaction to everything that was awesome dude that's a bucket that's a real bucket list thing game day bucket list this is like complete bucket list two in one week oh yeah but a horseshoe shoved up my ass and a horseshoe owner lending us a plane Manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Oh, is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hey, hello, welcome back. It is that show, Monday, March 15th. Hour three begins immediately following. This beat drop from Twine. Never sounded so sweet. Shout out to you, Z, uh, and to Twine for that beat drop. Joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, is potentially the reason why the Ohio State Buckeyes lost to the Fighting Illini in the mm. Big Ten Championship. But a man who has won a Super Bowl and a college football national championship, ladies and gentlemen, AJ. Yay! AJ, OH! Yeah, man, it was a heartbreaker, wasn't it? But hey, we're, we're saving it for the tournament. Listen, lost by three. I'm cool with it. You do what you got to do over there. The fact that you refused all weekend to say I.O., you left the O.H. chant just stranded on base. You had that thing sitting out in the middle of space and never brought it back. People are saying that when a prestigious alumni like yourself disrespects the school that they went to like that, there's no chance they will win a championship. And that saying holds to be true this weekend with your actions. Uh, uh, basically all three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. 
Oh, I, I doubt uh, the FaceTimes are going to continue, will they? You know, as Ohio State goes through the tournament? Well, listen, I do have them winning early. <laughs> <laughs> I have them winning early, which, by the way, I don't know if you've signed up yet, AJ. We need you to do it. We are holding a $51,000 bracket bonans. Yay! Um, we are hoping to be the biggest bracket on the March Madness Live app, which is the NCAA's official blah, blah, blah. You get it. <laughs> if this becomes the biggest bracket bonanza challenge on the app, by the time the play-in games start on Thursday, uh, that'll be up to $75,000. Let's go. That's right. Be a friend, tell a friend, get into this thing. The winner wins at now 51000 If it's the biggest bracket on March Madness Live, which you do have to sign up for, which is a pain in the ass. I had to do it this morning. I was not thrilled about it. It's a quick process. And then it's a very easy to navigate app. They actually did a good job. If we have the biggest one on that app, $75,000. Yeah. And if that thing gets up to 50,000 people by the time time the play-in games start on Thursday, it'll be a $100,000 bracket bonanza. Wow. We'll be giving out six figures, too. Well, you're probably going to get taxed the shit out of that, yeah. so we'll drop down to five figures, but we'll be giving that out to one winner. AJ, are you pumped or what? Yeah! Yeah, I, yeah I'm through the roof excited about this situation you have. So the toughest thing is probably just signing up for the app, right? And then I can go on there and I can make my bracket pretty, pretty quick. Yeah, pretty quick. You go down Easy. to the bottom. Now, I went straight to the Midwest region. Okay, the Midwest region was where West Virginia is. And we're just going to go ahead and bebop our way right <laughs> to a Final Four. The Midwest region is terrible. Uh, Coburn, okay, sophomore, who just is maybe the greatest athlete walking this earth. Yeah. He's going to get in foul trouble early against Culver. Okay, he's going to be in trouble. He's got no shot. Oh, yeah. So, West Virginia's going, yeah, I filled up my own out, though. Midwest and the South, one over mm -hmm. the East, one over to the West. How you doing? Keep it moving. It's all in Indiana. We got a great tournament about to cook off or kick off. Let's hope COVID doesn't come in and interrupt this whole thing, AJ. No, I, I, I can't wait. I actually will. I'm, I'm usually not a big bracket guy. It's not really my thing to enter a bunch of them and have friendly banter back and forth through email with people, but I, I will take part in this one. So why, by the way? I'm trying to win it, too. Yeah. 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 I want it. And if I win it, I'm not. Hey, by the way, yeah. I'm keeping it. I yeah. earned it. Sorry. Now, if one of you guys win it, we will have to call into question a little conflict of interest, maybe. Huh. Oh, yeah, what? maybe. Hey, I'm just well, talking about people who are saying. Fair. It's bracket wins. No, I'm just yeah. talking about what people are saying. It's not like brackets. No, 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 I'm just trying to make a better saying. bracket no. if you're That's what people are saying. If people are going to say that, they should have fixed That's what people I'm just telling you. I got a tweet for somebody that said, if AJ and the boys win, they're going to protest and say it's rigged. No, not I said, me. You're right. I can't wait to win. That. I'm going to win this. No, you're not going to win it, AJ. I'm going to win this. No, you're not. I'm going to win it. No, you're not. You can't win. You can't win. Neither can you. I'm going to win. No, you can't win either. I'm winning. I can win. I can win. My paper right in bracket. Who do you think you are? You can't win. You can't win. You're Canadian. Actually, win. Actually, that is a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mine's a, mine's a right in. Uh, I think no, right international ballot. users on the link, actually. Oh, man. Sorry. We are bummed about Sorry. it. We did not Sorry, know that when we signed up. We have gotten a lot of tweets that we have had to translate into different languages. Mm -hmm. We do not allow. Actually, we would allow. Absolutely. If you can use a VPN to get into America yes. somehow yeah. to use this thing, go on and get in there. We did not ban the international. That's the NCAA that did that. Contact right. your local hack. Just fly in for a day. Help, yeah. yeah. But anyways. Fly for a day. Feel you Hold can't up. win. I, you can't win. I'm going to win. You can't no, win. No. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to win. You can pull all the strings you want and play your little puppet game, but with my bracket, Zito's mom, oh, it will on. be on top. <laughs> oh, no, that's not good. that was a Jesus. sex you oh, wow. That was a sex you right. too. All right. Anyways, the link is in the bio, I believe. Billy Tubes told me that, and uh, I'm sure we've tweeted it out there. Easy to find. We're the only bracket that doesn't have a picture next to it. Mm. <laughs> Everybody else has their full, Perfect. full picture and everything. We were. Hey, who are you? Who, I, I would assume it's going to be the biggest bracket. Like, who are you competing against? What other big bracket? Andy Katz has got one in there. Capital One's got one in there. Bleacher Report's got one in there. All right, you got it. It's you got it. It's going to be. Well, the biggest prize was fifty thousand dollars, so we immediately one dollar that thing. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? We should have won fifty thousand one, so we went to fifty one thousand. Uh, shout out to Yingling, by the way. Yingling is doing one, and it's 
It's like a beer that we've had since we were kids over there, but they are the second largest giveaway now, and, and potentially could be by a far distance if we are the biggest one on the app. It goes to 75,000 and 100,000. Let's have a March Madness there challenge. Come on. The New England Patriots have already made some moves today. They signed uh, Smith tight end from Tennessee Titans to a big deal. There was quotes that have come out from Bill Belichick talking about him years ago, two years ago, talking about how great he is as a player. He's the best at what he does. Once he became a free agent, Bill Belichick brought him into New England. And it is alleged now, AJ, that New England is pursuing Judon pretty heavily. Okay, so that's Judon, Bud Dupree. There's a couple big-time edge rushers that are in free agency. Bill Belichick's making some plays, AJ. Yeah, I think signing Johnny Smith is. Have you seen the picture that dude has on Instagram right now, Johnny? You'd be a fan right away. Really? He's. I mean, he is jacked and shredded. He's. Oh, a, yeah. He's a physical freak. If he puts out yeah, workout would... videos, we know. We know you're going to be on board. For no, sure. no. I like to, you know, think about the psychology. You know, mm -hmm. for instance, I didn't know anything about Fun Chess. Fun Chess puts a video of him playing pickup basketball, mm -hmm. where he's basically like. Fuck all of you. I'm like, okay, I like that guy. Big fan. That's a guy I would like in my locker room. I'd, I'd like, now on another team, probably not, but on my team, I like that guy. So that's where I look. Cam Newton is what you're referring to, I believe. After, and by the way, he's back as a New England oh, Patriot. Oh, yeah, let's go. Cam Newton gets a tight end as a weapon and maybe some defensive players, you know. We'll see how that whole thing goes. He can't go out like that. Just the way Cam was talking about how, you know, people were disrespecting him and then, ah, ah, oh, yeah. he's doing his whole workouts. That was it. It wasn't just pictures, okay? I know there's a lot of, you know, built like Tarzan, play like Jane humans that kind of walk around this world out here. I'm not saying that about anybody, but uh, it, I did see the picture of that guy. I just saw... I am a big fan. Of Here we go. That guy is a good football player. Look out. <laughs> New England's coming. AJ, you kind of look like that, I assume. What is it like waking no. up in the morning just being like, <laughs> man? I mean, that would be awesome. You, you No, I, I wish uh, I could lift every day for the rest of my life and eat perfect, and I would not look like Johnny Smith does. But, hey, more power to him. And think about it, though, for him, going to the Patriots, they know, like, they want this dude to be successful. And oh, they yeah are the best at putting their guys in position to make plays and asking them to do things. They always say, like, we're never going to ask you to do something that you can't do. So they will set him up for success. The question is, who's going to throw it? Is it going to be Cam? Well, that it depends on which part of the answer you'll hear from Connor here, who's a diehard Patriot well, fan, and also Rob from Massachusetts that called in, who would probably give the exact same answer because the Revolution region up there all kind of thinks very similarly. Mm -hmm. Cam Newton's a quarterback. Until there's another better option, then that's their quarterback. Look, what is true on Monday might not be true on Friday. So at the moment, absolutely. But if competition comes a knocking, someone's answering the door. Hey, he wants Jimmy G. <laughs> he wants Jimmy G to come back home. I, hey, I don't think that's a bad idea. Would you pick Jimmy G over Cam Newton? Yeah. I don't know. I, I may think I don't like ever having two quarterbacks, but if Cam's there and they bring Jimmy G in, why don't you use Cam as like a – uh, throw him in in the in the red zone area. Make little packages for him oh. to use his big physicality. And oh, niche up. guy. Oh, okay. You're saying he's a niche guy? I'm sure he'd love no, that. No, he's not a niche guy. I'm Wait till you it, see his next workout video. Oh, yeah. man. I want to know how healthy oh. his arm is. The only capitalized letters in his speech will be A and J. Yeah. Of course. In the caption. <laughs> one love, too. Yeah. Don't forget. One finger, one pinky, one thumb. You know what it is. One love. <laughs> Great reel. I fucking love that. Yeah. I hope Cam Newton wins another MVP somehow. Yeah, I, am, I am here. No, see, I did leave that out. Well, why, though? You know, he hasn't got one yet. Yeah, because if you guys win another Super Bowl, the insufferability from yeah. the Revolution region would be difficult. Oh, yeah. You guys thought once Tommy left. Oh, you we, thought we were We dead. got Bill. <laughs> Nike right now is running the team. Oh, uh, yeah. The New England Patriots put out a tweet of Nike, the dog who did the drafting for Bill Belichick. Come on, Nike. Back at the computer process. Did you see Aaron Jones got signed to a four-year deal to Green Bay? Nobody thought that was going to be possible. I did not think they were going to be able to do it, especially with the cap that they have and the money. I would assume he would have been able to get if he goes to the market. $13 million guaranteed. Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon appear to be the backfield. You have to have two good running backs in the NFL. A.J., how do you feel about this? signing i mean I, I love it as a fan of the packers i think it's great i i assumed he was gone and i think a lot of people did too but i think credit to aaron jones too for he probably understood he's sitting there he's like hey i can play with a rod i catch the ball great out of the backfield you can use him as a slot receiver i'm gonna i'm gonna stick with what got me here and he's such a stud I think it's a genius move. And what this four-year deal, what it's really like a two-year, 20-something million, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe. And you know what's the interesting thing is 
None of the conversation has revolved around voidable years with his contract. Nope. There's been a lot of contracts restructured, redid, where there's a lot of voidable years. Aaron Jones, not voidable, but it's definitely a two-year deal, it feels like, which is fascinating because a lot of people say that's what Aaron's deal currently looks like. Let's assume he's going to have to restructure his whole thing to help them out cap-wise. I'm not saying... He should do that. I'm just assuming what's probably going to happen over the next couple of days with the whole avoidable year thing being used to kind of hide money at this particular point. Yeah, they've been talking about him restructuring and also uh, yep. Zadarius Smith restructuring. So we'll see when that happens. I'm not exactly sure. But, yeah, I mean, as a Packer fan, I'm delighted to have Aaron Jones back. I don't think there was any way he was staying there. But hey, you're a cheesehead, huh? Goddamn right, through and through. <laughs> It's Why does it a look? lot heavier than I thought. Yeah, it, it's very heavy. And also, I tried to wear it on just, like, my head in the first hour. And Jesus, I mean, it, it, it's very itchy. It's very uncomfortable. <laughs> but that's a part of it, like blue yeah. collar, Oh, right? yeah. You just got to kind of grit it out, tough it out, yeah. you know, which is what I'm trying to do right now. You got any of those cheese things at your house? Yeah, we have a few of them. Oh, I would never expect that from somebody who just hates It's called a cheese head. It is called a cheese head, by the way. It's a commonly right. known term. Okay. Can you tell me the vows, please? The vow Do you even know the vows, dude? <laughs> the vows of what? Just like society, English language. No, I'd like, tell me. Please please enlighten me. No, Pat. you tell me, Dude. Mr. Ohio State. I don't get paid to school. All right. I don't even understand what Just you're doing right Just say the fucking now. vows. <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to, you're, okay. This is a whole, like, power play by you. The whole OH situation that's going on, and then this, like, you, hey, come on, dance, monkey, dance. Come on, this is what you do. No. That's well, what you're trying to this do This right is now. me wondering if... <laughs> You even know yeah. your vows. Yeah, feels like you don't. Big meathead, stooge over there. Don't even I know. Don't, I have no idea. That's why I'm asking you. I'm, I'm, I'm dumb. Please tell me. Say them with me. A. <laughs> no. <laughs> Say. What are you? What are we doing here? What is? Say what the vows are. are. Why, what do the vows have to do with anything we are talking about? It has a lot to do. If you we'll just see. do it, I mean, stop trying to railroad yeah, this guy. Hey, come show. on. Yeah. Oh, hey, I'm sorry for trying to railroad this show. That's my bad. Yeah, this show, by the way, is the one that has people up in arms right now. But <laughs> could you please just say the vase? No. It's unbelievable. I thought, of it, this weekend. I thought it was going to be the way to do it. Yeah, that, that was that genius. Was good. Yeah. Wow. Was good. As soon as he got A out and then next E, I was going, oh, H. I know you. Yeah, you did it. You did it as well. Thanks a lot, AJ. I was, I was cooking this weekend. You're though. welcome. You were cooking what? How? Oh, H. Oh no! I mean, I, how many how many FaceTimes did I see missed from you? <laughs> you answered a few, and then he just shot him right up at the ceiling. Just put him down and had me talking to the ceiling. Are oh, you such a prick? All, all of a sudden, in the background, I would hear O H from him. Mm -hmm. and I'm like I O, and then hang up because I had a lot of faith. You're see, a, was... hey, that team stunk yesterday. What happened? No, come on, come yeah. on, man! You know those games don't matter. We're 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 getting ready for the tournament. Seemed like your boys were a bit tired. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they won a, they won a hard-fought battle on Saturday, so I understand. So did Illinois not have to play as many games as Ohio State? They had a bye, and Ohio State didn't. So Correct. Ohio State played four, and Illinois had played three. I was thinking about that during championship week there, you know, as I was betting on teams one night, and then I was like, oh, next night, let's make some more money. And I watched them, I'm like, that's a very different team than was just yesterday. And it was like, oh, they get a win, they got to play again. Like Alabama, for instance, became a very different team a yeah. couple mm -hmm. nights. They're, that whole maybe not winning the championship week so you can save your guys – that is a lot of games they were playing very quickly there, and now they have to turn around and do it again. That is no easy feat. Maybe, may, now granted, some teams had to win to get in or whatever and do the whole dance or whatever, but that's quite an advantage to have this past weekend off, I think, going into the tournament. Well, sometimes, though, you, you know, you come out with yeah. a little mud on the court. You know, you're not moving as fast because you take that time Battle off. Battle tested now, though. Grind it out. Hey, Bama's got a basketball team. Oh, yeah. Did we know that? Roll Tide. Let's I mean, go. Roll Tide. I had no idea they had a basketball team. They were unbelievable. Bet on them a lot. Coach seemed like a really cool dude. I don't what know. What seed? What seed are they? Four, I think. Two. Two. No, they're up yeah. there, two. Yeah. yeah. There are two? There are oh, two. Yeah. yeah. So God, they've been a good team all year, then. Nah, that nah, touch, region. It, touch and go. They Come either on. shoot the lights out or they can they can stink it up pretty good. Well, they almost lost to LSU, which also did not know they had a basketball team. <laughs> I believe they're the number six overall seed, so they're the number two two seed. They're a good team. Ooh, yeah, good. they got tired though. I, I I think it was a pretty visible tired situation there. I think Dick Vitale was calling those SEC games, right? Really? I think so. How did he do? It was good. It was good. I think it might be time to what? Oh, what? what happened? Hey, Dicky. 
Well, go off into the sunset. Dude. No, no, no. Listen, I Come think on. he should do whatever he wants to do. It's hard. He's not at the arena, so I would assume it's very difficult. But there was a call on a missed shot that he thought went in. So he was quest- it was an end of the game situation too. So he was questioning the entire coaching decision very loudly about what was happening. And the ball didn't go in. It was actually an air ball. So it Oof. was it was just a very it was very and I, the internet obviously did what the internet does to that. Dickie V is a legend, though. I, I, listen, no. Dickie V does whatever Dickie V wants to do. There's no question he's a legend. He's been incredible for a long, long time. But, you know, you can't just stroll horseshit out there and tell me it's gold, you know? Because I, I ain't going to buy it. This guy. Is he not the worst human? <laughs> is he not, AJ? I, I mean, I... I maybe man, I I am getting dumber with old age because I thought for a second Ty was gonna finish that and just not bury him at some point. Yeah, me too. I thought there was a chance he was maybe gonna bring him up because I was like, oh yeah, here we go, positivity today, Ty. It's Monday. Dicky V, he is a legend. Aaron Ty's Jones just is finishes back. off. Yes. Like, yeah. I have so much yeah. respect for the guy. Aaron Jones is back. Dicky V is a legend. I know he is. Oh. He is a legend. Oh. I've never said he wasn't a legend. I'm just Ty. I'm tired of listening to him do what games. Did, what did you compare him to then, Ty? What do you mean? If he's a legend, what did you compare him to? I wasn't comparing him to anything. He's a definitely a legend in his own right. But guess what? You know what? A legend past his prime is, I mean, he's, he's dog shit in the booth now. Oh, my uh, God. I'm why, sorry. Why are you pressing this, AJ? On, Will you stop it? Jeez. I love Vital fan. So am I. I loved Dick oh, Vital. Yeah. Did for a long time. Still do. But I do not want to watch a game that he's calling anymore. This is unbelievable. Let's get started. Oh, I, I want to watch him more now, Pat. I wanna, I'm going to search him out. Me too. Me too. I'm going to search him out and watch him more now. I want to see what games he's calling because of the think, slander time. You think they got him. him doing the fucking tournament, you nuts? Not <laughs> a chance. Doing, he's yeah. doing the tournament. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Not a chance. He is doing, no, ESPN is going to keep him in that closet. Yeah, and just say, hey, Dickie V, what do you go? Oh, he's good. Oh, he's good. Right. Every, t- every right. team. Right. Every team's well, got a PT. All right, we're going to John in Wisconsin. John, what's going on? That's unbelievable what just happened there. Jay Glazer Friday. Oh, <laughs> man. Today. This can't happen. What's tomorrow? What's going on, John? Oh, <laughs> not much. I was Hello, baby John. <laughs> I was wondering yeah. uh, I with... Uh, what if he came out and was like, fuck time. Uh, <laughs> That'd be awesome. Do you think Jamal Williams is still going to be with the team? or? Yeah, it seems like a uh, great call, John. Thank you for that. The... Feels like Jamal Williams probably going to end up somewhere else, right? Unless yeah. he comes back. I, I do believe, though, a lot of Packers fans were, well, what's the A.J. Dillon draft pick for if you're going to pay a guy 40 some million dollars just a year later? And I can understand that thought. And, and I understand you questioning Gunther Kuntz's moves in the draft, but you're going to need two running backs anyways. Like, that is just how the NFL is. I think A.J. Dillon proved that he's a good running back. Mm-hmm. If you want to question the Jordan Love draft, they go, hey, yeah, by go all ahead. means. <laughs> but I don't think this makes the A.J. Dillon draft thing look bad in the long run because you're going to need two guys. And they complement each other well. Like how they play A.J. Dillon, everyone knows all big quads, big powerful dude, and Aaron Jones can do it all. Aaron Jones is in like the McCaffrey kind of yeah. era and what he can do. Let's get to uh, a break here. Um, we got Demario Davis on the other side. Oh, let's go. Oh. Of the Saints. He built or gave back to Arkansas State where he went to school, built him like a linebacker room, this whole thing, give him back. He's an absolute stud. That defense for them last year was unbelievable to watch. Uh, We'll obviously get his reaction to the Drew Brees Mm -hmm. uh, retirement, Taysom Hill, Jameis Winston, that defense, how are we going to continue to go forward? A lot of cuts down there in New Orleans. DeMario was not somebody they were going to get rid of. No way. (laughs) Absolute stud. Joins us in about four minutes. This is the Pat McAfee Show, Sirius XM Channel 82, Mad Dog Sports Radio. (laughs) I'd also potentially taken over the 30 edibles because I thought more teammates of mine were going to want to indulge in that either before the game or after the game. And to get to London, you go through your own TSA here. The team has TSA that you have to check in. Here's my passport. The Colts already have it. They took it all from everybody. It's literally you get your bags checked and then you're through. Put them in a little thing. We're good to go. It's the team's TSA. Get on the bus. Fly over there. I forgot all about them. Didn't utilize them at all because how things quickly change. Right. 
after we lose to the Jacksonville Jaguars, we're on a team bus. They go, hey, we're going through Heathrow Airport through the real life TSA. And at that moment, I look around, I go, oh no, I have a lot of, I have some things in my bag right now that have vitamins in them. I have to get rid of them. And at that point, I'd whittled it down to like 15 of them. And I look at Vinatieri and I'm like, buddy, not good. He's like, what are you going to do? I was like, I guess I'm just going to throw him away in here. Couldn't do that because right next to the trash can was an English police officer. So I couldn't just walk up and dump a bunch of edibles into the thing next to the guy. He's going to ask questions. We're going to the Heathrow Airport. Now i got to do what i got to do. We finally get there. Police escorts, a lot going on. So I just take down 13 edibles. Duh, yikes. See you later. <laughs> Vinatieri looks at me and goes, how you doing, bub? I was like, I'm good now, but things are about to happen. He goes, I got you, little buddy. I'm like, thank you. So we go through the little check-in thing, and right before we get to the scan of the bags thing, it all hits me. I might as well have been on cloud 45 over there in London. They check my bag, boom, boom, boom. I get selected. Something was in my bag. So now all of a sudden I'm like, oh, no, did I leave a couple in there? Oh, my God. Vinatieri starts walking ahead. He turns around. He's like, what's going on? I'm like, they got my bag, man. He's like, what's going on? I'm like, I have no idea. So he comes and stands with me. He's like, I got you, bub. I was like, I, uh, they might got me, for real. I might be staying the night in England. They go through my bag. Turns out, had a vibrating uh, toothbrush. <laughs> Thing was vibrating in my bag. Yep. They're like, oh, it must have been this. Or it must have been my big-ass toothpaste, because you can't fly with that. <laughs> I was like, you got it, pal. I get all the way back to the, to the plane. Lost my ticket somewhere. Somehow I don't have a ticket. So now I got to check into the gate, people, that I don't have a ticket. I'm like, I'm on this plane. I promise I am, but I don't have a ticket. They're like, what's your name? I'm like, Patrick McAfee. The McAfee? No, yeah, whatever you want to call me. I just need a ticket. So now I have to sit there and wait as somebody brings me a ticket from the front while my entire team walks by me, knowing that I'm on cloud 50, just having a good time. Grigson walks by, just upset, obviously. I wish he would have known that I was in a mood where he should have talked to me there. It was just a nightmare. The London trip for me from beginning to end was not good, and I think that happens for a lot of NFL players. Hey, listen, tonight, you in the red, you in the blue. I hate you both, and fuck you too. Before I leave here, I'm knocking all you out. Cheers. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, you too, fuck you. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Bang, and I'm out, give me out. Welcome back from your <clears throat> bathroom break. This is the Pat McAfee Show. Here's Pat. Welcome back to that show. Today's show is brought to you by Manscaped. Listen, the one-stop shop for making yourself not look like a wildebeest. Oh, yeah. They got the lawnmower 3.0. They got the weed whacker. Uh, the weed whacker trims your nose hair. Has a hemi in the damn thing. Yeah. Uh, the lawnmower 3.0. Shaves so smooth, so quick, so comfortably, so confidently with their nick free technology that they've somehow gone to the future and created. You will love everything about Manscaped. And right now, you use promo code PAT. You get 20% off uh, manscaped.com forward slash PAT, 20% off and free shipping. Manscaped.com forward slash PAT. Shout out to Manscaped, too. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Uh, a lot going on in the world. Nobody has been signed. In the last, what, hour or so? Yeah. Feels like things are potentially, you know, maybe slow and down. Maybe the tampering is getting the, you know, a little hanky-panky. When's somebody going to close the deal, AJ? Who? Who's the next guy you're saying coming off the board? Uh, we need somebody, you know, because... Just one. I mean, we just need one more, you know. They, they say Sam Darnold will be the next quarterback domino to fall. I don't know if that's true. If you're the Jets, do you move on? Where do you go from? Is he a part of a trade for Deshaun, Russell? Who knows? Joining us now is a man down in New Orleans, which his team is going to look very different next year. 
An absolute Hall of Famer retires via a video on Instagram. Now a new deal is in place for Taysom Hill. Will he be the quarterback down there? Will Jameis Winston be the quarterback down there? Uh, a couple people have been released on the defensive side of the ball because of salary cap. But there's one player down there that they were never going to think about mm -hmm. moving on from. <laughs> Absolute stud, Pro Bowl, All Pro, ladies and gentlemen, Demario. Yeah! 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 What's going on, man? What's happening, guys? What's happening? Hey, you got a very new team down there. You got a new team down in New Orleans. I assume everybody was aware of what could potentially happen this offseason, or is this kind of unfolded in a surprise fashion for you? I think this was kind of expected, but you never know. You never know when a guy is going to say, you know what, it's time for me to move on. Um, you know, especially a guy like Drew that's super competitive. competitive. So you just really never know like how it's all going to shake out. Uh, but it was kind of expected that that this could, you know, potentially be his last go round, and um, you know he, he officially announced it, and so here we are. What was it like? I guess like day to day, we all know like his attention to detail, everything, how he goes about being a professional. I guess what was it like seeing that firsthand? Oh man, that's that's one of the biggest things. Um, that I've ever noticed about a person, um, especially in him, is his process. Um, his process is bar none. I mean, it's, it's inspiring just to watch. His attention to detail um, and his intentionality with every second of his day um, is, is, is rare. And just watching that, um, the, his time in studying film, the way that he practices, he'll throw a ball and he's still going through mental reps in his mind. Um, to be on the field after walkthroughs is over and he's just out there by himself for an hour before we get on the plane, you know, taking visual mental reps. Um, and, and you see that he's probably played the game, you know, at least 20 times in his mind before he actually plays the game. And, you know, when he steps on the field, that's just a, that's just a, pro, uh, a byproduct of his process. And, um, I keep keep saying that, you know, John Wooden, I read one of his books and it said that, you know, results are a byproduct. Um, the product is actually the process. And like I saw that lived out in Drew Brees and um, I'll continue to rave about that as long as I live. And I'm telling my kids about Drew Brees, even though they're young and got a chance to watch them, they probably won't remember I'll talk about his process, and that's what made him special. So I got a chance to watch Peyton, too, whenever in his final years at Indianapolis, and it made everybody better. Like what he did, his attention to detail made everybody better because it kind of, you know, raised everybody's expectations of themselves. Like, okay, that's what that dude's doing. All right, now that's a quarterback. That person's obviously getting paid the most money. They touch the ball. But it made everybody better. That's why whenever Tom Brady was a free agent last year, I was like, you get him in your building, it makes everybody better. Now that Drew isn't there you're going to be one of the guys that the entire team is going to look to to be like okay this is how this is how you play great football this is how you lead a team have you thought about that have you already been doing that and with a very new team I mean Hendrickson's going to be gone Quan's going to be gone are you are you excited about that potential new role that you have to have with Drew Brees kind of leaving the team yeah the, the thing about our culture what has made it special though Drew has definitely been our general um, and and nobody would would dare say anything different. Um, we all followed his lead, but we also have a locker room that's full of leaders, and it's the culture um, that he's been a big part of establishing that has allowed us to be successful. Even when Drew wasn't playing in games, uh, it was the culture that allowed us to be successful. Um, when you have to compete, you know, with Alvin Kamara and Mike Thomas and Marshawn Lattimore and Cam Jordan and Drew Brees, that collective is what raises the bar. And then you have Sean Payton going with, against Dennis Allen and their minds just competing. That raises the level of competition in the building. And if you got competition in the building, it's going to make competing outside the building easy. And that's the type of culture that's been created. Um, as far as the defense regard, you know, um, I'm, I'm I'm a major piece in that in that puzzle, um, and I know the guys look to me in that way. But it's a lot of guys, you know. We got Cam Jordan, you've got David Onyemata, you got Marcus Williams, you got Marshawn Lattimore. So we got a lot of core pieces that you know, Malcolm Jenkins. So 
it's pieces that are there where everybody's kind of looking towards everybody. It's never one man that's just carrying all the weight. Um, but we're, we're, we're in a situation where, you know, defensively, we're looking forward to this, you know, uh, for so for the past two years, especially there were periods when Drew uh, went down, we knew it was on us to put the offense in a situation where like, OK, we just got to not mess it up. You know, mm. I mean, for, yeah. for, for years to be a part of the Saints, that's what it was to be on defense. Just let Drew and Sean them do their thing on offense and we just don't, don't have to mess it up. Well, now that, that it's kind of a shifting of the guard. Um, where, where defense wants to put the team in positions where it's like offense just not messing up. And so when Teddy had to come in the game for five games, we were able to go undefeated. Um, when Taysom and, and um, Jameis had to come in or whoever that is, you know, and when guys had to come in the game and, and, and play, you know, defense had to stand up and rise to the occasion. And That's awesome. You know, it actually, when Drew would come back, we would kind of go back to our old DNA. And – now it's on us to maintain that for an entire season, which I think we've already shown that we can do um, for five, six games. Now it's on us to do it for 16 games and into the postseason. 17. And that's, that's a great challenge. <laughs> 17, DeMario. Get, hey, get, get in 17 games. No, you got 17 games? Yeah, no more bye weeks. Uh, uh, one bye week, 17 games. I don't know what you need to do. Get those needles inside, whatever. The <laughs> acupuncture, whatever you got to do. More games, though. More games. Oh, yeah, yeah, that is true. That is true. I forget about that. <laughs> hey, you, you mentioned all the different pieces you guys have. A big one, obviously, Taysom Hill signs a four-year, $140 million deal on paper. Whatever, all avoidable, I don't know. whatever that means. Yeah, however, they're working out contracts now to, to, to relieve some cap pressure. What's it like, I guess, like how do opposing defense, do you think they have to waste time during game week when they're preparing for the Saints but just because of what Taysom can do and how you guys can use them? Yeah, of course. Um, anybody that's played the game, you know, understands that that when you got a um, a guy over there that can do multiple things. First of all, he can beat you with his arm and his feet, so you got to prepare for that. So anytime you got, you know, that's what the game is kind of moving towards these these dual threat quarterbacks. Um, but when you got two guys over there that can that can sling the rock and you can move a guy, you know, out to a slot or to a tight end position, which is just you know, very rare. You don't know if he coming in the game as a fullback, a tight end, a slot, or a quarterback. That just, you know, that, that messes with defensive coordinators because they, they really don't know exactly what personnel you're in. And so now they have to try to guess based on the situation, what is he doing. And Sean does a good job of, uh, of putting defenses on their their, their, uh, their heels like that. And um, so I don't anticipate that to change any. I think uh, – Sean has been creative, and he's still got, you know, tricks in his bag that he'll pull out. And, um, you know, as long as they keep the ball moving and, and, and score a couple of touchdowns for us, defense will make sure we're bringing it home. Hey, the mobile quarterback, you just hit on it there. I mean, obviously, you see me doing the RPO. I probably, you know, probably pick up 15, 20 against you guys. But, like, whenever you <laughs> – I'm joking. I uh, would fumble immediately upon trying to do it. Is that changing the way you have to train or anything like that or play or read, fi watch film or your checks or anything like that as the game is slowly going that direction? You're an all pro. You've been through the era of the pocket quarterback played well. Now the game's kind of changing. Does that change anything for you? Listen, do me a favor. This is good. That's good. Let's talk about this right here. Okay. Most of the quarterbacks are, isn't the problem. Okay. Guys can run. We defensive guys can run. This is where offenses are cheating, and I wish you guys would talk about this more. Hey, I'm the writing R it down. I'm writing it down. The We're RPO game. Okay. They got linemen down the field five, six yards, and they're throwing the ball. That's bullshit. How can a linebacker read that? I'm getting a run block in front of me. I'm coming down, and they're throwing a slant behind me. <laughs> and they do it. They do it in the red zone, oh. five yards out, ten yards out. Oh. They run a, they, they fake the zone read. And throw a bang gate right where the linebacker should be in the window. I can't get a play action read. And by the, the way, know he's throwing the ball is the receiver and the quarterback. Hey, by the way, also the the media, the people talking about, it, they're like, look at this fake, look at the ball control oh, yeah. while you're just biting on. They're like, that's how you do. It. Like they're they're complimenting that. Like yeah, that's it. That's how you do that thing. You got no chance back there. That is not the ball fake that's bringing the linebacker down. You got a linebacker, uh, an offensive lineman coming to block the linebacker. He got a brace for contact. Isn't there a rule, no offensive lineman down the field? I mean, do we even care about the rules of the about. game? That's exactly what we need to talk oh. about. They got, they got to they, they take that out. You can't do that. It's cheating. 
I'm happy we got that done here. Yeah. I'm yeah. happy we got that done, didn't we? We yeah. just got it done. You would think hey, it. congratulations. Oh, yeah. It'll be the, uh, the, the DeMario Davis clause, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> Fed up with bullshit, not actually enforcing the real rules here. Because yeah. yeah. those refs on the side, by the way, that watch the offensive linemen, they just stopped immediately upon watching the, probably the show going on. Yeah. And they're like, ah, oh, they're down the field. Who cares? It's bad, man. It's bad. And I, most of the time, I try to tell the linemen before the game, they always say the same thing. Well, yo, we watching it. We watching it. We watching that. We, we watching it. I'm like, how many yards before you throw the flag? If he gets past two yards, we're going to throw the flag. No flags. Oh. Somebody's got to hold him accountable. Yeah, come on. <laughs> it's going to be this show. Uh, you have given back in a massive way uh, what you did with Arkansas State with the linebackers room. I watched the video this morning. Awesome. And I think you wore the number 23 in college. Yeah. Is that right? You you were yeah, just. Yeah, 2 3, 2 3 like LeBron. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were kept, not like Jordan. Oh, wait. Oh, whoa. 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 Yeah. Wow. I'm not going to get into it. I'm not going to get into it. But that was awesome. Uh, you also give back with Shield. I think I'm saying S H I E L D, uh, more particular, Little Earth in Minneapolis, feeding and providing emergency aid to over 100 people per day in addition to its own 1,200 plus residents. I mean, you're an incredible person on and off the field. The NFL needs more of you. If that's the case, let's change the rules back to what they yes. should be for yeah, this guy. Please. I mean, isn't that right? <laughs> I appreciate that, man. I appreciate it. Hey, I, uh, the Arkansas State Red Wolves, I bet on them opening weekend on college game day just because I wanted to howl on <laughs> just I, I, the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers beat the dog shit out of them. Mm. And then they went on to do their thing. Arkansas State, though, got on the radar. Incredible school. How did you end up there? How did you end up there as a member of the, the Red Wolves? Man, um, Arkansas State was actually the first one to give me a Division One offer. Um, so I had... Uh, Mississippi State, Ole Miss kind of gingerly showing interest. And Arkansas State was the first one that came in and pulled the trigger. Now, mind you, me living in Mississippi at the time, I didn't even know what a scholarship was. The guy came <laughs> in the office. Uh, Jack Curtis was the guy who recruited me. He's at uh, Liberty with Hugh Freeze now. And he said, uh, yeah, we're offering you a full-ride scholarship. And I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I remember going home and telling my mom, like, I, I got a full-ride scholarship to go to school. And she just started crying. I'm like, Mom, what you crying for? And, she, you know, I didn't know well, how much college cost. I didn't know none of that. <laughs> and so they were the first one. In, and so I ended up going on my recruiting trip. Man, I went on my recruiting trip. And I had, it was them, Southern Miss, and a bunch of uh, 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 D1AA offers from the SWAT. Jackson State, shout out to Coach Prime. Hey, oh, yeah. Undefeated. They, they are beating the shit out of teams down there, too. They are, bro. They are. And so, like, I had an offer from them and all coin. But I went on my visit to Arkansas State, and it was, like, 25 guys. And out of the 25 guys that went on their recruiting trip, 20 of us signed. <laughs> and a lot of us are still best friends to this day. And so it was just – it was just we bonded and had a great time. And all of us, like, told each other we were going to commit. And we all went down there and helped turn the school program around. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, shout out to Red Wolves, dude. Shout, shout out to Red Wolves, dude. Ow. Do you guys kiss the wolves? Do you do? Uh, do you do uh, too sweet? Whoop. No, no, no. We don't do all that. <laughs> you, don't, you don't kiss the wolves. Come on. Down there at Arkansas State. <laughs> That's a different school, man. You got to sneak up. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Thank you for what you do off the field and on the field. Good luck next year. The team's going to look different, but it feels like that defense is going to remain the same. We appreciate you. Hey, thank you, man. You guys be blessed. Hey, by the way, the emoji. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, he's done with it. <laughs> I don't have time. He does not oh, have time. Man. He does not have time. I was hoping when I saw his hand go over the phone that he was gonna hang up in the middle of your whole thing. Oh, you were hoping. That's nice of you. I just wanted to ask. I wanted to get an actual ask. Like for instance, for you, okay, when you do this, do this. I can do it. Yeah. No, you can't. Oh. oh. Okay, so we're gonna do that. Oh All right, God. so, like, I wish your emoji, since we're at the point of smartphones, it would look like actual AJ's. Yes. That would be very nice. Mm -hmm. But people are, I, I got into uh, a little thread on the internet. Do you think that's a prayer or a high five? Prayer. Okay, I don't know if you're There right. is a high five. There is, like, a high five emoji, I feel like. And if you type in blessed, that emoji comes up. Okay, so everybody okay. was wrong then. So definitely. By the way, I do like the search of the emoji thing that you yeah, can do now. Great. God damn, sliding. 
Where would the fucking? It's the worst. Where? It's in the the, the buildings. <laughs> Why is that in the building section? That was. I'm happy they fixed that. Shout out to Tim Cook, dude. Shout out. Yeah. Shout out if to you him. do get a high five, you kind of are blessed, right? So true. Blessing then, dude. You know. Let's get to a break. <laughs> Did we take a break already this hour? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh. Stack them. This show. Yeah. This show, by the way. Not a free great. agent signing, but Kevin Colbert did sign on for another year to okay. be the Steelers GM. It was Kevin Colbert, who's been with the Steelers for 7,000 years yeah. at this point. He signs on for another year. There was rumors that he was potentially going to go to the Detroit Lions. Obviously, the Lions don't do that. He is back with the Steelers for another year. A lot of people on the internet, immediate reaction I seen as soon as he was signed was like, oh, it's a winner go home type situation for Kevin Colbert. Yeah. Every year is like that, but the Steelers Steelers bring back Cobra. That's interesting to me. It's only a one-year deal. Is that Rooney up top saying, hey, listen, isn't it about time to retire, pal, don't we think? Yeah. Ooh. He's been doing one year. Oh. Oh. Who got paid? Who got paid? The Brinks truck did back up. Who did it back up on, to? Fitz. The 49ers cornerback, Jason Verrett. Had a multi-year offer on the table, but opted to bet on himself again. He shined when healthy. He gets a one-year deal worth $5.5 million. That can be $6.5 million if he makes the Pro Bowl. $1 million bonus on the Pro Bowl. Uh, a solid deal, says Rappaport, who definitely got that information from Jason Verrett's people in a way that it was broken. Congrats on a $5.5 million deal for a corner for the 49ers. Hey, didn't they say this was going to happen, though? Like, there's going to be a lot of guys that do take one-year deals to prove it, say, well, when the, the cap goes back up next year, like, I can sign a big one. If you were an, a free agent that was a high-end free agent, mm -hmm. right, at this point, I, I've never done this before. I assume you have. But nope. if you were to finally hit your free agency when you're supposed to get, you know, you know, dancing in, in, in money, and then the salary cap just slaps you right in the mouth, they're like, no, nope, we ain't got no money, actually. I think a one-year bet on yourself, although the franchise tag is notoriously hated by players because there's no long-term, there's no long-term, what's going on on the screen? Is that I don't know, I'm oh, literally not said, doing I that. I thought we had that. There's no long-term <laughs> security. I feel like right now, which is what's being reported, I would feel the same way. Like, let's do one year, and then when there's actually money again, let's go and do that. Look for the teams then that are good to potentially get a lot of people, and this could be the seismic shift that the 49ers owner was referring to. And teams like the Colts, right, might be able to actually do those long-term deals because they have the money for it? Versus well, a lot of people said don't look at that because there's money owed to Darius Leonard and a couple other people mm -hmm. as well. So with the Colts, with how much money they have, you would think they'd be able to be players in this game. Mm -hmm. uh, they already obviously traded in for Carson Wentz. But I guess there's a chance they have to pay within the house. Yeah. Within the house first. Mm. So who knows? But they've been saying well, that for years. It's like you're getting – you're not getting punished, but you have to – You're Chris Ballard is dealing with the fact that he has drafted well. And he has these guys that are going to be up for gigantic contracts. So you have to – factor that into the future of what you're going to do. Is it a tornado? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's absurd. Look it's, out. It's, it's, it's 35 and just torrential down for the worst imaginable oh, weather. Oh, my God. Well, when they, great to have a place in Florida right now. When wow. they built this place, when they knew we were coming in here, do you think they said, like, hey, let's make it sound like they're inside a fucking tin can when yeah. it rains? You know, the interesting thing about it is I was a part of the designs of the building. Never the was. building? The, the inside the space. The inside, yeah. I did not dive into the roofing. <laughs> sure. That's where I got to get to next because we are, it seems like a quarter inch of metal <laughs> yep. away from a fucking tsunami out yeah, there right yeah. now. It is coming down in Indiana. What do we got to do to put a second roof? I think we get second yeah, roof. Well, the drop top roof is yeah. needed for they sure. They took yeah. the drop ceiling out to put the lighting rig in and that kind of. But the drop top was above the lighting rig. So whoever did it has. Zero care for us, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Horseshit. Uh, this is this show. <laughs> this, this one. Show. This one. This is the show. Hell yeah. Got some people up in a. You want to answer some phone calls, AJ? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Where do you want to go? <laughs> Phoenix, Alabama, Virginia, Kakalaka, New York. Go Phoenix. Phoenix, Arizona. Ben, how you doing, pal? Doing good, boys. What's up? Well, Ben, currently getting rained on. I believe the pollen count is higher yeah. than ever. Oh. Yeah. We're dancing around in different seasons here throughout the week. Indiana was beautiful last week. We all knew we were renting happiness yep. from the future. Mm -hmm. Here we are in the middle of it right now. Well, it's a beautiful day down here in the desert. Oh, it is going to start sure. heating up real oh. quick. 
you real don't quick. Say. Yeah. Hey, AJ. What's up? AJ, you got me? I'm a big fan, but uh, why are you so negative all the time, dude? Just oh, say the gosh. fucking vowel. Yeah. <laughs> Great call. Say the vowels. That was a good call. Say the vowels. No, I'm all right, man. Do you know the vowels? We went to a break and you I did told you I don't know the vowels. I do not. Jeez. I, they don't pay me to school, dude. I mean, just... What you guys do? You, you see this? <laughs> nice. You see this? Yeah, how'd you get that? Somebody sent one in. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, you nice. look pretty athletic, yeah. pal. Yeah, wow. You, cool. You know, what's that? That's cool. Yeah, the guy did a good job, whoever painted that. It's the exact same position he's wow. sitting in in the poster hey, behind you. Look, hey, what's going on? See on the chest. <laughs> I.O. Code for you. <laughs> oh, wait. I.O. You're not a cereal box. <laughs> oh, wait. I.O. <laughs> Why are you rotating forward with your head? Are you trying to, like, strike I.O. <laughs> yeah, Cobra That's a Cobra. Strength. Yeah, Cobra yeah, technique, dude. dude. I, Hiya! <laughs> Bro, you ever see him hit the ladder? Da, da, da. Oh, da, da, da. wow. Da, da, da. Quick. Da, da, da. Got the icky shuffle in there. Da, ba, ba, ba. What they used to say is this guy could really get downhill if he had to. <laughs> but he can scrape side to side, too, if yeah. he has to. Whoa! Yeah, he never crosses his feet. Ladder it's unbelievable. What about show? dropping into coverage? Oh, yeah, you should see him. He flips his hip. It ain't dropped that thing yet. Wow. <laughs> this show. This, this, yeah. this show. Unbelievable. This show. I tried to put it on the ball earlier. It would not balance because you are fucking way. Can you get a little balance over your ankle? Yeah. Can we get an athletic base here, pal? Yeah, I'm sorry about that, man. The knees, we need to find the case for that ball, and then you can just throw it right on this top. This is a really impressive thing, yeah. though. I believe the Absolutely. person. They made one of me, too. They made me very skinny, which is very nice of them. Let's go to Mo. I'm getting body shamed on the internet, by the way. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are you serious? Whoa. A lot of people coming after me right now saying what? I'm fat. Well, in all those videos where you embarrassed me and uh, the school district you, or the school you went to, Ohio okay. State, when you didn't answer, a lot of people said I look a little fat and comfortable on the weekend, and I did. Whoa. Yeah, I had, a, I had an Aussie eyeball this morning. Oh. Yeah. Ooh. I mean, Delicious. do you think, is it possible that it's the uh, the box of Cocoa Pebbles you had sitting yeah. on your, your, little, like, <laughs> your little footstool you were eating off of in your, your $4 million house? I did. I did. <laughs> By the way, that would be a generous uh, zestimate there. If that, <laughs> if that popped up, we would move. But the, um, the Cocoa Pebbles stay, you know what I mean? And those were actually just a weekend little surprise. Normally not Cocoa Pebbles at the house, but... Ooh. It was not bad. It was not a bad little yeah. shake up in there. I'm a Cocoa Pebbles guy. Oh, yeah. It's a nice little treat. Yeah, it is. Let's get some phones here. Mo in Virginia. What's going on? Mo! Let's send it to Virginia for the results. <laughs> Mo! Hey, what's going on, Pat? Um, I'm a huge Falcons guy, but I want to talk about Drew Brees. I don't know if you saw the tweet that um, Falcons put out where they put out the video saying that we thank you, but we miss we, we won't miss you. I don't know why Twitter's, t uh, Twitter's getting all hot and heavy on the Falcons. Like, it's a good video that they put out. Why is Twitter acting like such a bunch of pussies? Whoa. Whoa. Well, Mo. Whoa. I mean, Mo. 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 If you're Whoa. talking about something that is Whoa. very important to society Jeez. and delicate and awesome, then you could utilize the way you just spoke there. But that's what the internet does. They get offended by things that, you know, were probably intended to be lighthearted or whatever. I like if the Atlanta Falcons are kind of, you know, talking shit while saying thank you. Yeah. That's a very athletic way of saying congrats and thank you. I love it. That's what the Falcons did. The internet's going to do what the internet does. I mean, they tried to cancel Bill Burr yesterday. Yeah. Jeez. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen, I don't think. Yeah, I saw that. He's, yeah. He, he seems to handle it the right way. Like he, I, I've listened to different things. He's like, who? Who's upset? What, 20 people? Like, it's true. I don't know. I don't see it. That's what he, he said that to uh, Bill Maher, I believe. Mm -hmm. That was trending out there. Bill Burr, though, in Dave Chappelle, I believe they had a meeting. It was probably in the kitchen of that uh, that legendary stand-up place out there in L.A. Uh, comedy store. Comedy, comedy store. store. And they said, listen, if it's not us, who is it? And they just went out. They're, those next two specials, three from Dave, I think two from Bill, they went out and just said, this is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And I, I think once you make that decision, you probably are at the point of just like, yeah, I don't give a single fuck what anybody says. And by the way, that's why they're fucking awesome. Yep. Yeah. Well, they, that's why Bill Burr was, you know, he's on the uh, the uh, racial draft episode of Chappelle. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's a commentator. <laughs> yeah. <he's awesome. laughs> yeah. So, let's go to Quinn in Alabama. What's going on, Quinn? Pat, boys, AJ, what's going on, y'all? Hey, just hanging out in a rainstorm. Man, it just got out of here. I feel you. I feel you. Oh, uh -huh, yeah. Did it really? Uh, it did. It was coming down like 
uh, yeah, I was hoping I wasn't going to get on air like 30 minutes ago. Oh, uh, the, okay. Yeah, my, my metal roof can't, hang, can't handle like being on the phone call. Yeah, right that's now. what we got going on right now. We're doing a live show, uh, one that disrupted some people that work for a billion-dollar company this weekend. Um, you're, are, are you roll tied? Are you roll tied? Tied all day, bro. Tied okay, did you know that you guys had a basketball team down there? Pretty fucking good. I have heard some stuff about it this week, man. Yeah, stuff's been going on. <laughs> Something's going on. <laughs> but then John, I've been a big fan of John Petty for a hot minute, so, like, I don't know, I'm, I'm proud of him, man. Tom, Tom, brother. Tom, Tom. That's the last dance with Mary Jane. One more time to kill the pain. Rain creeping, creeping in <laughs> the office. Tom. What do you want to talk about, Quinn? I'm hey man, uh, I've been wanting to call in for a hot minute about uh, like every time, uh, every time y'all start talking about the state of commentary in sports. Uh, I just wanted to first of all thank you guys for doing the stuff that y'all do. Uh, I sincerely believe y'all are changing the game when it comes to uh, putting the power not so much in the analytics, but in the the personality of players, See how that? important people people are. Um, Thank you, Quinn. Quinn with gets all this it. shit going on with ESPN, I think Quinn gets it's just, it just demonstrates Quinn. how important this show is, you know? Thank you, Quinn. Thank we appreciate you, you Quinn. Thank Thank you, Quinn. You, Quinn. This show sucks, though. I mean, Thank this you, show. Hey, Quinn. Show's an embarrassment. He hasn't been able to hear because he's been on the phone with the tin roof, so that's why he said all that stuff. Quinn, we appre- yeah, Quinn hasn't heard the show today. <laughs> no. He's actually heard ding, ding <laughs> from our studio and his yeah, studio. Okay. But to the listeners and watchers of the show that want to bat for us, I appreciate you. I, I, I watched it all unfold on the internet, and I was talking with my wife. I'm like, do I? S-? No, I'm not saying anything. And then I got text messages from people that are like, ESPN Stinks is trending right now. Do you know that? I'm like, oh, God. Oh, well. You don't fuck with those people. Man. I don't know. Our people are a great group of people. We appreciate the hell out of you. Um, hour three here on this Monday, March 15th is ending here on Sirius XM Channel 82, Mad Dog Sports Radio. <coughs> Chris Mad Dog Russo. <coughs> I believe he's dropping a podcast today. I'm sure you should check that out. He did an interview about us. I read it. Uh, AJ, do you have anything to say to the listeners? I don't, but I do want to, if he did an interview about you, I, I would like to read it and see what his thoughts are. Hmm. I mean, kind of complimentary. I mean. Really? Kind of. Really? Uh, really? He's a legend. His show's better than ours. I'd say the same thing he said. He's next. <laughs> Cheers. Big big personality, you know. <laughs> what, yeah. He gave the classic, like, you know, hey, big personality. If you yeah. didn't just follow it up with yeah. someone I else right love, below those, it. those guys in the morning are fucking incredible. <laughs> yeah. incredible. The interview. The interview. He was asked about us, gave a long answer, you know, about the future of sports and everything like that, which is very nice. I mean, he, I mean, he didn't really go. I mean, I, I saw his answer. And then he was asked about the morning show, which uh, is uh, Mike and Evan, Bab. Trick, I believe. Mm-hmm. Great. I've been on the show. I listen in the morning. It's good. And he just goes in this amazing, Incredible. amazing compliment run of, of their show and everything like that. And it was like, oh, okay. Well, we did just get here, though. So they've been True. on the show a long time. He knows them. We've never actually met Chris Russo, so no. I could see the whole thing. But yeah, a big personality. He's <laughs> got a big personality. You know, he talks. I don't like the swearing. I mean, <laughs> yeah, was oh, did, he, did he say that, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, we're still live. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. No, it was sage. It's going to run. It was. Uh-huh. Get the bat out yeah. to get this voice back. Yeah. You're 100% right. Let's go ahead and light that. Yeah. Get, get, your, get your sage going. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, get the smoke going there. Yep. Let's go to Alex in California. Let's go. Oh! Alex. Oh, Alex. Oh, Alex. 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 Yeah. I'm here. Alex, how's it I'm going? Here. Alex, how's it going, pal? Hey, it's going fucking great today, and thank you guys. I've been a long-time listener. This I mean, first don't fucking caller. give away the thing for the thing. We got this guy. You guys, read the fucking room. Alex is yelling Fuck in the yeah, back. We can't All right, Alex. Hey, all right. Let's keep it fucking Alex, going. Alex, great call, Alex, okay? <laughs> guys, you heard Alex on there. We just went through a full speech about how guys, you know, put pictures and videos up of them on the show. We don't need to give away. Major move here, huh? Yeah! The Brinks truck has backed up, and it has backed up once again to a player that is going 
to the New England area. The Patriots have now finalized a deal for Ravens pass rusher Matt Judon. Sources say Ian Rappaport is reporting that. So not only do the Patriots bring back Cam Newton, not only do the Patriots bring in a tight end they're paying 30 some million. Now they're bringing in Matt Judon from Baltimore, who is an absolute problem on the field. Boston Connor celebrating as if the Patriots are back back. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think they're still going to need a couple more pieces, but damn, Bill is making some moves. His dog's sitting at the computer allegedly via a Twitter post, yep. but they are making moves in New England right now, AJ. What kind of deal do you think he got? I, I mean, he I would assume it's pretty good. What if it's a one-year deal? Huh? Oh, it's a big Four. deal. Yep. Patriots oh. are signing outside linebacker Matt Judon to a four-year, $56 million contract, including $32 million over the first two years per source. A massive deal for the former Ravens standout. Tom Palacero is reporting. Look at the Patriots. Ah! Patriots are spending money. The Patriots understand that their roster was nowhere near where it needed to be if they wanted to succeed again. Mm -hmm. Now they're... You know, they got opt-outs coming back from the COVID. You got Judon joining the squad. He is a, I assume, great leader of that Baltimore Ravens defense. Raises a lot of hell. You bring in a tight end. Oh. You got Cam Newton. Connor, your first thoughts. Uh, I mean, I can't believe it's only day one. It feels like we've done a whole entire free agency in one single day, and we still have 30 million 30 plus million. You don't have no cap. idea how much money you have. From from these numbers, <laughs> starting have, at 65 have, today. You have no idea. Minus the 12 and the 8. <laughs> Yeah, you we have, got plenty. You have no idea how so, much money. Plenty of money, though. We haven't spent all 60. $32 million in the next two years for that guy. Yeah, that'll yeah. be fine. We'll kick that can down the road, too. Yeah, avoidable I, years. I did hear we're giving him a four-year, $500 million contract <laughs> next year. All four avoidable, so it doesn't really <laughs> matter. It doesn't matter at all. Hey, that Taysom Hill deal is wild, but good for the Patriots, yeah. huh, AJ? Well, it's cool. Yeah, well, that, don't you think this is a bit surprising? I think last week I, I was saying, like, the Patriots, you, you would – guess before free agency that they were going to wait maybe a little bit later and pick up the the, the guys that they don't have to pay a ton of money to like these big deals but i i guess they have the money they know they want to win right now so bill hey, credit to them bill belichick ain't waiting around another five years uh -uh, he hears it bill started losing. is this all with cam though like is cam gonna be the starter well cam was given 14 million dollars or whatever and no, it wasn't uh, it was after I mean, bonuses he, and incentives he can get to there yeah he can get there but like do they are they 100 percent all in on cam well that's see that is still the conversation that's happening and i think it's because of the contract that you're just asking about that is not what a starting quarterback contract looks like especially now with the money you're seeing that they're giving out other places then you listen to reports who either know or don't know anything at this point with every report we have no idea that they're not done looking at the quarterback position i have no idea what they're going to do i i know you would think cam newton another year you're not paying him a lot of money you get some weapons you see what you have but it feels like bill belichick ain't about sitting around for another year to find out if they're going to be good or not well and that like you give him one year too because who's going to be a free agent quarterback next year Right? I mean, you can build the pieces around him, and then next year, if he doesn't perform well, you can make the switch. How about the Patriots, though? Big money. Big money in the Hell first yeah. day. Let's go. That's big. Who, hey, which one of the quarterbacks will be left for them when they are drafting in the first round? Don't you think they can, that's a possibility? Oh a train off the track. Did you hear the fire trucks out the back there? Jeez. Did you hear that or not? It's None of it comes through to me. Really? That's good news. Does the show hear it? They got to hear oh. the rain, right? I assume. Yeah. He doesn't hear it. I don't yeah, but his he true hear that Mickey Mouse on his end. Yeah, he doesn't <laughs> yeah. say that baby back bullshit. <laughs> they pick what twenty eight, and they moved up in the third, fourth, and fifth rounds. Uh, we pick fifteen this year. Oh, pick fifteen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and also fourth, fifth, and sixth rounds. You swap with the Texans to move up. What a move! No big deal. Freed up a bunch of cap because of that as well. There's Nike working, the gig, signing, <laughs> trading, moving, grooving getting the Patriots back into a conversation piece around potential greatness in AFC. Come on. They got a Thank you, Nike. tall mountain. <laughs> Shout out, Nike. Thank you, Nike. <laughs> they got a tall mountain to climb, though, in that AFC. They're going to have to dance. Even whenever they were doing their thing for 20 years, there was never the Patrick Mahomes chief squad that there is right now. So if everything clicks for them, they still have to get through one of the best teams assembled in the history of the game. I mean – I guess that's no stranger, though, for the New England Patriots. Well, there's never been a team in the division as good as the Bills, too. So, I mean, obviously the Bills still, they're the division champs, but uh, the AFC East is wide open. Hey, let's just get it, make it to the dance, see what happens. Here's a recap of the day. Patriots so far trade for Trent Brown, re-sign Cam Newton, sign John U. Smith, sign Matthew Judon, sign 
Devon Gaucho. Gaucho? <laughs> Gaucho? That's wee wee. Yeah, uh, they'll get linebacker Dante Hightower and Patrick Chung back after the COVID sit out and more is coming. Bill is <laughs> going for it. Yes! The thought of Bill Belichick sitting there in a terrible sweatshirt, right? <laughs> Just eating probably peanut M&Ms or whatever. Dog food, just, maybe. Just pointing at players. <laughs> maybe dog food with Nike. Just pointing out players that have played well against them in the past. Uh -huh. Give me that guy. Give me that guy. Yeah. Give me that guy. How much we got to pay? It's day one. Fuck it. Let's go all in. I love that. Time. It's awesome. I love that. This is just legal tampering, too. Let's wait. Till, let's see what happens Wednesday when this whole thing really kicks off. If you're a free agent and you haven't heard anything till Wednesday, it's not great. No. <laughs> nah. -uh. Mm. Not great. Mm. I assume. So, hey, who do you think – is there a possibility that the Patriots go out and they make another big splash and sign one more big-time free agent? Uh, Connor's position thinking a wide be? receiver. Yeah, everybody's yeah. thinking a wide yeah, receiver is needed. Fuller or Galladay. Yeah. Galladay going to Indianapolis would be awesome. Yeah, be yeah. huge. And bringing back T.Y. Yeah. Partner him. I can see the Patriots trading for a receiver too. Trading, you think? Yeah, I mean, I think it's possible. Like someone – who may not have lived up to expectations, I don't know, and, or maybe he's been hurt a little bit, banged up, and they take a shot on a guy with a big upside. So today, gross contracts, $122 million the Patriots have spent today. Whew. Let's go, Bill. Robert Kraft is like, yeah, I don't want to lose either shit. See <laughs> <laughs> so what we did to those tapes? We got those things demolished. All right, in the checks. Come on. Let's hey, they know too, though. Don't you think the Patriots know the longer they go, like – with how this past season went, like it, that mystique of what the Patriots are is going to start to disappear. So they need to jump back on it and get right back on track. Yeah, they got to pay the guys that they think can come in and continue the culture, right? That's yeah. what you look at Judon, you look at John New Smith, you think to yourself, okay, here's two guys that'll come in and do this whole thing. You know what I mean? So it's, it's intriguing to me that he understands that he still has to continue the culture. Who are guys we can make pillars around that and who can we continue to go there? I wonder how much conversation Bill has had with Judon or with John New Smith. Have they talked? Do they know what they're getting into? Or did they just see the, I would assume they would have had to conversate Bill Belichick's like, hey, this is how it is. And Cam Newton, Cam Newton, Judon, and John is, I mean, they got some, they got some dudes some over there. Dudes. There's some dudes in New England, like very quickly. Patrick Chung, people forget how good of a football player he is because oh, yeah. he opted out. There are some dude dudes now up in New England. Are they? They are. Hey, 122 oh, yeah. million. Oh, oh, somebody no. got <laughs> paid. No Straight cash, homie. Or is it for New England? Is it somebody else? Urban Meyer and the Jaguars are on the board. They've agreed with former Bears D-tackle Roy Robertson Harris on a three-year $24.4 million deal. He gets $14 million in guarantees. The deal for the former undrafted free agent was done by Sports Stars New York oh. City. This deal is being broken by Mike Garofolo. Uh, congrats to the Jaguars getting a D tackle, and congrats to Roy Robertson going from undrafted to $14 million signing. Yeah. Yeah. Roy. Way to go, Roy. Uh, there's another guy that's trying to build a culture in Jacksonville. Obviously, this is a player you wanted to build around on that defensive side of the ball, AJ. Hey, how much room do the Jags have in cap space? Oh! oh! Sure. Great cash, homie. Maybe this will also be the Jacksonville Jaguars. We'll get back to your question there. Mike Garofalo is saying there's another move for the New England Man. Patriots. There's They are adding DB Jalen Mills on a four-year, $24 million deal. The source says the former Eagles corner and safety will take his versatility to Fox Burrow. So now you have... $146 million in deals being offered by the New England Patriots in the first three hours of the legal tampering period in the 2020 free agency or 2021 free agency frenzy. The New England Patriots are making plays for players that I never thought they'd be making plays for, spending money that we never thought they would spend. The New England Patriots had a losing season after 20 years of greatness and said, no more, <laughs> no more, AJ. They got to make a move on offense now. Like, I think they got to find a way to get a receiver. But I guess we should have seen this coming when, remember, during, was it during the season or after when Bill made those comments that he normally doesn't say? Like, people thought he was making excuses for opt outs and they didn't have any money. Like, don't you think, 
what you think we should have seen it come like okay he basically said like hey well you know we have a billion dollars in cap space next year but this year we knew it was going to be tough so everybody, hey we want to get back to winning i need players everybody that's talking right now needs to fucking watch what they're saying <laughs> look we sold out okay we're not on to cincinnati but we are on to beating the fuck out of everybody again. Yeah. <laughs> are we now are we understood gentlemen bill belichick's making a run here that's fantastic He's also in control of the checkbook, by the way. He is the general manager. He is the head coach. He is the guy making these decisions. You're going into Bill Belichick's house up there. Big signings here, day one. New England Patriots, is this normal at all? No. This Never, is Never, right? brand new. Usually it's maybe one guy, like Gilmore. That was our biggest signing And probably. by the way, he's out, and right? He, yeah. Especially after a deal like that, you're probably – Gilmore is definitely on the way out because – we're obviously not going to pay him more money. So four year, twenty four million. Quick math, that's six per year, right? Yep. And uh, Gilmore is going to need. Jalen Mills is getting nine million guaranteed per Drew Rosenhaus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Sports Stars New York City who had the uh, the D tackle. Roy Roy Harris. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I thought we were potentially, you know, getting conflicted mm-hmm. agencies. Oh <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, Rosenhaus, nine million guaranteed. Where was he at? Thirty some. Now he's at forty some million guaranteed money. And Drew Rosenhaus, oh, yes. day one here. Mm-hmm. Congrats, hey. Drew. Hey, don't you, don't you think, uh, Pat? Isn't this Rappaport just kind of letting Garofalo know, like, hey, no, I had this as well. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like there's a potential, yeah. Like Ian Rappaport's like, because uh, they're on the same team, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And they're probably in the same group text, you know, and we've heard about that group text, how some things have been mentioned in there and Ian drops a, I know, I know that's happening (laughs) right there. So they were never going to pay Stephon Gilmore 9 million guaranteed over four years. Stephon Gilmore is going to guarantee massive money. Now, will they trade him or will they have both Jalen and Gilmore here for this year and then let him go into free agency? There's a lot of conversations revolving around Stephon Gilmore right now. Probably trade him because J.C. Jackson, mm-hmm. the other corner, he had oh, nine he's a Pro picks. Bowl guy. Yeah, right? he had mm-hmm. nine picks last year. And Gilmore. Safety. This guy's going to play safety. Mills. You think we'll chug him? Read, read the tweet. Read the tweet. Read the tweet. Another move for the Patriots, they're adding DB Jalen Mills on a four-year, $24 million deal. The former Eagles corner and safety will take his versatility to Foxborough. I feel like that's worded for a reason, the way it was. not He's probably going to play nickel or, or safety, maybe. Yeah, he'll probably play every position back there. Yeah. Bill loves to mix him around because they got Adrian Phillips, too, who's another safety, obviously, McCordy Chung. You know, this just made me think of that guy. Who's the, Isaiah Simmons? What are they going to yeah. have him? He's in Arizona. What are they mm-hmm. going to have that guy do? Is he a linebacker? That's what they have last Gotta year. be a backer. Because he's, he's, he's the type of guy where if you get him in like like Bill's yes. defense, I'd be in I'd like to see what Bill would fucking do mm-hmm. with Isaiah Simmons. Well, if they're if they're moving on from Pat Peterson, maybe you trade Gilmore for Isaiah Simmons over there on draft day. Oh, to Arizona. <laughs> Why not? Patrick Peterson's people are saying that there's numerous teams interested mm-hmm. in him playing corner, I believe, or the reports are coming out that there's numerous teams interested in Patrick Peterson, the former, you know, superstar. Man-to-man island corner for the Arizona Cardinals. Also an incredible punt returner. Uh, he is moving on. He, there's allegedly a big market for him. Excited to see where he goes as well. Was he, was he, he released? Was he released or was his deal? Contract done. Yeah, contract done. Does he – what do you mean saying corner? Do, do other teams want him to play nickel? I don't what? know. I, he, I just – in my eyes, with how athletic he is – you would think he'd be able to move into safety if he wanted to because there was a couple times last year where it looked like, okay, although Patrick Peterson is still an incredible athlete, great football player, there was it felt like there was a couple times where he was potentially not the exact same Patrick Peterson he was a couple years before that. So with his football IQ and still incredible instincts and everything like that, I think the common thought was, oh, he's going to move to safety somewhere. But now it's being reported that there are teams that are interested in him playing just corner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're, they're interested. I guess the, the question is, what's the price? Like, are they going to have to... Oh, and also, who's releasing the information? Well, yeah. That's why... I, who knows? Everything is, comes from agents. Yeah, I don't I don't know what to believe right now. Me neither. Especially since the, the salary cap doesn't exist. It's not a real thing. <laughs> yeah. Contracts aren't real either. Mm-hmm. Voidable wow. years. What it's is a contract? If, if a contract is voidable, then it's not a contract. This isn't even an agreement. Yeah, it's... The, the Taysom thing, I think, really put, like brings it to light, shows people what this what you can do to maneuver your way around the salary cap. I don't blame them. That, that's your job, to find a way to get your team under the cap. But I don't know, like, are they ever going to have to place restrictions or take some of this language out? Travis Kelsey, whenever we told him about the four-year, $140 million deal, he was just waking up. He was just waking up over there in L.A. And you saw him almost like, why – 
I'm sorry, I missed this taste. Is he a tight end? Is he a, because <laughs> yeah. Travis Kelsey was like, wait, is this what a tight end is making? Four years, 140 million? And I and then we said quarterback and he started loosening up his arm <laughs> yeah. or whatever. But and then I told him they're all voidable. Like it's all these are all just fake contracts at this point because people need to do a little salary cap gymnastics. And he was like, well, I don't know what any of that means. I have no idea. I know I didn't restructure my contract yeah, or whatever. Actually, uh, what do you have, Diggs? Uh, someone who is familiar with the Patriots organization, uh, Michael Lombardi just tweeted that the Patriots aren't close to being done. Okay, Michael Ooh. Lombardi, who has family members in the New England Patriots organization, has great ties back to the New England Patriots organization. He says the Patriots aren't close to being done. What a great wow. Let's go! Man, how pumped. I am so pumped for Patriots fans. And I'm saying that for real. And I'm not saying that because, you know, I'm looking forward to the potential inevitable insufferability from them if they are <laughs> successful again. Oh, yeah. I'm saying that strictly because if my team was out there doing shit like this, mm -hmm. I'd be so pumped, especially when it's coming from Bill. Well, and we talked about either build through the draft or build through free agency. And for me, obviously, you'd rather build through free agency because you get days like this and it's immediate results with guys that you know are already good in the NFL. It's not like, hey, this is a project. Give them time it's like no matthew judon's gonna come in next year and be a stunt he's gonna be good at football yeah <laughs> like yeah. there's no question about that let's go to ryan in jersey what's going on ryan hey pat boys how we doing hey pal not too shabby how are you i'm great i just want to give a shout out to zito back there on the board making this show happen nice job zito <laughs> No, I'm not doing Listen, I give shout out to Zito a lot, okay? And and when you say making this show happen, I mean that's quite a fucking stretch. But I will say, if it wasn't for Zito right now, this show would not be on the air. So Zito's making show happen. Yeah, I'm actually ruining the show. That's no, 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 Z. You're you're learning a new skill at this particular point. I mean, Zito is the man that does everything. But to give him a shout out today would be spitting in the talents of Zito every other day. Yeah. You know what I mean? True. Mm -hmm. So that's all I got to say to you, Ryan. Yeah. A little respect for Zito, please. Plus my fingers that's hurt fair. back here. That's fair. You've been pushing a lot of buttons. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> there was one point. Uh, <laughs> the cat tap went. <laughs> it was awesome. It was because he's right over Ty's head, mm -hmm. like literally right here. So I literally see panic in his eyes when I look over at him, and it's just like, uh, I'm trying. It says it should work or whatever. Zito's the best. Ryan, what do you want to talk about? So, Pat, I'm curious from you and, and uh, Tony over there. Uh, you know, the fighting Joe Judges here in Jersey, uh, is this an attractive place for a free agent like Galladay, like Juju? Is it worth it for a veteran to come out and, and be on a young team like this? What do you think? They pay him uh, enough. Uh, yeah, it's all money-based for that type of thing. The I think the Giants are in no position to be getting people at a cheap or whatever. They're going to have to pay everybody to build that culture up. Uh, and that's just, that's just what it is. That's just how it goes. I don't, now, granted, they might draft from within. They might build everybody. I don't know how Joe Judge is operating from within over there, but I'm not sure that's a place where people are taking pay cuts to go to, AJ. No, not yet. And I mean, you, you want to be at a team – that people are taking pay cuts because it means That's players want to stay there. They want to be around because they most likely have a quarterback that they feel like gives them a chance to contend for the Super Bowl every single year. So I think that's – when you're a team like the Giants, we don't know yet. We don't know what Daniel Jones is going to be. He hasn't proven it yet, I guess. So, yeah, you might have to overpay a little bit. I mean, he could be really good. Yeah. He could be oh, really yeah. good. Just lost his best lineman. Yeah, he got <laughs> killed last year too. Yes, he did. And he lost his best running – or his oh, best player and yeah. running back. Mm-hmm. Joe Judge does recover fumbles in the mud, though. Does. True. Uh -huh. And they yes. got another O-line coach. So, so they're no more fighting. Hold mm -hmm. on. <laughs> Joe Judge has given them a lot of hope, I feel like, which the Giants needed. What were you laughing about there? Just the, the fighting coaches. Like, there's no guarantee that he's not going to fight the next O-line coach. There is no guarantee. And by the way, that offensive line coach needs to fucking realize it. <laughs> yeah, strap in. Hey, Joe Judge, he will he will go into the tool belt. Yeah. And he will pull mm -hmm. out a hammer. Mm -hmm. And that thing could be coming right for your suckle if you wanted to, okay? Let's get this thing accomplished here, boys. And also, another thing about the Giants team. Next year, like, this is the second – year in what 15 years that Garrett has called plays that whole offense might be much better you know what I mean it might be true, much true. more understood and much oh, more or it could be could get worse there? could, could get worse there. Fred Kitchens sharpening the yeah, true. yeah. Fred's the... look out did anyone was there any kind of like chatter to to get rid of Garrett as the OC uh-huh Uh, Giants! 
I don't think there was any chatter at all. No, they kind of everybody just kind of gave up hope on that Giants team. Wasn't he getting interviews at other places? Somehow, yeah. The only conversation oh, about yeah. Jason Garrett was how is this guy getting interviews? <laughs> that was the only conversation. It wasn't like, hey, you shouldn't be doing what he's currently doing. That's a weird. That's a weird. That's a weird career that guy's had. A little odd. It is. A little odd. Because the Cowboys might not be able to win. Like that just might be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Jason Garrett was the face of that for a long time, and it's like. Were we misjudging him? Well, and then he got fired, and then he just stuck around so long that they had to fire him again. Yeah. In Dallas. He was paid handsomely for his, yeah. you know. Yeah, but what if what if this Giants team, you know, what if they become just an offensive juggernaut yeah. over there in the NFC East, you know? Awesome. What if Jason Garrett turns Daniel Jones, Danny Dimes, the question into the answer that is, the best quarterback drafted out of that class. Wow. What if Jason Garrett does that? Could. He'll Could be a head coach. Bingo. He'll be gone. Right Daniel Jones will suck again with <laughs> yeah. the new offensive coordinator. Uh -huh. all, all things go. It's kind of a lose-lose. Uh -huh. For who? Jason Garrett? Giants. Why? Because if they if Daniel Jones becomes the man you think and Jason Garrett gets an opportunity to become a head coach again, then Daniel Jones immediately regresses. Yeah. He immediately has to learn a whole new offense again. Now, I'm not saying that. Yeah. Maybe they'll hire. Does Garrett have any like? Are there any Garrett disciples though that could come in and be the next oh, OC to kind of make it a seamless transition? Freddie Kitchens is mm -hmm. there. Yeah, true. Kellen Moore, right? Kellen Moore was a <laughs> yeah. disciple. Does it prove you just have to stay in the league? Like as soon as you take a break, you end up like Marvin Lewis or Hugh Jackson right? or Jim Caldwell, right? Yeah. Like if you just keep going, keep staying alive, no matter what position you'll stay in. Let's go to Joe over there in New York. Is this Joe Judge? <laughs> Holy hey, shit. what's going on, brother? Hey, uh, yeah, man, Pittsburgh fan, man. I grew oh, up in the Berg, North Side, that and everything. Hey, shout out. Been a fan shout since Morgantown and that. Shout out, Donner. Shout out. Right on. I want to talk Colts today. So now that Judon's off the board, See ya. Baltimore's obviously got enough cap space to re-sign the Gokwe, and a lot of people <laughs> were pegging him for the Colts okay. to come in <clears throat> excuse me, and sign like a free agent deal as, as an edge guy. I tend to think they fall off after a certain age. Okay. What do you guys think about Bob. getting a guy like Bill Nueva, mm -hmm. Williams, mm -hmm. you know, restructure Buckner's contract, mm -hmm. get that roster bonus over to a signing bonus, nah. get a little bit more money going on, ah. make on the road. Nah. How about think about, you know, like make, make some moves, maybe go after a guy like Fuller, give yourself some more options. Nah. I mean, How about Bud Dupree? Think about that. How about Bud Dupree? Bud Dupree, he ain't a scheme fit, bro. Oh, come on. Justin Houston was a scheme fit. We can make Bud Dupree a scheme fit, pal. I mean, this is – we can make that happen. But great call there, Bud Joe, by the way. I mean, Ngakwe did not deserve that in the middle of that thing, but I mispronounce people's names all the time. The Colts have to do a lot, and we need a left tackle stat. But, man, another edge rusher would be fantastic. Thought there was a chance we'd get Judon, to be honest with you, because I thought Bud Dupree would be the one that's demanding the most amount of money. Who knows what that just did for Bud Dupree's market. Oh, just it, Well, is Bud going to get more than Judon? I don't know. Probably around the same. If you're Bud, do you do a one-year deal and then you try to hit actual free agency one year from now with a no-tag uh, clause? If you're coming off an ACL, do you want to get longer just so just in case something bad happens again and then you never get paid again? That's an interesting thought, but also is anybody going to pay him coming off an yeah. ACL mm -hmm. long? You know? Yeah. It could be, too. Haven't you heard people that tear their ACL, they tell you it takes you like a full season play like, to fully feel like you're your old self again? Did you get any ACLs? No, I was lucky enough. But I know it's like a mental thing, too. Oh, like, when yeah. you finally come back, like, okay, can I still – do I feel confident making that cut again or making, oh. doing this? It is much smaller level, obviously, no ACL, but dislocated kneecap and a couple of this, a couple of that on both knees. The mental part is the most difficult. The first one, I, I, now I don't know. I've never had an ACL. But that first yeah. surgery, you think your knee's about to snap in half, and you, your trainer's like, no, nah, you're good. Yeah, go for it. I'm like, so I can't cause any more damage? They're like, no. I'm like, well, then why does it feel that way? Why, why, yeah. why does it feel the way it feels? They're like, well, that's just you're kind of reteaching those things to do it. So you just got to, like, power through every single instinct in your body telling you not to do something. You got to be able to get through it. I would assume Bud Dupree will be able to do it, but it is real. That's a real thing that happens with a lot of people. It's a real thing, too. And, well, I guess if you were worried about that, if you were Bud Dupree, you'd want to sign a long-term deal because you feel like, hey, this if I sign a one-year deal – and let's say I'm 80% healthy, my leg's not quite as strong as I'd like it to be, I don't feel as confident, 
like your one year deal, you probably feel like you can't showcase enough to get that long term extension. But if you have a one year deal, you could potentially be play your best football at the end of it. Then you go into free agency and everybody's like, hey, he's back after the mm -hmm. thing and there's actual money to be spent. I don't know. But if you but if you go to if you take a one year deal, hopefully try to go to a contender. So you're on TV mm -hmm. a lot. You're prime time you're in the playoffs you have a chance to go win a super bowl um it is being reported that by warren sharp that the prior 10 years total in free agency bill belichick spent 359 million dollars in the first three hours of 2021 <laughs> 146 million dollars let's go bill's going all in Jeez. i mean let's go good for the Patriots. so this is yeah. this is a compliment to tom brady right like hey we lost tom this is what we have to do because of the giant hole we have in our team when we lost Tom for the who we've had for 20 years. And Tom's watching this probably wondering why we didn't do this a couple of years ago, you know, when yeah. I was taking all those pay cuts, why we couldn't <laughs> have done this for a long, long time. But the Patriots are back in the game, at least in the conversation. Who knows how that team will come together. But I, I like the fact that Bill Belichick's using that big-ass brain and trying to sign people and win right meow. Hey, I bet Bill's probably putting in calls trying to get Deshaun Watson to New England right now. Oh, he said every quarterback option is on the table, although he was not oh. impressed with the current quarterback free agents. Maybe he'll be in the Russell Wilson game. Whoa. Maybe Bill oh. Belichick will bring in Deshaun Watson. Oh. Who knows? We'll cover it. We'll talk about it. Yeah. I believe there's some breaking news. What's going on in the world? Um, Jamal Williams, running back for the Green Bay Packers, officially a free agent after a post on Instagram uh, thanking the Green Bay Packers and the organization and their fans for everything. He came into last season with a lot of juice. He was calling Aaron, I guess, in the offseason, asking him about routes to be run. He was a hell of a hell of a little burst whenever he would come in in a uh, spell of Aaron Jones with what A.J. Dillon did in the playoffs uh, and with what, them drafting him in the second round, as soon as Aaron Jones was signed, I think this was something we all thought was possible. Jamal Williams would be a hell of an addition to a lot of teams. That guy, I, I think not only on the field, but in the locker room, I feel like he's probably pretty much loved by everybody. I mean, watch the dude. Have you ever seen, like, anytime they, they show Packers warm-ups or whatever, he, he feels like he gets the whole team going. Like, he's always so happy and dancing and having fun. I hope he gets a big old contract, man. He knows. Like, this is part of it where, hey, this isn't a – like – when people try to say, like, don't take it personal, like, I don't think he would and he, he shouldn't take it personal because, like, hey, there's just no room for me. We drafted a guy who stepped up and played well towards the end of the year, and we just signed another guy. So, so yeah, what? there's no room, so I have to move on. Yeah, uh, Ty Schmidt, owner of the Green Bay Packers and Cheesehead, your thoughts? Yeah, i just like to say first and foremost, uh, thank you, Jamal. Because he really did. Every time he got in, uh, he Spark. was, uh, yeah, just a, a burst of energy. Great picking up blitzes and stuff, too. I mean, he's just, he's a tough son of a bitch as well. Uh, we're going to miss him. But, yeah, you know, when they re signed Aaron Jones, the writing was kind of on the wall for him. Yeah, well, hell of a run. Hell of a hell run. run. Hell of a run. Let's go to Corey in Pennsylvania. What's going on, Corey? Go, Pat. <laughs> Corey, what's going on, man? Uh, so I just want to shout out the boys real quick. Shout out the Pat Maxey show. Hey, shout out. And Josh, shout out. Josh McGee. Oh, oh but, uh, see ya. Who? I just, His boy. Josh McGee. Ask. His boy. Oh, yeah. Corey, you fucking stink. That was a terrible call. Let's go to Alex. <laughs> Alex, what's going on, dude? Right, that was his buddy. Hey. All right, Pat, boys. He's not AJ, sitting in here. I didn't listen to anything, Bill. by the way. <laughs> Who you did Josh from Jacksonville? Is. How's everyone doing? All right, great, man. Thank you so much, Alex. I literally just looked at the faces of everybody. I was trying to do some quick math in my head for some things, and everybody in the, in, everybody in the studio gave that guy zero chance, it seemed like. Now, I ultimately was the mouthpiece of us all. I did not hear what he said or how he said it. I heard a shout-out in there, so I mimic parent, you know, shout-out. Yeah, I exactly. immediately say that back. I did not hear that whole call. I'm not saying you deserved it, kid, but I don't know who Josh McGee is, and I don't care about him. No. -uh. Nobody does, apparently. No. Not no. Me. We've made it known on the show. I mean, it's, it's not a, a line just to be shouting out your boys. Yeah, like this ain't a fucking request line, pal. We're a DJ, and we do not take requests. Yeah. Although the better DJs do. You know what I mean? True. Yeah, but, you know, their call is their request. You know, if they start singing and it sucks, you got to cut them yeah, off. Yeah, you got to right? cut them off. You're right. What song you want to hear, Alex? <laughs> I mean, some Twine would be nice, right? Oh, Twine. That's, that's from the beginning, though. I don't know. That's anybody else? No, what you got, Pat? Yeah, I well, mean, I it's, mean, it's your show, right? 
It is. Thank you for the respect there a little bit. But uh, when I mentioned song, what I was referring to was like what you wanted to talk about because we were in a metaphor <laughs> oh. as if we were music DJs. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. request was that whole thing. But now that we're all right, here, all right. you know, yeah. Yeah. What do you want to talk about? Uh, well, I'm reporting live here from inside the NCAA tournament bubble. Oh, Ooh. what are we hearing, Alex? What do we got going on? Well, as of right now, we are still locked in our hotel room awaiting uh, the first rounds of testing to come through. So uh, everyone's quarantined inside their hotel room, got tests this morning, have to wait for those to come back before we can even leave our room. So mm -hmm. I'm dropping every meal at the door. Nice. Uh, pretty locked down over here. Is he a fan or a media member? Yeah, hold on. A lot of questions here, AJ. You're not the only one. The, 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 how long is the result? take to get that test is it same day testing or is it overnight into aj's point are you a media member a fan or are you a part of a team um i work for one of the teams that is currently in the bubble uh from what i'm being told the test will take about six hours so we did one last night when we arrived and then we did a second one first thing this morning and they said once this second test comes back in about six hours uh we will be able to leave our room oh are you negative uh, as of right now, I hope so. Atta boy, congratulations. Yeah. Okay. What team, you don't have to tell us what team. What do you do, though? Are you a equipment manager? Are you a video, are you a video person? We saw St. Bonaventure's video guy <laughs> yeah. got clinched up by security. He had a lot of foxy in him, though. Hit a spin move on Old White that was not about whatever he was doing. Old White thought this guy potentially broke into a lockdown area <laughs> with a camera and having uh, the, the proper credentials on him and said, you cannot use that camera here. Puts him up in a guillotine, a rear Jeez. naked choke, I think, <laughs> and get him out of that whole thing. Um, Alex, what are you doing? Don't get clinched up by any security people out there. No, I am a I am the team photographer out here. So uh, yeah. shout out to St. Bonaventure's guy. That is kind of our worst nightmare out here is <laughs> someone taking their job a little too seriously and uh, trying to take us out while we're trying to get the shot here. Hey, I do believe the kid got the shot in an incredible story. I saw him hit said old white with a circle button and go get it. But keep your head on a swivel out there, Alex. We need these photos and we need this content. That's the plan. That's the plan. I appreciate you, boys. Thank you for keeping me entertained in here. All right. Good luck in there. Congrats on your house arrest. Uh, I think March Madness is going to be incredible. They're just sitting in their rooms, food delivered to the door, don't do anything. Just waiting. Wait, so they all play? do they all play at different places? Like, who's playing in Lucas Oil now, or when do they get to Lucas Oil? Okay, so very fascinating. I assume that they would put each region in a certain gym. And by the way, our state fair is even hosting games at this point. I did mm -hmm. not know that. Whoa. Our state fair, which is the home of the Fuel, which is our uh, minor league hockey team, also a place where I intro Jim Gaffigan. He did a show at this arena. It was pretty good. But they'll play everywhere, and then they're not staying. They're playing in different places. So, like, one game could potentially be in Butler, uh, uh, Hinkle Fieldhouse. One game could potentially be at Assembly Hall in Bloomington. One game, depending on – it doesn't matter what region. And I think they're doing that because there's no competitive advantage for people because Hinkle Fieldhouse, a little bit smaller. Assembly Hall, a little bit smaller. Whenever you're talking in comparison to Lucas Oil Stadium with the backdrop being absolutely insane. So, I think they're trying to keep it as fair as possible but everybody's moving around you should look into though if they're in hinkle or in that fairground i think the the gym is going to look small so much like those nba guys down the bubble i think overs could potentially hit in those situations versus the lucas oil stadium backdrop which is you know obviously massive in this entire thing well th there's a team we talked about earlier that like who are we saying that either either lights out like from the three or they're not like it's it's Either they're, they're hitting or they're not. They'll, they'll either go far or they'll get knocked out in the first round. If you're playing – is anyone playing in Lucas Oil early? Because you don't yeah. want that team. Like oh, a team yeah. that – it's a weird backdrop. You know, Like the basketball court inside a football stadium looks absolutely tiny. It looks like a, a boxing ring when you put it in Dallas' stadium. So if you look at the Big Ten tournament that just played over there, the beginning rounds – it was not it was very ugly yeah. a lot of teams that were good were not that great and then as it got on the big 10 i think does have an advantage over other teams in the tournament strictly because they've been used to the lucas oil stadium and they might end up playing there in some big games but the big 10 you watch great basketball by the way in the big 10 everybody oh, yeah. is basically hey, yeah big 10 has a chance to really do some damage in this march madness but there will only be one Ooh. who will have that mm. one shining moment will it be a big 10 team or will it be Gonzaga? Like everybody on TV is saying they're going to win this entire thing. I got money on West Virginia. Who do you like? 
Texas. Oh, you like the hook and horns because they hit from three. They sh- they shoot free throws very well as well, and they got big guys down low. Not they got it all. They got it all. Yeah, but it's interesting the way they're kind of you know shell game in these games. Yeah. So how do they stay? How do they are considered in a bubble when they're doing that and they're going off site and doing all of this? I would assume all these places are locked down. The only way in is via a bus, and the bus probably is hotel two places. But there's a little bit of a drive. Like, yeah. Lafayette, West Lafayette, where Purdue is, that's an hour and a half, two hours, depending upon where you're staying Jeez. or what traffic you hit. Bloomington's an hour and a half, two hours the other way, and then there's a bunch of places here. It's interesting and fascinating, but Indiana will figure it out. That's what it'll be interesting to see those teams that are playing in those two cities, because if they can't play there again, then they're going to have to travel when virtually no any other team that's down in Indianapolis won't really have to. I mean, a bus ride will be a little bit different, but it, like you said, that's like a three-hour drive from one to the other if they have to play there. Yeah, I mean, Indiana will figure it out here. I did not know the state fair was hosting games. Yeah, no clue. Let's go, dude. You would think they would not make a team drive from IU to Purdue. You would think. You would think, but what if the games just end up being that way because they're just like moving them? You know, are they taking into account where people's hotels are too? I would think so. Even later? I would assume so. Yeah, but if it's always changing places, where are they going to keep changing hotels? I don't know. You That's, know what I mean? We're going to have to watch that, I guess. Unfold. I assume they stay in the same hotel their entire time here. Yeah, but if you're a, yeah, but a they, Bloomington they, team, you make yeah. the Elite Eight, which is probably going to be downtown. You probably move into a place downtown. Ooh. Maybe they all get RVs. <laughs> That's probably mobile. it. Good call. I think that's probably it. It is probably a mobile <laughs> RV situation. <laughs> Park hey, them but- in your parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> Tunnel straight from bus to arena. Yep. Keep the bubbles. A, Smart. A real Pat. what if is what if teams who are playing each other both get COVID? And then the next round's also screwed because both those teams Don't even. Would, yeah, because yeah, they're not. saying no. Hey, I'm, just, I'm just saying. They're saying it's a no contest if oh. there is a COVID outbreak. And, I mean, they're bubbled up or whatever, but this is a couple of weeks. These guys are going to have to be bubbled, right, in Indiana? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> going to have to want that natty. The Gonzaga coach last night was like, I think my guys know that there's a lot of sacrifice in this. <laughs> I'd say you got college kids locked into a hotel room. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't know. How, and there's 25% fans, so their friends are potentially in the city area around them. Good luck, boys. Yeah, good luck, yeah. Boys. Stay strong. Hey, what happens, though? Think if a team has to drive three hours in the bus. What if the bus breaks down the guys, a couple guys wander into the bathroom in a gas station or a restaurant? Oh. And do they have to delay the game for two days? Bro, you got to think about the amount of COVID that's floating around gas station Ooh, shitters, bro. Man. Oh, oh my Be God. careful. God. Is that, is that a hot spot for him? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. No idea. Yeah. Yeah. Green Green ground. Hole, oh. yeah. COVID. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shower mm-hmm. over here. I mean, there's a lot of that bus. Oh, truck stop. Yeah. Oh! Truck stop. oh. Somebody yeah. got paid. Hands, Somebody got paid in the NFL here on the first day of the legal tampering period for the 2021 NFL season. Mike Garofolo is reporting. One more for Urban and the Jaguars. Wide receiver returner Jamal Agnew is headed to Jacksonville. Source says the Lions' fifth rounder in 2017 cashes in. Okay, Jamal Agnew. Yeah. Good Woo. special team. A great returner. Very good. He's a great returner. Urban Meyer said, listen, I need a D-tackle. I need a returner. we got a quarterback coming out of surgery already. we got two pools in the fucking stadium. Let's go ahead and build this thing right on the edge. Here I think we- the Lions were down like 49-0 against the Buccaneers. He returned a punt, looked at the camera, gave him the shush sign. So you got to love this guy. <laughs> yeah, this guy. <laughs> nice. I love this guy. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Three-year, $21 million. <laughs> Damn. Seven mil per for Jamal Agnew. He's a weapon, though. Explosive. Great athlete. Hey, when you're watching, guess what, though, Foxy? When you're watching his highlight reel, you don't know what the score mm-hmm. is. But he's doing Good, that, great right? point. He, he can post that on socials. No one will know. And I'm sure everybody else already did. They're like, look at this guy. And then he <laughs> tells the crowd, and it's like, he lost, right? By a lot. Sounds elite, though. That's like whenever I did my walk, you know, against the Steelers. We're down 14 nothing. Mm-hmm. I catch a lot of heat for that from people. They're down 14. I'm like, two scores in the second quarter, bro? Momentum turning. We mm-hmm. scored a touchdown next play. 14-7. Oh, now all of a sudden we can't celebrate that? Fuck you. But 49 nothing. That's, that's a little different. A <laughs> little different. It was tough. But he got paid. Yeah. He's really good. So you guys were holding him hostage up there? That's yeah. probably what he was saying. He was like, yeah. get me out of here. Mm-hmm. Blowing a whistle more. Yeah. 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 It's like, yeah. yeah. Help me. Yeah. 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 Hostage whistle. <laughs> Let's go to Kyla, North Carolina, the home of Run, Rudolph, run. What's going on, pal? Hey, how's it going what? with you guys and the boys on this Monday? <laughs> Not too shabby. Hold on one second, Kyle. Zito, 
this weekend on his IG he was driving home from some mountains and yep. he actually drove through the town in Carolina Murphy, North Carolina where Ron Rudolph run uh, the guy who had those bombs um, over there in uh, the Olympic Park bomber yeah not a good merch shop Oh, okay. Yeah, I have a little respect. Tie it all back to Richard Jewell? Well, saying? Richard Jewell did not deserve what he got. There. No he way. This guy was running around the hills of North Carolina, killing a bunch of people, living off the land, setting off bombs in places. And Richard Jewell is just trying to be a goddamn hero. Anyways, he's from North Carolina. So is Kyle. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> well, I first just wanted to start out and say, oh, hey. I oh, buddy. I have- right back at you. And then, uh, also, I just wanted to know what you guys thought about the Browns and who they'll uh, sign this offseason because they need a they need yeah. a pass rusher on the other side of Miles Garrett. Yeah, they, they do. Help in the secondary. Yeah, they do. You're right. Yep. You never met that guy. Good caller. But he was legit. He wasn't. Uh, yeah, he didn't but you don't say know. it sarcastically. He was not condescending. How do you know? Your How do you know? You don't know the you guy. You don't know. It sounded very genuine. We might have paid that guy. Oh. Maybe we didn't, but we could have. That guy could have been in Fugazi. He couldn't yeah. even been. In, he could have been in like. He could have been in Virginia. He could have been in yeah. Dakota. <laughs> we don't even know if that guy's in Carolina. You've never seen him. Never heard of him. All of a sudden, you're I O and all over the goddamn place like it's uh, that farm. It's bullshit, Hawk. Sad, really. Wait, what farm? What farm is this? E I I O. Yeah, fucking yeah. Old McDonald. Yeah, that's what farm. you sounded like over there with your fucking I O's. Unreal. What you can tie together. <laughs> it's it's uh, so unique. Thank you this show i know it's good the browns are going to sign jj huh are those prescription these ones yeah nah they're strictly for the blue hue i don't know if you know anything about it i'm always working on my phone my computer my things so i gotta wear these to protect my eyeballs so i don't have to get to james winston again oh you already had lasik oh yeah it was awesome it was awesome really it the world became High definition overnight. Now, granted, 4K, 8K, you get it. But at the time, it was standard HD, then 1080 came, and then now we're at 4K, 8K. But at the time, it was a night and day difference from one day, I'm laying there, get a laser into my eyeball. You smell your eyeball burning. They tape your eye open. You lose vision for a little bit. Then you've seen an orange thing, an orange thing. Then the next morning, I woke up after taking two Ambien. Whole new world. I think Jameis Winston potentially... If he had the same reaction I had after that thing, he could throw for maybe 70, 80,000 yards next year. Wow. Look out. Legit. Did, did you not realize you had poor eyesight until you got it fixed and saw, like, what this is what I should have? So I used to wear my contacts for, like, a year, two years straight. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't is even. That, is that not good? Is that good? Uh, I think it's actually pretty impressive that I was able to do it. Yeah, I don't know I, how. That's, yeah, that's how insane. Do you, how do you still have eyes? Yeah, if I, I sleep with mine in one night, my oh, eyes are killer. Yeah, yeah. Well, you got to train them. You know what I mean? You just got to train your eyes to battle through that whole thing. Oh. And, I, and I used to, you know, like, I would take them out and then put them in in the mornings or whatever. Then one day leads to two, then three. And then I used to not even really get that good at the drop thing. It was just like the contacts became my eyes. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And... <laughs> We were playing, I think, the Rams one game. And the Colts didn't even have a backup pair of contacts because I never, ever took them out. We were playing the Rams, and my right eye contact fell out. And I was like, oh, no, I I couldn't even put this thing back in if I had to. It's not like I do that every single day. It came out. It ripped. So I was kind of – I was playing the game in stereo. You know what I mean? A little bit. Like, I couldn't really – and the right eye, by the way, is where you hold. Oh. Yeah, so I had to go get more contacts because I didn't even have a prescription filled or whatever because I hadn't done it in years. And then I scheduled the LASIK for that off season or whatever. Yeah, it was – I lived wild. I had to have actual glasses on for like 35 days or whatever because my eyes were a bit swollen, I guess. Before you got the surgery? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they Jeez. get too dry. You can't do it. Yeah, your eye gets swollen. Yeah. So then I had to oh, – yeah. I had to wear glasses for 35 days. That was quite a run. We partied. <laughs> Very hard during the glasses stage. <laughs> oh, man, it was wild. It was a good time out there. Couldn't they have hey, – why didn't you uh, – okay, so you don't have a backup pair of contacts, which I know a lot of – most teams do have them. Yeah. Why didn't you have a backup like, – was there a backup pair of rec specs or something that you could have put on in a situation like that? I will tell you what. The fact that the Colts probably didn't even know that I had contacts in because that's how little I ever took them out, I'm sure they didn't have a pair of rec specs for me. <laughs> I'm certain. I'm saying why didn't you have those in, in case one of them fell out? You know, you never – I'm a plan A guy, all right? 
I don't need plan B, all nope. right? This ain't this ain't a mistake that was made. I'm a plan A guy. Let's go ahead okay. and let's assume plan A is going to work. And then as soon as you fall into plan B, it's like, all right, how do we? Uh-oh. We're just playing one eye then. We're just playing one eye. And then as soon as we get out of here, we'll figure this out. But, yeah, that was a rough day. That was rough. I almost got hit in the face with a snap a couple times. Jeez. I powered through. Hey, if you did, like say you bobbled one and hit you, would you – have tried to make a big scene out, like run off to make sure the camera got you. Like my my contact is out. Like try to make sure they could read your lips. It's like, I'm, it's like I'm a pirate. I gotta. I can't they see. Come out, hey, mouth. Come out camera. next one though. Next extra point you got to patch on. <laughs> you gotta let people know, man. Hey, don't fire me. I can't see anything. Right now. I had bad eyes. Same, hey, it's the same thing as a guy gets beat deep and he pulls his he he grabs his hammy on the five. Well, it's like you know the golfers. You know, when they mess oh, up, yeah. they look at the club, obviously. Or what fucking is... Tiger's the big, you know, grab his back right after he shanks one. Or... Nine iron, huh? Well, David Beckham staring at the ground after he skied a penalty. Hey, he picked off Tom, he picked off Tom Brady this yeah. week. That's right. So. <laughs> yeah. You see what shoes Tom was wearing throwing that pigskin around there, AJ? Hoka one, one is, and with oh, that being it said, it's time to get out of here. <laughs> Day one of Brinks Week has come to a conclusion on this particular show. 39,000 people were watching at one point. Thank Let's you go. all so much. Please enter into our bracket, Bonanza. Uh, it's at the March Madness Live app. Download that. will be in there. $51,000 to the winner. If we become the biggest bracket in the app, It'll go to 75,000. And if we get over 50,000 entries, which we will not, which is why I'm making this up, mm-hmm. $100,000 to the winner. Got to get yeah. it in before uh, the playing game start. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Good luck to everybody. AJ, I can't wait to see your bracket. <laughs> so are, are, is everybody's bracket public out there on that on the app? Mm-hmm. It will be. What are, you, what are you going to have? Ohio State lose first round? Probably. Yeah, yeah. Stooge. Nah. Carl, 12-11. Yeah. What are you going to do? Have Ohio State stink because you hate them? No, I, I don't know. I got to check the bracket out and see how far I'm going to have them. But so it, Duke didn't make the tourney, did they? No, um, Duke did not. But I do like the fact that you're going to try to make Ohio State's one loss in the Big Ten championship become two losses in this whole week because you hate Ohio State so damn bad. Tim. No, I may, I may even pick Ohio State to win it all. Oh, H. No, I so I've I used I picked Duke every year. Every time I've ever this filled out a bracket, I've always picked. Doesn't Duke. matter. I think I'll let you know this. Can't what, do it this year. What about Oh, dude? Yeah, the Bucks, they, they're looking good, man. They're Did you see Brutus? Bucks. Hey, Brutus gave me an I.O. Yeah. yeah. I don't think that was the official one. Yeah. yeah. Was, oh, dude. Dude. What what do you mean? He was running out the stuff. Yeah. The fucking <laughs> I think. And then he said I.O. to me, which you would never do. It's verified. Brutus loves Ohio State. You yes. hate him. And it is sad. Can't wait to X out a couple more FaceTimes as the week moves on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see you tomorrow, dude. O.H. Can't wait to see you guys tomorrow. Hey, good to see you. see the boys and everybody in this. Okay. I am. <laughs> oh, you did it! Yeah! yeah. 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 Appreciate you, AJ. Appreciate you. Do the bracket thing, will you? Maybe. All right, see so- you.